All right, folks, my name is Jake Musser. This is my brother, Josh. We uh, really appreciate everybody signing on today. I uh, want to thank all of our consigners. I can tell you, um, this has been a great collection of cars for us to bring, all based here in the Pacific Northwest, and very excited to be able to share those with you today. Um, I can tell you, Josh and I, being getting prepared for this auction, being an online only, we could have taken the easy way taking the pictures, done the videos, and right now him and his staff could be at home and don't even need to be here. But we have uh, made the commitment to try and make this a live event and be able to drive all the cars through. He's not getting an easy job today, I can promise you that. He's going to be pulling all the cars through here. You're going to be able to see each and every single one of them. And uh, I, I really got to give hats off to Josh and his crew for putting that together. So um, I tell you, what do you think? At the end of the day, this is going to be, what, four or five hours, maybe? Yeah, we're probably looking four or five hours, and uh, we're going to be, I mean, you know, like you said, we're getting every single car running, driving, run it through here, and uh, we just want to make sure everyone gets to see these cars. You know, other than the pictures, we do the best we can to make sure every vehicle, um, every vehicle is pictured so you can see them all, and... Uh, we want to make and and we want to make sure now we've got uh you 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 can watch the live stream and we also went and got videos of every single vehicle driving uh yesterday so you can actually watch a nine, nine five to ten second clip of every single vehicle driving um and that just shows you it running you you can hear it a little bit and it gives you a good idea of what the car runs and sounds like well i can tell you it's an online only auction, but I hope that you guys are excited as we are. We've got bidders right now uh, as far west as Australia. I guess that could be east, depending on which way you want to go. All the way out east in the UK, uh, Greece, France, I want to welcome all of you for watching our live stream and being here. Um, this is going to be a great auction today. We're hitting uh, bidders from over 42 states right now, returning bidder from Alaska, uh, Florida, and uh, hopefully we can represent these well and appreciate each and every one of you for being here today. Make sure chime in to the auctioneer chat with any of and all of your questions. Scott and uh, Stelzer are going to be responding to you. Uh, Casey and myself will be in the sales office responding to your questions. And please, anybody that has a question, they have any problems getting registered, getting your bidding in, make sure you jump on right now. Give our office a call, 509 auction. They'll make sure and get you all taken care of. And a uh, huge shout out to Spotted Fox. They're the ones that are making this all work today. So they're the ones that have came in. They got the lights, the studio, the video, the audio. And it has been a nonstop fight uh, to really make this work. So thank you, Josh. I'm going to cut you loose and we're going to get to work. Let these guys just sit up here and talk. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. All right, thanks, Jake and Josh. Justin and I, we were threatening to go get a, hit a golf game and let them just continue up here, but I don't think they'd have let us get away from that. But uh, once again, thanks for joining in. Um, Jake touched a little bit on consigners. Uh, we've got a lot of consigners that have brought us cars. We've got consigners that are repeat consigners from last year and the year before, and we have uh, quite a few new consignments and new consigners. Uh, we really appreciate their trust and their belief in the system and belief in bringing your cars to trucks and auto, uh, believing that we can give them the market exposure. And I think we've proven that uh, year in and year out, that we've got the ability to get these cars the exposure they need to be able to uh, really draw uh, the, the value of what they are. And, and that's what we love about auction. You know, these, these vehicles are very difficult to value. Everybody always asks, well, what's that car worth? Well, it's really worth what you folks are willing to bid it up to. And... Uh, Another thing that we're very proud of is we've got over about 70% of the auction today is no reserve. Everything sells to the highest bidder. We have a few cars with reserves, but we've got a lot of cars. If you look at those first items, uh, we've, got, we've got items right across the board that, that, that have that no minimum, no reserve flag. Um, and that means it's selling to the highest bidder, and the last owners, the last bid's going to own it. So you want to get in there and bid with confidence. Uh, on the cars that we do have reserves on, I can tell you we believe that they're very reasonable, they're very attainable. We try to counsel our consigners to treat their reserves not as their 
aspirational goal. Uh, of course, every seller wants the same thing. They want as much money as they can get. But if they feel the need to have a reserve, we try to have them treat that as kind of a fire insurance. You know, gee whiz, for that, I'd rather just keep it in the garage. Um, and so a, a lot of our reserves have already been attained and, and, uh, and passed. And so don't be afraid of that. Uh, we've got a lot of good cars in there, and, and really a wide selection. We've got, you know, old old uh, Ford F-150 Customs, and we got a 66 Ford F-250. It came off of a farm just out here north of Pasco, and, uh, uh, you know, it's a beautiful little truck you can have a lot of fun with. We've got trucks, we've got Europeans, we've got uh, uh, low riders, we've got convertibles, we've got hot rods, we've got, this year it seems, uh, we've got an inordinate amount of... Uh, of really what I call your, you know, your 32 Fords, your T-Buckets, those kind of things. And so really a, a wide, diverse selection, Justin. Yeah, and some of the stuff, Scott, I think one of the neatest stories that's in here is this 1966 Jaguar XKE. I'm not much of an import guy, but the story behind this car is unbelievable. Young lady ordered it brand new, brand new, ordered it in a in special blue it was hand built in england she got the car she drove it her and a friend of hers they cruised all over the countryside over there then the car got parked it sat and of course everybody knows what happens when they sat the young lady got older as all of us do she went to have the car rebuilt she wanted to drive it one more time she sends it to washington to andy mcdonald he put his back into building it now unfortunately I don't think the young lady got to drive it again, but that car's here mechanically. It's unbelievable. Got a beautiful patina to it. It is the real deal. There's a great, great story behind that, and it's a time capsule for somebody to grab a hold of. The one thing, Scott, the auction's great, but I want you to circle back just a little bit. Last night was unbelievable. I think we did rough math and figured at least 120 cars here in the show and shine. And what was neat, at 8.30, as everybody was leaving, there were still people coming. They were bringing cars in. They were bringing stuff they want to show. I think what will happen next year will be unreal. Yeah, we're, we're getting ready to expand our lot here in Trucks and Auto and add about two acres more of pavement. And last night was uh, certainly uh, just a confirmation that we need that pavement. We're going to need the space. Um, it was literally standing room only on the lot. Um, for the first time ever, we charged entry to get in and view the cars, and we also charged to enter a car. And thanks to the generosity of the folks that participated last night, we raised nearly five thousand uh, dollars in charitable donation that's all going direct to Seattle Children's Hospital. So you really helped us with a charity that's near and dear to the heart of the Musser family and the Trucks and Auto team. All that money's going to Seattle Children's Hospital and uh, it was awesome. I, I, we had a lot of fun last night. We, we, uh, we were pretty uh, conservative. We didn't have popcorn and popsicles and, and hot dog stands because we didn't know what we could uh, do we didn't know what we were going to be able to do during the pandemic and with the covid restrictions and so forth so we went real conservative we just said let's just do a car show let people come outside have fun but uh, next year is going to be bigger and it's going to even be better if you and, believe that and the cars that were here were unbelievable we had everything from low riders um there was i think the neatest car might have been a 2020 yanko that set out here but that's just me personally uh, what was here was unbelievable, what had been brought in, and, and truly what lives up here in the Pacific Northwest that I don't know if a lot of people realize. There's some great, great classic cars that are here to be offered. And then the other thing, too, I think it sets the stage for what will happen with our auction next year. It all fits together. I think people saw what we have to offer this year, and I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see several of those cars that were here for the show and shine potentially getting offered next year in our in our northwest auction well exactly and there's there's cars that are in today's auction that were 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 have uh, been involved in in uh, we you know we do cars and coffee here on the weekends and there's some of the cars here that are here that have participated in that and so we want to be a part of the class the collector car community we want to uh, do everything we can to encourage that and and you know um 
there, there's, there's really something here for everybody. You don't have to have a hundred thousand dollars to be to get in the collector car uh, hobby. There's, but if you do, we'll take it. But if you do, Just, we'll take it. We've got a car for you if you have that. Um, but you, you really don't have to have a hundred thousand. If you want to spend ten. Fifteen twenty thousand dollars, you're going to be able to get a car that you can take home, have a lot of fun with, put in the garage. Uh, John, you should chime in here. You know, put in the garage, but take out to the car shows, take out to the show and shines, go to the drive-in on Friday nights, and and you know, I'm I'm sitting here looking at the first uh, ten fifteen cars. You know, every one of them you're going to be able to buy for you know under ten thousand, maybe fifteen <coughs> fifteen thousand dollars. A 1950 Dodge Wayfarer Business Coupe. You've got that really good-looking 83 Jimmy S15. It's lowered. Beautiful color. You've got an Audi convertible, a 63 Corvair. On the true classics like the Jaguar is talking about. Then, I mean, like we said, that 2020 Jeep Rubicon that's been converted to a Hellcat, 68 Camaro. And, I, Scott, I think the one that you've talked about so long and probably your favorite in the group is that 84 Pontiac Fiero Lamborghini Countach clone. I mean, I know <laughs> how much you love that thing. Yeah, I wish we could show the picture of that, uh, of that car with my youngest son in it. And, uh, John? variety of cars that we have. Um, we got everything, like you said, from the Lambo. And you haven't mentioned the George Barris uh, Trans Am that was built for John Travolta. One of one, right after the Urban Cowboy movie came out, I think, in 1982. And George Barris built that for, for John Travolta. Make sure you look online, look at the catalog pictures of the interior of that car. It's pretty crazy. And it's, it's been it, with a local collector uh, for the last several years. So we have several cars from that estate, too. And you know, the one thing I'll say is everybody's looking through the catalog. Make sure and click on these cars and look through them. The job that Jake and Josh's staff has done getting pictures, you truly see what's on the website is what these vehicles truly are. They are unbelievably represented. There's a young lady that takes pictures around here that could go to work for anyone, anywhere taking the pictures. Everything's represented, everything we know about them. There's some cars in here, too, that I think there's going to be some updates on that might have been questionable whether they were running. We've got them running now. We know that they're, you know, we know they're running. They're going to be sold as running. We've got some surprises. We've got some surprises, and that's, Justin, you make a good point. Click into that car. Click into the catalog. Uh, just as late as last night, I mean, we've loaded videos of every one of these cars running. It should be the second photo in the stream of the photos on the vehicle. Click into that car. You know, we've, we've had people ask us, how do you get participation, people buying these cars from, I mean, last year we sent a bullet Mustang to Brisbane, Australia. And that, that buyer was absolutely ecstatic when he got the car. He said it was 100% well represented. It was exactly what I expected. But... It's not what we tell you, it's what we're trying to show you. And, and you've got 40, 50, 60 photos of each and every one of these cars. You've got live video of the car running. I mean, we're trying to let you see it, you know, warts and all. Not all these cars are cream puffs and these collector cars, they all kind of come with their, you know, they, 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 they're collector cars and they have age on them. And, and you know, so, you know, they're, they're, they're not perfect. Some of them are, but, but, you know, some of them are not. Some of them are a work in progress. I think one of the things too on the photos is we get a lot of questions about, well, what's the bottom side look like? What's the chassis look like? Is there, is there rust on the floor pans? And we have a, a lift here. We've done a lot of pictures of the chassis. We're showing all, all the details that we can. So it's very complete of what you can see in, in, in the catalog. So yeah, sure we really are trying to give you as, as much information as we possibly can. And we try to respect if somebody calls in and says, well, gee, uh, what, what about this? We've been guilty of taking a car back over, putting it up on a lift, and getting that information for them. So a uh, little late to do it at this point in the, time, in the game. We are uh, seven minutes from kickoff, and we're seven minutes from the first item uh, entering the ring. And uh, we're going to get this auction underway. Once again, uh, we've got lots of people on staff here to help you. You can hit us on the chat. Uh, function right here. Uh, Donnie, let's see what your question is. Uh, oh, somebody already, yes, you can bid on the cars. You need to call the office. So you'll see that we'll respond to you right here on the chat. Uh, you can also call our auction hotline. It's 509-AUCTION. That's 509-282-8466. And uh, 
<clears throat> sound like uh, Jerry Lewis. We have operators on standby. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm I'm sitting here looking through the car, Scott. It's it, I go back to, and I've used it. I've already used it three times, but it is amazing. We've got everything from a 1931 to a 2000 or to a 2020 that we've got here offered. It doesn't matter what your definition of a collector car is because it is different for everyone. We have them here, and this 2020 Rubicon is. I keep hitting on this thing, but this is something that, for that right person, you go buy this thing, you play with it occasionally, but you keep that thing parked in the garage one of these days, you talk about something special that will absolutely bring a lot of money in a lot of places. Yeah, that uh, that Rubicon, you know, you go by that Rubicon off the show floor today, it's probably a $70,000. Uh, if you can find one. If you can find one. Uh, that's step one. Um, that's probably a $70,000 proposition. And, uh, and, and then take it to a professional shop and say, you know, I'd like to really drop a 707 horsepower Hellcat motor in this Jeep. And uh, you're, you're looking at a big bill, a lot of dollars spent to make that happen. Uh, I was meeting with a gentleman this morning that is involved with Chevrolet and General Motors on building a lot of custom vehicles. Uh, they're coming out with a very limited edition, high dollar, high horsepower, 700 horsepower, three quarter ton pickup. You know, and it's going to go out the door for $130,000, $140,000 because it's not just the sticker price of the car, but then you get those professional shops like Yinko or, or uh, these other shops that, that do the work. I think we have the shop listed that did the work on that uh, Rubicon. Um, it's listed in the description. You can read about it on it's lot number 127. Yeah, it's Dakota Customs is yeah. who did the work on that. So you get a professional shop. You put the real beadlock wheels on that thing. You drop a 700-plus horsepower, and you've got a whale of a machine. And and and, and I think I think that you, you touched on a point that I think that's, that's interesting to make and important to make is you really can look at uh, – these kind of vehicles as 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 somewhat of an investment vehicle um i think it's the only investment on earth that you can actually put the money into it have fun and get enjoyment out of it and at minimum hold your dollars together and more than likely see it appreciate over time you know john yeah i want to jump in there because the car culture if you haven't been into the collectible car culture some of the people you meet are amazing i mean it's a lot of fun. Just for instance, what we had last night at the car show. Some of the people we met that we haven't even met before, you know, hearing their story, the story of the car, um, amazing what the work was done. And they're just a great group of people. 99.8% of the people at the car shows are awesome people. So if you're not into a collector but want to, this is your chance. We got a great bunch of cars. We're three minutes from uh, countdown to showtime here at the uh, Trucks and Auto Auction. Thanks again uh, um, for joining us, joining us on the live stream. Hello, Lucas. I see Lucas from Missouri has joined in. And I uh, want to shout out to uh, Doug up in Yakima, Chris, uh, Jennifer, Natalie. We've got uh, Cruz, Steve, Susan, Dan, Jason, Mark, Daryl, David, Randy, Kurt, Jim, John, and so on. I'll scroll down and catch more. But join us in on the live stream. Have fun there. All the cars are going to come in. You'll see once the auction begins um, that uh, each item will come up into the ring and it'll exist in the ring by itself. That item will be up for bid. And until that item sells, all of the other items will just sit there in the queue waiting to come in the ring, just like a real auction where we do one at a time. So um, you can see the times there. It sh shows the time remaining. But you're going to see those time remaining on the uh, subsequent cars goes away because as the car comes in the ring and depending on bidding. Now, we have dynamic closing on each and every auction a lot today. Um, if you bid with five seconds to go on the clock, it's going the computer's going to reset the clock to 30 seconds. So uh, there's really no advantage of waiting till the last second. There's no sniping allowed. We're not going to let you uh, outbid somebody at the last second, not give them an opportunity to compete back. So any bid will advance the clock back to 30 seconds, and it will keep doing that until, and there you can see, we've got our first item in the ring right now. Here's a 2016 Rotary. That's the brand, Rotary 
$30,000 for post lift. This lift is sitting in Sagal, Idaho. Uh, certainly a professional grade, professional quality, beautiful lift, high dollars, high bid on it's $14,250. It's selling to the highest bidder here today at Trucks and Auto. You want a lift to put in your shop that you can lift up and do work on any and just about any vehicle you can name. Here's a wonderful machine right here, Lot 101. It's in the ring. You can see the picture scrolling by there in the auction block. We're at 14250 High bidders in the lead from La Grande, Oregon. And uh, if nobody else bids, in about 13 seconds, that car is going to set, or that, that item is sold. And we're going to go on to the next lot, which we only have two items, not cars in the auction. So we'll let this sell. It's out the deal at 14250 uh, next up, take a look at this. This is the what you talk about only having two that aren't cars. This one might as well be a car. This 1952 DeSoto front end table. I've walked by this thing for two days now. I actually did not pay attention that it wasn't in the auction. It's neat. I mean, really neat. You talk about something that to put in your office and to be a centerpiece of wherever it is you do business, that's this right here. Justin, this is art. Uh, this is a local artisan that builds these. He has built some for our office. We have a, a beautiful 58 or 15 or 61 Ford, uh, one of these uh, built into a table. Jake has uh, guest chairs in his office that are built from the rear ends of different pickups. They are just one of a kind. You're, you're never going to see another one just like it. You'll be the only one to own it. And right now, Todd from Hermiston, Oregon is going to take it home at $4,600 if nobody else bids. You've got one minute to go in the auction. Uh, but it's really a work of art, and uh, you'll never see another one. Yeah, it's bare steel finished, aluminum top, the headlights work, a great piece, absolutely great piece. And with only 40, what, 40 seconds left at only $4,600, if I could put it in the overhead, I might take this back to Oklahoma with me. I don't think Delta will let me carry it, but we may have to try. It is an absolute, absolute beautiful piece of art that was done right here in Benton City. Yeah, it's a local artist that puts these together. He's very talented. What he can do with sheet metal and the front end of an old car is uh, is just uh, amazing. Uh, 15 seconds to go. We're at $4,600, and uh, Todd from Hermiston is going to get a whale of a showpiece. He'll be happy to have that and uh, put it in his collection and, and uh, have it in his man cave for years. And we're three seconds away. Let's open the door, bring in the first car. We're going to go on to lot number 103. All right, Scott, lot 103, the first car of the day is a 1992 Chevrolet Caprice station wagon pace car. This is a one-of-one -one built by SLP for the manager at Charlotte Motor Speedway, Mr. Mike Gillette. Paint and graphics match on this car for, a 19, for the 1993 Indy 500. It was built to take special needs kids for races, for laps on the track, this thing was used several times in several places. It's powered by a 350 cubic inch V8 with, paired with an automatic transmission, 342 rear axle, beautiful exhaust, finished in black, unbelievable car, and it's a historical NASCAR race car, Caprice Wagon. And Justin, it's one of one. Yeah, again, you, you know, you, you can go down and get Inco, Inco Camaros and you can get uh, Copo Camaros and, and there's going to be others. But this is a one of one. Yeah, it's a station wagon, but it's kind of cool. What a great conversation piece for $6,600. Patrick is in the lead from Fort Irwin, California, and uh, he's going to take that thing all the way to California if nobody else bids. You've got, uh, what's the time, 43 seconds left to go on the car, and it's one of one. And, uh, oh, we've got a new leader. And uh, now we've got it heading to uh, uh, Keith at prop. Well, we've got a b battle going on. It was going to North Carolina. Now it's heading to Tacoma, Washington, in the lead at $6,900. Well, the story behind this car, There's too, Patrick Scott. back at Fort from California at 7. We'll just let him do yeah, it now. Go ahead. And, and what they took time to do and that they took time and the way it's built and the, the kids that they took on rides – this could have been these some of these kids' wildest dreams they'd have never been able to do until somebody thought, you know what, 
let's make a station wagon a pace car. Let's take it out there so these kids that normally wouldn't be able to go on a ride make that lap around the track. Here's their option. You're not old enough to have ever sat in the back of a station wagon facing backwards. I am. I've been there. I've done that. It's got the, it's got the seat to do it. You can sit in the back of that station wagon looking backwards, and uh, we've still got a battle going on right now. Californians in the lead at $7,500 on this beautiful 92 Chevrolet Caprice pace car. Station wagon pace car. That just doesn't necessarily go together in the same sentence. But in 10 seconds, it's going to California, and we're going to roll the car out and get ready for the next one. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, this, nope. Hey, look, Scott, $7,600. It's That's still going, it. and I believe we're going back to Washington as yeah, of right now. Right now Let's Pat send this car back to California, Patrick. Patrick, you got to come back. You're out, you got outbid. Tacoma's in the lead at 7700 that's how it happens. You get, you know, there's no, there's no sniping. We're going to give you a fair opportunity, fair chance to come back. 20 seconds to go is headed to Tacoma unless uh, California bids. There he goes. There's Patrick from California back in the lead at 7,800 on the 92 Caprice station wagon pace car. Yeah, and how can you set a value on probably what some of these kids felt? This is an $8,000 car, I think, pretty easily. One one of these guys, California, Washington. Where's, it's going to California now, isn't it? Yeah, it's on its way yeah, to, California to California in California. five seconds. Thanks each and every one of our bidders. We appreciate your support, your opportunity, and that car is sold, going to California. All right, let's talk about lot number 104. Here's a 1975 Mercedes-Benz 240D sedan. This is an estate vehicle that was brought to us. We have made late changes to the catalog in this. We've got a lot more information to share. Make sure you read about it, but it's a two-owner, always garaged. Mercedes 240D sedan is a time capsule with only 154,000 miles on it, finished in a factory color of maple yellow. These cars were built for comfort and economy. It's powered by the 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder diesel engine with a 62-horsepower paired to a four-speed automatic transmission. Here's a well of a little car, nice time capsule. It's on its way to Missouri in a minute and 15 seconds at $6,100 unless somebody else bids. Yeah, you talk about a survivor here, Scott, in maple yellow. Unbelievable car, four-speed automatic transmission, power steering, power brakes, Factory wheels, beautiful, beautiful ride. I Just love these. I love these old Mercedes. And in the last two years, there's been fifteen thousand dollars worth of work done on this car, including the blower fan switch, the neutral switch was replaced. They replaced the subframe bushings, the differential, the steering gearbox, the rear axle shaft, the rebuild of the transmission with new gaskets, the instrument panel, new glow pugs. They rebuilt the AC compressor, the expansion valve, the turn signals, the fuel filter. Uh, Cars had a lot of work to it, pretty roadworthy, a lot of fun to have in that car. 29 seconds, it's going to Missouri. Yeah, and they even change the oil regularly, Scott. This, I'm jump, I'm this car right here say, is absolutely. I'm say, when I first looked at this car, I thought it was an original 50,000 mile car for the condition it is. So. Been well cared for. That's what happens when you keep them in the garage. Look at the interior, look at the quality of that. Guys, you've got nine seconds to go. It's going down the road at $6,100 to the highest bidder, and it's heading to the great state of Missouri. Open the door, get it out of here. It's gone. Okay, next up, Scott. Lot 105 is a 1978 Cadillac Eldorado Custom Baritz Classic. This is a two owner Eldorado with only and I mean only 59,000 original miles on it. This custom Brits package is the ultimate, at the time it was the ultimate in personal luxury. It's got a power moonroof, vinyl cushion top, paint and finish is a two-tone brown on beige, powered by a 425 cubic inch V8, paired with an automatic transmission. This, thing, this car right here is absolutely unbelievable. It's a Survivor Cadillac, it is last of one of the big series Eldorados that was out there, and look at what's what it's carrying on the front end. All Scott. you need is a white suit and a white hat. And Boss Hog absolutely <laughs> exactly. would be jealous of what's exactly. sitting right here in front of us. 78 Cadillac Custom Brits right here. Two owner, 59,000 miles on the Cadillac. The vinyl's in great shape. Got the sunroof. The seats in that car look like a couch. I mean, look at, look at the depth of the leather and the... Uh, uh, 
it's just there's a fun little car have a lot of fun with it 44 seconds to go it's sitting at seventy seven hundred dollars right now the high bidders from Shahalis, washington we appreciate you thanks for chiming in bruce and uh john yeah this this car being a cadillac eldorado but it's the brits classic package which was the top of the line this comes from my hometown of walla walla i know the original owner um always well cared for and the current owner is a good friend of mine He's kept it in storage with his collection, and what a dream to drive. And I see something happening out there. If you're bidding, if you bid and it says, and it comes right back and says you've outbid, that means you've got a max bid in play. And so the, the, right now we've got a max bid on this car from the current bidder. I can't tell you what it is, but if you bid and it says you've been outbid, you know there's a max bid in play. You've just got to bid again, but that Cadillac is gone. It's heading to Chehalis. We're going to open the door and get it out. All right, Scott, rolling in next behind that beautiful Eldorado, which honestly, if you got a first-time driver, somebody missed on something right there because that's what you put a first-time driver in. But up next, lot 106, a 1978 Ford F-150 Custom. This Custom is very original, and I do mean very original. Only 120,000 miles on it, finished in a beautiful two-tone green factory paint. It's got the full trim package, diamond plate bed, diamond plate bed rails, toolbox, running boards. This right here looks like we're setting in 1978, and I want to know who's in the farm truck coming down the road. And that has that that has that state of the art millennial uh, security system on it too. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. the, the four speed transmission. Absolutely, there's three pedals down there, and nobody knows what to do with the one on the left. This is a survivor Ford pickup, Scott. Though I mean, un absolutely unbelievable. It's got a modified 351M cubic inch V8, four-speed manual transmission. This thing runs on factory 15-inch steel wheels. It's got the original hubcaps, which those aren't easy to find anymore. It's got four of them all the way around. The patina is beautiful. The finish is beautiful. This is something that you can take out, have a little bit of fun with. I. This is one of the first pickups I remember driving around. That's a heck of a truck. For $5,500, you can't hardly go to Lowe's and buy a wheelbarrow for that. And it comes with a diamond plate toolbox. Right now, Tracy from Seattle's in the lead. And 25 seconds left to go. This truck's going for gone. Going to be gone for good. And uh, heading to Seattle. Uh, 18 seconds left to go. We're going to open the door and get it headed outside. Scott, and as, as people are still bidding because we're up to 5,600, the one thing if you look at on a 1978 Ford pickup like that that hasn't been fully restored, no question. You talk about a straight vehicle, John. You stood down there and you could see it. That, th yeah, that we have pickup a new leader. was unbelievably straight. We have a new straight. leader. That truck's heading to Valdez, Alaska right now. Tracy, you got to come back from Seattle. You got outbid. We're at fifty-seven hundred dollars with fourteen seconds to go. Fifty-seven hundred dollars, and Valdez, Alaska's in the lead on the seventy-eight Ford F one hundred and fifty. In four seconds, so I believe that thing's going to a colder climate. Heading to a colder climate. Congratulations, Valdez, Alaska. Coming up next, Scott, lot one hundred and seven, a nineteen fifty Dodge Wayfair business coupe. This business coupe was built for the traveling salesman that didn't need a lot of seating, but needed a lot of room to carry their goods. Slowly we'll write on it to roll in here. And here we go with our business coupe. As you can see, not much seating, but a giant, giant trunk in the back there. This thing's powered by a flathead six-cylinder it's got a three-speed manual transmission, so again, we're going to limit the people that can drive it anymore, but it is a classic Dodge business coupe. Yeah, that business coupe, it has got trunk for miles. You literally, I think you could put a uh, $100 sheet of plywood in the trunk of that car if you, if you had to. And, uh, that's drive just down. a half a sheet of plywood that's anymore. That's just a half a sheet. Of, well, that's I'm not saying much. But yeah, uh, one minute to go. High bidders in the lead from Post Falls, Idaho, $6,600. Again, you want to get into the collector car. Here's, you know, when you talk about, Justin, you talked about them that, uh, um, you know, here's a car. It hasn't been fully restored. It's been well cared for. The interior looks in good condition. It's got a beautiful patina on that paint. You know, you take a little uh, Adams polish and, and start working on that paint, that car would be gorgeous. Well, look at the interior. The interior is really nice on it. I mean, what a great cruiser. One seat, get your gal, go for a cruise. Like Scott said, a big trunk. Yeah. You keep, I mean, this is one, honestly, I can see you can keep it original like this 
or if you want to go do custom, if you want to play the custom game and you want to cut and chop and put together, I mean, th this right here, you talk about the bones to do some crazy things Five with. seconds to go. Donnie and Post Falls is going to take it home unless somebody bids. We're going to roll it out. And the beautiful custom or the beautiful coop is gone. Lot 108 up next, Scott. A 1983 GMC Jimmy S15. The absolute. This is the original two-door SUV, Scott. Coming in the door right here, an original. This thing had a 100% frame-off rebuild. It's only got 3,100 miles since it was completed. It was set up. Now, Scott, listen. This thing was set up for an LS engine. Yep. Does not have an LS engine in it right now, but it is set to put one in, and you talk about scream down the road. Look at it. Rolls on polished aluminum rims, radial tires. It's got the original gray upholstery, custom center console. There's a heck of a little, nice little GMC Jimmy S15. $7,000 is in the lead, and uh, Twin Falls, Idaho is the high bidder right now on a good look. And look at the paint on that. that look at the interior, Scott. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's absolutely original beautiful. Interior. Yeah. Original interior, $7,000, seven grand. 55 seconds. Guys, you got a bid on this. Yeah, you don't find these anymore, especially the two-door and the way this one's been set up for that LS motor. It's ready to go, but as it is with that 4.3 in there, she's a great runner as it is. Yeah, that, that car's got some room in it. You can't get hurt. You're not going to get hurt bidding on that car. We've got a new leader at 7,100 from Bellingham, Washington. Twin Falls, you're out. 30 seconds to go on the little Jimmy S10, uh, S15 rather. Uh, that car's got a lot of value. Twin Falls is back in the lead at 7,200. Help yourself here, guys. Uh, there's been a lot of work done on the car. The condition is right. And uh, I don't know where you're going to go find another one. And you're only paying $7,200. That's a good buy. Well, I'm sitting here looking at it under the lights. The paint. The paint is absolutely beautiful on this car. I, I mean, combination between the paint, the interior, the potential to put the LS into it. I keep going back that. But the potential to put the LS into it, unreal. But the way it sets, it's still a pretty good cruiser. Yeah, that's a good car. And uh, going out the road right now, 20 seconds to go. 7400 is the price. Twin Falls is in the lead. We've had 84 bidders, or 84 bids uh, on this car. Just went over 566 registered bidders. Our catalog, ladies and gentlemen, to this point in time right now has had 293,595 views. Thanks to each and every one of you. We still got a battle going on here. New leader from Oregon City at $7,500 on the little S15. Can't get hurt on this car. There's room on this truck right here. Have a lot of fun. Take you to a lot of car shows. That's, that's one, you know, I've got some cars that I'm not going to run down to Hood River on a car show. I'm going to put it in the trailer and take it and go. This is one you can jump in on Friday night at 4 o'clock. Head clear down this, uh, you know, 100 miles down the road for a car show, and you know you're going to get there, and you know you're going to get back. 14 seconds left to go. Twin Falls, Idaho, back in the lead. 10 seconds to go. We're going to roll it out. Place your bid. Don't lose it if you want it. And with three, two, and one seconds, that S15 is going to Twin Falls. Okay, up next, lot 109, a 1994 Audi Cabriolet convertible. This Cabriolet is a local car, only, only 71,000 original miles. Finished in pearlescent white clear coat metallic with a black convertible top. It retailed when it was new in 1994, Scott. This car retailed for over $40,000. It's powered by a 2.8 liter V6, paired with a four-speed automatic transmission. Unbelievable ride. It'd be a fun convertible, great for what's coming. It's summertime, time to put the top down. Here's a great ride to cruise around in. Yeah, that's that, not a lot to say right there. kind of speaks for itself. It's another one of those cars that's going to go right down the road. It's going to get you where you're going, and uh, um, it's going to get you uh, to the car show and back. Have a lot of fun. Pull up the drive-in. Put the top down. Have a lot of fun. High bidders in the lead from Fort Irwin, California at $5,100 on this good-looking 94 Audi Cabriolet convertible. Yeah, Scott, absolutely beautiful. If you sit here and look, it doesn't look like anybody ever sat in those seats. 
beautiful white leather interior, heated seats, airbags, power mirrors, power windows, power, power, power. Beautiful car. Great. To, I mean, California, this thing right here, you put the top down, everybody's going to see you coming down the road. 71,000 original miles on the car, finishing the pearlescent white. Beautiful paint right there. Folks, we got 21 seconds to go. California's still in the lead at $5,100. Another nice buy. If, if you're wanting to get a budget car, guys, we're just we're about 10 cars away, and these $5,000 and $7,000 prices are going to go out the window real fast. So step up. If you need to see a car, if you're looking for one, uh, your opportunities are getting slimmer, and uh, get in and help yourself. Here we are, 5100 and it's gone. Up next, we've got Lot 110, a 1963 Chevrolet Corvair convertible. This Corvair, Corvair only shows 77,000 miles on the odometer. The owner reports that there were only three local, local owners to the area since it was brand new. It's finished in blue, features the original white convertible top. The power top motor does need to be installed. It's with it. You're going to get it. It's not installed. The top can be retracted manually, but just so you know, the, the power motor is not there. It, or it, it's not installed. It's with the car. This thing's powered by a flat six-cylinder, 90-horsepower engine paired with a four-speed transmission. Absolutely beautiful car. It includes several registrations dating back to 1967. It's got the original Washington 1963 license plates, lots of receipts, lots of pay for paperwork, a beautiful 63 Chevrolet Corvair. 1963, that was a good year, Justin. That was a really good year. Uh, William, that's a local bidder right now from West Richland's in the lead. He's got a max bid and play, folks. You're going to have to fight for it. There's a good car at $7,700 is in the lead on a 63 Chevrolet Con Corvair convertible. Original steel wheels, factory hubcaps, radial tires. It's got the original blue vinyl bucket seats and door panels and carpet. The wipers and the heater work. It's got the original AM radio. There's a car right there that's not got a lot wrong with it. You want to get into the restoration and get one that you can get some awards with for originality. Here's one you can go win some trophies with. We got 10 seconds to go, folks, and the Corvair's headed right next door. Until West Richland, Washington, at $7,700. Let's push the car outside. Up next, we've got Lot 111, a 1939 Chevrolet two-door coupe. This Chevy coupe is from an estate, and it is finished in a beautiful, beautiful gold. It's got a fiberglass front end and rear fenders, chrome grill and tinted windows. It's powered by a Chrysler V8, four-barrel carbureted, chrome valve covered in air cleaners. This thing's got custom fenders, dual exhaust, aluminum radiator. It's paired with an automatic transmission. Transmission. This thing has a Camaro subframe. Unbelievable classic Chevy street rod right here. You talk about something that's going to get noticed. When you pull into a car show, people are going to stop and, and just and stare. Well, let me tell you what. That four-barrel uh, carburetor in that uh, V8 Chrysler V8 is talking to you when it pulls in. Uh, good sound on that car. Car needs a little work. It's got some. It's got some issues up here on the fender. I saw driving in. You know, you're going to see that in the pictures. Uh, it's not perfect. It's going to need a little TLC, but it's a car that you can put some time and effort into. Came from a local estate. Many of you, uh, many of our local folks would have known Don Sprinkle. We've got about eight or nine cars from his estate. Don built. Uh, each and every one of these vehicles these cars have set for about eight to ten years and we've got them we've revived them they're here they're going they're selling they're going to the highest bidder and right now this car is going to a good local collector uh, right here in Kennewick at 79 well it was now it's heading to Angleton Texas for eight thousand dollars eight thousand dollars <coughs> but here's a nice car you can you know the opportunities are limitless what you can do with these yeah, and the interior on this thing, looking through the windows, is, yeah, I mean, it's absolutely, it's custom, it's great, it's fun, it's noticeable. I, I still go back to this gold color, this deep, rich gold color is is absolutely beautiful. Texas in the lead, five seconds to go. Kennewick, if you want it, you better jump on it. It's going out the door, two seconds to go. That car is headed to Angleton, Texas. Thank you. Up next, Scott's Lot 112, a 1966 Ford F-250. This F-250 shows only 41,000 miles on the odometer. Now, 
We're not sure if that's 41 or 141, but it shows 41 on on the odometer. Slope farm truck is finished in Caribbean turquoise. The patina is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It's been taken care of. It looks like it's been clear coated. The it. I mean, what a great, what a great, great vehicle here. I, I hope the camera's doing justice to this truck. Here's a good old Ford truck, good old Ford F-250, a great patina on it, a lot of things you could do with this, leave it just the way it is, drive it around, have fun, take it to car shows, uh, put some wheels on it, you want to lift it up, you can do all kinds of things right on it, but whoever it is, Randy from Pasco is going to do it at $4,100. Uh, we've got one minute to go on this beautiful Ford F-250, a 66 model. 66. Yeah, under those 55 years of patina is a 352 cubic inch V8 paired with a four-speed transmission. Runs around on factory steel eight-lug wheels and 16-inch tires. The interior is new, newly reupholstered bench seat. It's got a full set of gauges, heater, defroster, the original AM radio. This right here is a time capsule, Scott. It's a classic F-250 in this beautiful, beautiful Caribbean turquoise. And it's got the toolboxes down on the side, too, on the side of the bed. That was an additional option. Guys, there's a lot of value there for $4,100. Think about it. $4,100, you can do a lot with it. 15 seconds to go. Randy's going to take it home to Pasco. If nobody else bids, 10 seconds, I'm opening the door. We're going to roll that truck outside and get ready to sell a Beetle. All right, coming in next, we've got a lot number 113, a 1978 Volkswagen Beetle Carmen Convertible. This VW Bug is the Carmen edition, and one of the last years of the VW Convertible Bug were imported to America. It's finished in the ermine white and features a new black convertible top. It's a pretty original with only 70,000 miles showing on the odometer. Included is a tow bar that make a great tow rig behind your motorhome. It's powered by the original fuel-injected 1.6-liter flat four paired with a four-speed manual transmission. Rolls on the Super Beetle. 15-inch rims, chrome trim rings, and radial tires. The interior features black vinyl upholstery with matching door panels, factory steering wheel, and aftermarket stereo. It's a classic VW convertible bug. Ladies and gentlemen, help yourself right here. High bid is $6,500 now in Pocatello, Idaho. Holds the bid on a classic Cabriolet. You talk about making Herbie jealous. This thing right here is absolutely beautiful. And, and I think you did say, but this is one of the last years that the convertibles were imported into America. This car's absolutely beautiful. The top's beautiful. The top works. Go out. It's summertime. Everybody needs something that they can take the top down on. And we've got a battle going on between Richland and Pocatello. Pocatello's in the lead at seven. There's Richland at 7,100. Pocatello, you've got to bid 72 on a good-looking Beetle convertible right there. Well, and with the miles that are on this and the tow bar, it might have had half of them behind a motorhome. Well, exactly. With the tow towed. bar, that yeah. you know, could be half, the, half those miles were behind the motorhome. So yep. who knows? 7,300 is the lead. Richland, Washington holds the lead right there. And now 74 from Pocatello. We'll let them battle it out once again every time you bid. All right. <clears throat> 7,500 back to Richland, Washington. Every time you bid, the clock's going to reset to 30 seconds. Give everybody fair opportunity on a good-looking Beetle Carmen Convertible. And clean, Scott. I can't believe how straight this car is. I mean, at every panel, you walk around it, you look through it, John. I know you've spent a lot of time walking around them. This thing's clean, it's straight, it's beautiful. Outside and in it two, goes. one, it's gone. And it stays right here in Richland, Washington. Congratulations. Up next, Scott, a lot 114, a 1992 Jaguar XJ convertible. This XJS has just only 54,000 miles. It's finished in Brooklyn's green. It's got a tan convertible top powered by a 5.0-liter V12 fuel-injected engine, 263 horsepower, dual exhaust paired with an automatic transmission, fully independent suspension, 
beautiful, beautiful, classic convertible Jaguar powered by a V12. And 263 horses in this thing right here. Three horsepower V12, folks. There's a great little Jaguar. Another convertible. Top looks in beautiful shape. Right now, we've got $6,900 on it. Uh, what a buy. Uh, staying right here in Pasco, Washington, unless somebody else bids. But take a look there at a good-looking Jaguar. Dual exhaust, 200. Those cylinders, 5.3 liter. That's pretty good size. Pretty I'm amazed at the horsepower coming out of a 5.3, but uh, back in 1992, that's kind of what you got for, uh, for horsepower back then. Got the Pirelli radial tires on it and, uh, and a V12. Good car. We've got a new leader from Puyallup, Washington at $7,000 on the convertible. And uh, folks, we're just about uh, five or six, seven cars away from getting into some beautiful, beautiful cars. So if you're looking for a budget collector car that you can have fun with, not spend a lot of money. Look at the look at the condition of the interior of that car. Look at those pictures roll by on your screen right there. For seventy one hundred dollars, I think we need. I mean, there's some important things here. One V twelve, two V twelve, three fifty four thousand miles, four V twelve, and I don't know if we mentioned this thing's got a V twelve in it, Scott. V twelve, yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. finished in. I mean the. The Brooklyn's green's beautiful. The classic green Jaguar color. Absolutely. Hard to beat. <clears throat> it's green. It's a Jag. It's got a convertible top, and it's got a V12 in it. Well, and not to talk too much about that V12, but I tell you, it, you know, the smoothness of that V12 motor would be amazing. 7,500, we've got kind of a battle going on right now. Pasco, Washington's in the lead. 7,500, we've got 24 seconds left to go. Place your bids, folks. It's not coming back. 7,600, Puyallup's in the lead. Pasco, you're out. You've got to bid 77. Place your bids or lose out forever. Help yourself. We're at $7,700 on the 92 Jaguar XJ Convertible. Well, Justin, we'll just go have coffee. We'll let these guys uh, duke it out for just a little bit. I think and, we could go uh, play that round of golf. You yeah, were we can about. maybe get in that short round of golf. Yeah, yeah, only I just only fifty four thousand miles. I think that's what shocks me. And V twelve. And V twelve, but to be in in the in the beautiful shape it's in, it's got the got the factory uh, fifteen inch aluminum mesh wheels again on Pirelli tires. It's a beautiful car just to go cruise on a Sunday afternoon in. Have a lot of fun with it. I think it's a V12. Okay. Yeah, it's but I'm not 100% sure, John. Now they're battling out. Puyallup's in the lead. Five seconds to go. The door's going open. We're going to push her out. Thanks for your bids. Congratulations, Puyallup, Washington. You're the new owner of a beautiful 92 Jaguar convertible. Lot 115's coming next, Scott. It's a 1980 GMC K15 Sierra Classic. It's a short bed. It's a 4 by 4 It's lifted, and it's got a three-quarter ton drivetrain underneath of it. This classic Sierra package, Scott's powered by a small block V8. It's got an automatic transmission. It's got, I mean, the work that's been put into this thing is unbelievable on the underside, according to what we've been told here. This is a classic lifted short bed. It's a 4 by 4 It's this Beautiful, beautiful blue collar. What a great truck that is. I mean, it's a it's starting to become a times capsule. Oh, you know, starting, is, hey, it's a square body. That's all you got to say. It's a square body Chevy or a GMC in this case. And uh, these things are like a rocket ship skyrocketing in value and appreciation. Right now, high bidder holds the lead $9,300 from Maryland. I just, I've got a little bit of a problem with something that was built since I've been born being a time capsule. I don't think you can say that quite yet. But th this is, it's absolutely beautiful. It's got new hubs and ball joints. It rolls on aluminum modular wheels. Great all-terrain tires. The interior features a black vinyl seat. It's got black door panels, carpet. Everything's been taken care of. Full set of gauges. Tilt wheel, air conditioning. New leader from Yakima. Yeah. Hello, Power JJ. Windows, How Power are you? door locks, dual fuel tanks. This, uh, it's, this is absolutely be unbelievable for a square body classic Sierra. 
And Maryland's not going to be outbid. He comes right back. Maryland's back in the lead at $9,600. J.J. from Yakima, you're out. 18 seconds to go. Don't miss it. On a 1980 GMC K15 Sierra Classic, new leader from Mount Ver Vernon, Washington. At 97, Maryland comes back at 98. Ah, uh, this is why I love an auction. Let you. Oh, there's J.J. from Yakima at 99. This is your last $100 bid, folks. The next bidder is the last bidder. He gets to bid $100. Then it goes to two fifty. dollars So there you go. We're at ten grand going to Yakima. Maryland, you're out. No, you're not. He's back in the lead. Ten two fifty dollars on a square body Jimmy. A little work on this truck. You could have yourself a gorgeous, gorgeous truck. I can't believe the appreciation value of what these trucks have done over the last three, four years. It's just... Uh, the, these, these are the new Porsche Carreras. I mean, they're just, just absolutely on a straight line going up in appreciation and the amount of people that have appreciation for them and are collecting these trucks and are getting them and fixing them up. And, and this is the kind of truck, you know, it's not all dolled up. I mean, it's, it's had a lot of work done to it, but it still needs a lot of work to get it if you want to really take this thing to the top. But look at the bones that you have. Look at the condition of the sheet metal. You've got a great start right there. You know, and that's the one thing people ask us, why do we focus on talking about Pacific Northwest vehicles? Folks, we don't hardly know what rust is out here in the Pacific Northwest. And, and that's evident when you start seeing these kind of vehicles come in with this kind of age. And, and you look at the condition of the sheet metal. We're at 11 grand. Yakima's in the lead. Maryland's back in the lead at 11, 250. It's still going. John? And you can get in this thing and drive it. She's ready to go. With that three-quarter ton running gear, oh. it's built tough. That'd be built Ford tough, but that's a GMC. <laughs> no, a and, and it's more than a starter vehicle because the start is well, well underway on what's, under, on, what's on the underside. Yeah, like Scott said, there's a lot of work to do. That truck's heading out the road in one second. It's so a great going beginning. to Maryland. Piece. Thank you for your bids, folks. Thank you, Yakima. Thank you, Mount Vernon. Up next, lot 116, a 1980 Ford Pinto wagon. This Pinto is the final year of production for this classic Ford Compact. This car right here, it's the cruising package wagon. It's been built into a street machine. It's finished in maroon and black. It features a Mustang hood scoop, factory porthole windows, rear, rear window louvers. It's powered and built on, with a 302 cubic V8 engine, Fort Bell carburetor. It's had a bigger cam put in it, new fuel pump, new dual exhaust. The power plant is paired to a C4 automatic transmission, a 5.0 Mustang rear axle. It's got beefed up suspension, new shocks. This underneath this car is completely redone unbelievable it's unique it's well built it's a pinto it's a street machine you well look good in this, Scott. Aluminum. john porthole window that's stock that's factory yeah, that was an option on these wagons wow sitting at sixty six hundred dollars 45 seconds left to go on the one lot 116 ford pinto wagon with porthole windows i've never seen such a thing I love the spoiler on the back right there. Have a lot of fun with that car. 6600 is the price. 34 seconds left to go. We're going to open the gate and get it out of here. Cruise control, steer, tilt steering column, full gauges, custom stereo, a unique and well-built Pinto Street machine. Here she goes. Oh, 6600. They're still battling out. Max bid is in play. We'll let them fight it out. On a porthole pinto. Say that seven times real fast. With louvers and a hood scoop. All right, open the gate, get them outside. 6,600, she's gone. Let's bring in lot number 117 on a 1970 Mercury Marauder. And folks, we're just about four or five cars away from the end of the budget cars. Scott, this Marauder X100 Coupe is said to be one of only 2,646 examples built for 1970. This thing was sold new to the Fresno Catholic Diocese by Marty Frank Mercury in Watsonville, California. It's powered by a 429 cubic inch V8 paired with a three-speed automatic transmission. I think the funniest thing is apparently the Catholic Diocese must really like their quiet because the floors in this thing have been treated with sound deadener applied to keep it quiet on the inside. 
Oh, yeah. Complete rebuild of the entire running gear, including suspension, brakes, all components, all new gaskets from front to rear, interior, from upholstery to headliner. The floors have the sound deadener right there. High bidder is 12500 Richland, Washington's in the lead. We've got 50 sec seconds left to go, and they're working on getting it in the ring. Might be a little, have a little stage fright. That'll happen once in a while with some of these old cars. And okay, uh, make sure the boys didn't go to lunch. Right. And that's all right. John, just make sure you get him queued up on lot 118 in case 117 doesn't get across the block. Oh, she's coming. Oh, she's coming. All right. We've got 31 seconds left to go, folks. 12.5 is the price on a Mercury Mirage. That's an X100. That sounds like something from the uh, Space Force. News. Yeah. Well, and the X100, Scott, like I said earlier, only 2,646 built 1970 model year. So it's a rare car. I promise you there's not that many of them out there that are still rolling around right now. Nine seconds to go. Is it coming in, John? We're going to move on to lot number 118. 118 next in the ring. Whoops. There we go. 118. Here's another one from the Sprinkle Estate. 1931 Ford Coupe. 1931 Ford Coupe right here, ladies and gentlemen. Lot number 118 in your catalog. This little deuce coupe is another estate vehicle, all steel and then chopped. 31 Ford, finished in bronze. You got the tilt out front windshield, tilted windows, powered by a, listen to this, 392 cubic inch Hemi V8, dual quad carburetors and headers paired to a TH350 automatic transmission. Folks, there's a whale of a car. It's got this classic Deuce Coupe. It's got a Ford rear end, four link suspension, coil over shocks. It rolls on color matching steel wheels, chrome trim rings, hubcaps, radial tires. The interior features black upholstered seats, black door panels and carpet. It's got a full set of chrome gauges, custom steering wheel. I mean a classic, classic right here. Beautiful car. You talk about going to a show and shine and making people turn and look and see what's going on. Right here's your car, John. Oh, and it's done in that beautiful, you know, that, that, all you need is that, some vanilla ice cream and that root beer, brown color on that car. Folks, when you go to the dictionary and look up Little Deuce Coupe, the picture of this car is in the dictionary right, right that, there. That big Hemi under the hood just looks awesome. Big Hemi right there. It's got all the hardware and sitting at $17,750 right. from Lexington, Kentucky. We got a max bid in play. Place your bids, folks. 18000 He's still in the lead from Lexington, Kentucky. You got to bid again if you want to win. 18000 is in the lead. Roy from Lexington, Kentucky on the little deuce coupe. You got 15 seconds to go. He's got this one right here. This There's Billings, Montana. He finally beat the max bid, 18250. We got a new leader, 18250. And uh, Roy from Lexington, Kentucky, you got a bid again. This is the kind of car that you take to car shows and you bring hardware home with. Yes. The, it's a winner. It's absolutely beautiful. This bronzy root beerish color is beautiful. It, like I said, this is one that you bring home hardware with every time you go on a weekend. Two seconds to go. The Deuce Coupe is sold and heading to Billings, Montana. Thank you. Thank you for your bids. Kentucky, thank you. Let's bring in the 78 Ford Econoline Quadravan. Now, here's quite a rig. Scott, the one owner, locally family-owned up here in the Northwest, it was bought brand new by the current owner's father. It's a one-ton, four-by-four custom, used just, I mean, very little, barely used, Beautiful, beautiful Ford van. It uh, only 29,000 miles. 29,000 original miles on a 78 Ford Econo line. Got a 460 cubic inch V8, so you could go buy everything but a gas station. You can pull everything that you want to tie to it. It's got an automatic transmission. It's a unique, unique, low mileage, and by low, I mean only 29,000 miles. 29,000 miles showing on that van, folks. A local rig, one owner, family-owned, and uh, we've got a minute to go right now. Pasco, Washington's in the lead at 13,000. It's selling to the high bidder. I'd never heard of a Quadra van before I heard from this. I saw, you know, I was like, what is that? Well, I tell you what, Scott, if you're going to live down by the river, this is the van you live down by the river in. Unbelievable four by four with 29,000 miles. Go, John. Dual tanks for that 460. You'll need it. But what's a new Sprinter van cost? Oh, exactly. Buy this thing, low miles. Yeah. yeah. Make it into a camper. 
yeah, put make it into a camper, pull your boat to the river, and uh, pull here anything. You got a four wheel drive, uh, 1978 Ford Econoline Quadravan, thirteen thousand five hundred dollars is the price. Pasco Washington still in the lead, runner up bidder. Where are you from? Let's see here, Chip. I wonder if that's the Chip that I know. That could be the Chip that I know. Chip, you're out from Pasco. Yes, you got a bid again to win. Bill from Pasco is in the lead at 14,000. Yeah, 460, dual tanks, four before. You can't go wrong with this van right here. Nope, there's a whale of a van. Five seconds to go. We're going to open the door, get it outside. Here we go. And say goodbye, Quadravan. Hello, Pasco. Oh, we got another bid. It went to 14.5. You got a max bid in play, gentlemen. You got to keep bidding. 14.5 is the price. I don't know where you find another one like it, Justin. Absolutely not, especially not that clean. No. With or no straight, miles on with it. With no miles. Story behind it. Basically, it's a one owner. It's a one family owner for yep. sure. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful van. One second left. She's it's gone. gone. Staying here local again. All right. Let's talk about a 77 Ford Mustang Cobra II. New deal, Scott. This Triona Cobra II only has 33,000 original miles. It was bought new by a lady in Sacramento, Cal Sacramento, California. She sold it. What is it? That's that car. She sold this in 03, and then it was sold again to the third and current owner in 2005. It's been repainted one time in 04, finished in the original white with blue Cobra stripes. It's got the original T-tops, rear window louvers, swing out rear window quarter window, rear quarter windows. It's powered by the original 302 V8. It's been upgraded with an Edelbrock aluminum manifold and four bell carburetor. Beautiful car. This is a hard to find Cobra II. It's built to run just like it was from the should have been from the factory. Beautiful original interior right there, ladies and gentlemen. A 77 Mustang Cobra II T-top. Broomfield, Colorado holds the lead right now at $12,500 on a good-looking little Mustang right there. And uh, Mustang Cobra. I think there's some... No. Factory. This thing has some horsepower. It sounds great. Great driver. And the pictures really don't do it justice when you We've look at that. We've got a new interior. leader, new Port Ritchie Florida is in the lead at 13,250. And look inside, Scott. This thing, this car right here, the interior is original. Features white bucket seats, door panels, black dash. The carpet's original. It's got a full set of gauges on the console. The Cobra steering wheel, it's original. I love the lacy spoke aluminum wheels, good looking wheels. The car sounds righteous when it drives in. I mean, you hear it. It's like, this is a car that when it pulls in, you kind of like, ooh, what's that? You're, you're here, it talks to you. Colorado's back in the lead at $14,000. Guys, you got a bid if you want to win this car. She's going to the new bidder. She's going to the highest bidder. No reserve here tonight at Trucks and Auto Auctions, ladies and gentlemen. I've got 14.5 Broomfield, Colorado still in the lead. I think one important point, too, is the upgrades that were done to this car, they retained all the original components. So if you want to put this thing back to completely factory, those components come with this car. Okay, so that's a great point to make, John. Thanks for pointing that out, that if you want to take her all back to factory original, the components are all coming with it. We've got a battle going on between Colorado and Florida. Right now, Colorado holds the lead at $16,000. Uh, don't know where you find another one with these kind of miles, this kind of story, this kind of provenance, and uh, on a really good-looking little Mustang. And clean, absolutely. And clean, clean, clean. Unbelievably clean. The... The paint is fresh. Now, it did have a repaint in 04, but what a beautiful car that is absolutely as straight as can Let's be. Let's open the door. looks like, well, we got to bid again, but we're going to open the door and get it rolling outside. We've got a battle going on between Colorado and Florida. Max bid is in play. Yeah, hold that one off for a little bit, guys. My bad. Colorado still in the lead at $17,000 on the Mustang, Cobra Tube. Florida, you're out. You got a bid to win. $17,500 is now the price. 25 seconds left to go. 
Going to have a new owner. Go oh, there's Port Ritchie, Florida, back in the lead at 17,750. 17,750, Colorado, you got to come back. It's amazing how this thing's gone, Scott, because when we started selling this, we were at, what, 14,000? Yep, well, that's what well, makes it not right there. That's good, David. As this thing was supposed to close, we were around 14,000, and here we just crossed the 18,000 mark. It's got 27 seconds left. It's going to Colorado right now. Right now it's headed to Colorado. We've got two people that really know what they're bidding on right here. Two people have set their eye on a 33,000 original mile Cobra II, and uh, that's good. We've got happy buyers. We've got happy seller. Nine seconds left to go. And, uh, well, now it's at 18.5. So we'll just let them keep duking it out. 18.5 is the price. 24 seconds left to go. Broomfield, Colorado. Still, oh, there is Rich, Newport, Ritchie, Florida. Takes the lead at 18.750. This is kind of like calling a Kentucky Derby race. <laughs> yeah, Scott, 20 seconds left. We're going to Florida right now. So we're battling between Florida and Colorado. That's the beauty of what we've produced up here with the online portion of this auction the ability to somebody to bid in florida to bid in colorado five seconds left to go to we're at 19 we're back to colorado absolutely shout out to jacqueline our marketing director for doing the marketing that she does on the job that she does on uh, getting the word out about our auctions absolutely we're at 19 250 only 20 seconds left but we had we've got bidders and people that have i, I think everybody submitted bids from greece to Australia, all over the United States, all over the continental U.S. Unbelievable what we've right been Right here in little old Pasco, Washington. Absolutely. Seven seconds to go. Florida's in the lead. Four seconds left to go. Are we going to sell the Mustang? And it is gone. Well, thank you, Colorado, for your bids. Bring in the next car. Ooh, look at here. Up next, uh, lot 121 is a 1966 Ford Galaxy convertible this galaxy was an estate car it's finished in an absolutely beautiful blue it's got a white convertible top the car originally was a galaxy 500 the convert convertible that came with a 390 but it's been cloned to be a 7 liter with a 428 in it the car's got the correct components both mechanically and cosmetically it's powered by powered like i said by this 420 Eight cubic inch V8. It's got an Edelbrock aluminum manifold, manifold, four barrel carburetor, chrome valve covers, dual exhaust, paired with an automatic transmission. A beautiful car, a classic Galaxy. It's a convertible. It's an estate vehicle. It's absolutely beautiful. And you talk about something that you're going to set in, have fun, push on that skinny pedal on the right, and get somewhere. It's this 1966 Ford Galaxy. And Justin, we have the little brother of this car coming up way too late in the catalog, but it uh, originally was a non-runner, seven, original seven-liter car, and it's sitting at already double the price of this, and it's not a convertible. It's a hard top. So get in and help yourself. 38 seconds left to go. High bidder holds the lead. Valerie in Hermiston, Oregon at 12500 on the 66 Ford Galaxy convertible. Sounds good. It's got the seven-liter 428 in it, V8. Idlebrock manifold, four barrel carburetor. It's got everything you want. Clock and tachometer, 20 seconds left to go. Nobody else bids. The uh, Galaxy's heading south to Hermiston, Oregon, will be the new owner of that beautiful car. You'll see that one showing up some car shows. Seven seconds left. I believe this one is going to Hermiston, Oregon at 12.5. What a beautiful car. Up next, lot 122 is a 1956 Chevrolet 3200. This step side pickup was stripped down for the repaint along with a new front end clip. It's got Chevy suspension installed. It's finished in a maroon with chrome grill bumpers, spare tire, dual fuel tanks, powered by a 350 cubic V8, paired with a TH350 automatic transmission. It's got a stock rear end, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful truck. Uh, Camaro steering wheel, got a great sound and stereo speakers in it. It's got the original AM radio in it too, though. Uh, this is a classic, classic Chevrolet pickup, Scott. 
You bet. Good old 56 Chevrolet, Chevrolet 3200. You got the spare tire hanging on the side. Emmett Idaho's in the lead at 14750 on a good classic collector Chevrolet truck. Not a whole lot we have to say. Had some, got some nice ads on this with the HEI distributor. Got the chrome air cleaner and dual exhaust, power steering, power brakes with the front disc on there and the automatic transmission. Yeah, good solid truck. Another local Northwest truck. Good solid truck to start with. The guy did a lot of work to it. Great driver, super body style, awesome color. Kind of speaks for itself. There's just not a whole lot you have to say. You've got a beautiful 56 Chevrolet 3200 right here, Camaro steering wheel. And uh, we've got 30 seconds to go. Emmett Idaho's in the lead at $14,750 on the truck. She's going to have a new owner. Sell us to the highest bidder. Whoop, we got a bidder at 15. Emmett's still in the lead. You're playing against a max bid. See who the runner up is here now. Jeff, you got to hit it one more time, maybe, and that might put you in the lead. Uh, Jeff from Burlington, Washington. So we got Burlington, Washington, and Emmett Idaho duking it out. Sitting at $15,000, five seconds left to go, guys. We're going to send it out the door, and she's going to head to Emmett, Idaho. Two seconds left to go. Okay, Scott, a little bit of a change of gears here. We're going to roll to a 1962 Studebaker Gran Turismo Hawk. This Gran Turismo, in 19, built in 1962, only has... 88,000 miles on the odometer, which is believed to be original. Powered by a 289 cubic inch V8, 210 horsepower engine, four-speed manual transmission. It's got power assist brakes, power steering, beautiful, beautiful red vinyl upholstery. What a great, great car, a great Studebaker. It's got full factory gauges, including tack. It's got a factory AM radio in it it's got am fm cd player that's built into a box it's kind of hidden spare tire it's got the jack the original jacks in the trunk it's a classic studebaker hawk kind of a uh hen's tooth right here you're looking at something that you're not very easy to find certainly not in this condition we're sitting at only twelve thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars on the studebaker hawk it's the right color got the beautiful wine colored interior right there Believed to be 88,000 mile original miles on it right there. A nice front new front windshield. Beautiful looking hub taps with the white wall tires. Uh, it's sitting there right. There's a car that you can go out and have a lot of fun with. Go to the car shows. 12750 and uh, leaders in Richland, Washington right now on a Gran Turismo Studebaker Hawk. We've got 20 seconds left to go. Up next, we're going to get into that motorcycle. And then we're going to get into some cars, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get into some cars. Got that 64 Chevrolet Corvette Roadster Stingray, the Jaguar XKE, the 2020 Gladiator, and more. Five seconds to go. The door's going open. 12750. Get the Studebaker out. Let's bring in the Harley. And in comes lot 124, Scott. It's a 1997 Harley Davidson Dyna Lowrider Radical Custom. This custom Harley was bought new in 97, 1997. It's completely rebuilt by two builders over the next four months. They invested over 50,000 in this bike. It's finished in a custom silver paint, loaded, and I do mean loaded. Hello, with Shy. Components everywhere. It's got over 125 pieces, Scott, on the bike that have been powder coated. It's powered and bored and stroked to 89 cubic inch engine, balanced, blueprinted by Cunningham Racing, who was a 1996 Harley World Champion drag race team. Unbelievable bike. Absolutely an eye turner. What, what a great 1997 Harley. I was wondering why Kyle was on that bike, and now I see why. It's got a purple teddy bear. Right. Okay. All right. Folks, there's a, <laughs> there's, there's a custom custom. That's all I can say about it. Uh, there's a custom custom. Right now, we've got Shy from uh, Prosser, Washington in the lead on that 97 Harley Davidson. I've got to think that's good value. I'm no expert when it comes to motorcycles, certainly on Harley Davidsons, but that bike looks like it's got a lot of features a lot of options and it's selling to the high bidder right now at seventy two hundred dollars well and bought in 97 and then just taken and said okay let's buy it and then here let's rebuild it 
Yeah, let's let's build a new bike out of this parts bike. And let's throw fifty thousand at it while we're doing it. I yeah. mean what what a beautiful bike. Come out of a collection down a walla walla. We've got about four or five of the vehicles from that collection in. We got fifteen seconds to go, folks. It's selling to the highest bidder, going down the road, going out the door. She is selling no reserve. And I got seventy two hundred dollars bid gonna open the Oh, we did get a new leader. Steven sitting in the weeds from Kennewick. Shy, you're out. Prosser, you're out. And Kyle was able, able to make it out without falling over on him. All right. We're going to let uh, Kennewick and Prosser duke it out. Kennewick, don't wait till the last second. It doesn't give you any advantage. You just got to bid. You just got to click to bid on the 97 Harley Davidson. 18 seconds left to go. Prosser's in the lead. Appreciate each and every one of you out there, ladies and gentlemen. We just went over 600 registered bidders on the auction. Appreciate each and every one of you. Certainly want to thank all of our consigners for bringing us an outstanding setup of vehicles. Thanks each and every one of you folks that came out last night to the uh, Bob Carter Memorial Show and Shine. Had a great amount of fun, a lot of fun. Raised $5,000 for Seattle Children's Hospital and, and just had a great time. And we're looking forward already to doing it again next year. Just circle the calendar, Memorial Day weekend. That's our day, going to be Saturday. We'll do this all over again, John. Boy, this, this Harley, this is a lot of bang for the buck, and that is really, really a super nice bike. You looked at the pictures, look at the details of that thing, and all the work and all the money that was put into it. This is just pennies on the dollar right now. It so just, someone's getting great value. Right, John. At just $7,800, go tell me what a new Harley's worth right now. And I'll bet you a new Harley is just about like anything else new. It's impossible to find. At, at, at $7,800, 7900 now, 30 seconds left. Staying right here in Kennewick, what a great buy for what is probably pennies on the dollar, especially for what's been invested in this bike. Yeah, Kennewick and Prosser, you both can do us a favor and just keep clicking if you want it. Just click. Don't wait. You're not going to gain anything, and uh, it'll speed it up. But uh, we're going to let you do that. You're gonna, it, it's up to you to bid when you want it. But... Uh, there's no advantage of waiting, folks. If you wait till that last second, that's going to put another 30 seconds on the clock for your competitor. So get in and help yourself. Prosser's in the lead. $8,000 is the high bid. We got eight seconds left to go. And then we're getting into the 64 Chevrolet Corvette Roadster Stingray Resto Mod. I'm going to tell you all about it. Fifteen seconds left at eighty one hundred, staying right here up. We're going back to Prosser at eighty two hundred. Eighty three hundred. Kennewick and Prosser. Duke it out. Prosser bid again if you want it. 8300 is the price. 20 seconds left to go. Got to see good value. I'd like to sneak up on a Bronco that somebody bought new and put $50,000 into it and then be able to buy it for about 20% of what they invested. Absolutely, and these guys just keep going back and forth. We're at $8,600. Could be here till next year doing this motorcycle. 20, this price. 20 seconds left between Prosser and Kennewick. Guys, just keep clicking. There's no reason to wait. There's no advantage to it. Are we going to get a winner? Five, four, three, two. Oh, here comes Kennewick back in the lead. 8,700. All right, Prosser, you're out. Don't wait so long. Click it if you want it or let her fly. Man, look at the next three. 64 Chevrolet Corvette Roadster Stingray. 66 Jaguar XKE. 2020 Jeep Gladiator. 1968 Chevrolet Camaro RSSS. It isn't going to get much better than that, folks. We've got some gorgeous cars coming in. Meanwhile... We've got a battle going on on a Harley Davidson. Eighty, what was is that? Six grand when it come in the ring. We walked the dog for a hundred dollar bills up to uh, eighty nine hundred. Kennewick's in the lead, eighty nine hundred. Yes, yeah, looking for nine thousand. The meat and potatoes are coming up when we just crossed the nine thousand mark oh, on the, the prime Harley. rib. But I mean, it, it is 
that this is absolutely top shelf. We're getting this some over exciting the next stuff. 10, 15 cars. Next 20 is, cars is, is it, uh, really fun. Yep. Here, um, we're going to get into the heart of, of what we've got to offer today. Some outstanding Northwest, Pacific Northwest sourced, dry, clean, rust free, beautiful vehicles. And we've got a $9,200 Harley Davidson right here. We should charge by the hour up here on these cars. The longer it stays in the ring, the more we make. 13 seconds left to go. Prosser's in the lead. Steve, are you going to wave the white flag? Or are you going to bid again? you got five seconds to do it. Oh, here he comes. No white flag. Steve's in the lead at 93. They're going to work this up to 10 grand, and then they're going to get to $250 bids. So we'll just let them do it. Give the listeners out there a break. Say hi. How's everybody doing? John, what's your question? Hey, Spokane, how you doing? Glad you're on here. Chris, I see you're still hanging around. I don't see any bids, Chris, but I'm sure you're kind of keeping your powder dry. Randy, Daryl, Mark, Michael, Ken, Jeremy, Dan, Steve, Michael. $9,500, 20 seconds left. I These guys are going to try to hit that $10,000 You know, if I kept mark. reading all names, I still couldn't. I don't have enough time. Mike, Rich, Dana, Josh, Ryan, Dave, Brandon, Ethan, Brian, Lewis, Janet, Mark, Will. Hey, Will, how you doing? Sweet home, Oregon. Yes, sweet home. Hello there, Will. Good to see you on board. Hope you get what you... Cheryl and Zeke absolutely battling out. We're at $9,900. Don't let up, Cheryl. That's the way to do it. We're at 10000 Now we're going to step into bigger Oh, steps. there we go, ten two fifty. 250 And we have a new leader from Othello, Washington. Where'd he come from? <laughs> sitting in the weeds. Sitting in the weeds, ten two fifty. He didn't like bidding the $100 increments. No, he, he wanted, wanted to wait until to get into the big money. Ten two fifty. Ten five from Prosser. Hey, Jack, are you watching from Missouri, my friend? My good friend, Jack Schneider, just had his 14th birthday. You understand he's online watching. Good to see you, Jack. Thanks for logging in. Hope I, everything's doing good in Missouri. I remember my 14th birthday. Do you? Yeah, ne neither do I. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be lucky you see the next one if you're not careful. <laughs> All right. Guys, we're at 10-5, and we're sold. Ooh. Finally, 10-5. Prosser got it. All right, okay. folks, new Let's deal. go to 125. Bring it on in, ladies and gentlemen, 1964. <laughs> 1964 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. This Corvette was completely disassembled and built back up to into a resto mod in 2008 by Street Rods by Denny in Enumclaw, Washington. It was built on a Paul Newman C4 suspension, has only 1,800 miles since the build was completed. It is finished in gray with silver sting stinger on the 67 Corvette 427 hood is a new black convertible top matching hard top, custom hidden door handles with electric remote door poppers, powered by an LS2 V8 from the Newman Car Creations paired with the 4LS6 uh, SE automatic overdrive transmission, aluminum radio. Folks, there's a myriad of things I could tell you about this car. I have driven this car. It is selling to the highest bidder. This car runs and drives beautifully. And right now we've got one guy in the lead from Linwood, Washington at $65,000 and it's selling to the high bidder. And I, I think you misspoke there. Only $65,000. Yeah, only on a, 65, on a 64 000. Chevrolet Corvette that has had this much work into it. Yep. John, what this, a This is a six-figure car right here. 100%. I've driven it too, Scott. It's an amazing car. Uh, automatic makes it nice for cruising. This thing will go. Um, Look at the photos in the catalog. The build photos we put in there is only about 10% of the photos we got on it. We kind of cherry picked to get the critical ones, but they did this thing right. You've no got 10 seconds to there. go, folks, and this car is going down the road. It isn't coming back. We've got 10 seconds to go. 65,000 holds the lead, and that car is headed to Linwood, Washington, sold for $65,000. Thanks for your bids. Okay, Scott, up next is lot 126, and I think it's one of the true time capsules. One of the great stories that we're selling today. This one owner car was factory ordered in 1965. It was hand built in England, painted in this special order blue, 
the owner, Marcia, and her best friend from college used a car to travel all over. The car was special to her. It was loved. It was absolutely her pride and joy. As life changes, life gets busier, got stuck in a barn and covered up. Years later, she hired Andy McDonald, a British specialty in Maple Valley, Washington, said, spare no expense. I want it back to what it was when it was hand-built originally in England. I want to drive it again. And he put everything, he put the love into it. He completely disassembled the powertrain chassis, rebuilt the car from the ground up with original parts. The engine, Scott, it currently runs just like the day it came out of the factory in England. It's an absolutely beautiful car. Unfortunately, Miss Marcia, she didn't get to drive it again as she untimely passed away before it got finished. But this is an absolutely beautiful car it's a beautiful patina that cannot be purchased this is original justin i'm gonna come in we've got 35 seconds to go high bidders from weaverville north carolina we've had bids from new york we've had bids from england on this car Sixty-one thousand is the price still room to go on this car folks it is selling to the highest bidder here tonight it's not coming back it's selling to the highest bidder no reserve uh you've got a heck of a car with a heck of a providence got a lot of additional information right now 12 seconds left to go on a beautiful 66 jaguar Sixty-one thousand dollars is the price i'm going to open the door it looks like that Jaguar is headed to Weaverville, North Carolina. Congratulations. Okay, Scott. Next up. Next up. 127, the new kid on the block. The 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon Hellcat. With over 700 horses under the hood, this 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon, it's like new but it's even better than new. Dakota Customs grabbed a hold of this car, this Rubicon, put in a 6.2 liter supercharged 707 horsepower Hellcat engine. But the fun, it doesn't stop there. There's a three and a half inch Terraflex lift with Fox shocks. Seven, there's a lot to say right there. 17 inch wheels and 37 inch tires. This Gladiator maintains all of its modern features including the push button start, front and rear facing cameras, electronic swear, and electronic lockers. It's got 410 gears, tinted windows, paint match top, keyless entry, remote start. It's all there on a supercharged Hellcat Rubicon that's I, I don't even know what else to say you about You know, we had a bank repo we sold here about four, five, six weeks ago, uh, a, a Rubicon Gladiator. I think it sold for nearly $70,000, and it wasn't sitting with those kind of wheels, and it certainly wasn't sitting with 700 horsepower under the hood. Folks, here's an opportunity. 83000 is the price. High bidders in the lead from Pasco. There's opportunity. There, there we go. Now it's going to 85. You got a max bid in play. Get in and help yourself. 87. Now we still got the max bid in play. Somebody's chasing it right there. 88 is the price. Still room to go. 88,000 on a good looking 2020 Jeep 700 horsepower Gladiator. Could you have some? That looked pretty good in Oklahoma, Justin. Uh, that just looked, to me, it just looks like trouble. I think a guy could put himself in places he probably didn't want to be with 707 horse. Yeah, 89,000 in the Jeep. lead from Portland. 19,000, 19 seconds to go. We're going to open the door, guys, on a Jeep Rubicon Hellcat Gladiator. All right, take a look right here. Coming in the ring, lot number 128. We've got a 68 Chevrolet Camaro RSSS. 
got this 68 RSSS underwent a full restoration in 2016 with attention to absolutely every detail to make it factory correct. It's finished in lemons blue with a black vinyl top, black bumblebee stripe, front and rear spoilers. It is powered by a rebuilt matching numbers suffix MX396 cubic inch V8. 350 horsepower with all, and I do mean all of the correct components. It's got factory chrome valve covers, an air cleaner, smog pump, Muncie M21 four-speed manual transmission. I'm talking an absolutely beautiful Just Chevrolet Just a gorgeous RS. Camaro right there. RSSS, got all the bells, all the whistles, a good locally sourced Pacific Northwest car sitting at 54,000. It's going to the highest bidder, ladies and gentlemen. Orem, Utah is in the lead, and... Uh, what a gorgeous Camaro. 1968. It's got it all. You can read the story. You can look at the video. You can look at the pictures. I hope you appreciate that car right now. Had Cars had 100 bids on it. Right now, Craig from Orem, Utah holds the lead, and it is sold for $54,000. Out goes the Camaro. In comes the Mustang. A 1967 Ford Mustang GT Fastback. Here comes a beautiful 67 Ford Fastback, 390 lime gold with black and vinyl bucket seats. Comes equipped with a four-speed manual transmission, put to a 398 V8 engine. Unbelievable car. GT equipment groups, got fog lamps, factory AM radio, sport deck rear seat. It's got the deluxe Marty report in hand as well as resto documents from 1998 to 2000, 2006. It's absolutely exquisite, unbelievable. The engine is painted in lime gold, 390 V8, unbelievable car. Yep, 67 Ford Mustang, high bidders from South Carolina at $52,000. It's going to the highest bidder, ladies and gentlemen. A good-looking green Mustang. Uh, don't know what else to tell you about it. It speaks loudly for itself. There's a good-looking green Mustang right there, and uh, got all the bells, all the whistles, and we've got a new leader from Snohomish, Washington at $53,000 on that good-looking Mustang. You won't get hurt here. I think this is, this is pretty classic. Uh, I use that dictionary analogy again. Again, you go look at Mustang. This is what my mind's eye sees when I look for the picture of the Mustang. Right here is that car. And we got 30 seconds to go and a new leader from Snohomish at $53,000 that hasn't been heard a bit. And this lime gold color, uh, to me, that's a classic Mustang color. It's not a common, co common color now, but what an absolutely beautiful car that somebody at 53000 is there's no way you can go wrong. They're 10 seconds away from being the proud owner of that car. 10 seconds away, Snohomish, Washington, North Carolina, you're out, and the Mustang is sold. We go from the Mustang. Let's bring in the Chevelle. Scott, up next is lot 130. It's a 1970 Chevy Chevelle SS. This Super Sport Chevelle underwent a frame-off restoration. It was completed in 1999 and has only 3,000 miles put on it since then. It's finished in the factory fathom blue with black stripes, black vinyl top, and cowl induction hood. Every attention to detail was made. Nothing was spared for this correct matching number SS. It's powered by a completely rebuilt matching number suffix CT6396 cubic inch, 350 horse engine. It's got factory crack components, unbelievable car, paired with an M21 four speed transmission and factory Muncie shifter. What a beautiful car. SS gauges, SS steering wheel, beautiful Chevelle, 396. What else do you want? Well, I've got a bidder at 50000 from Missouri, and right now he's taking it home. The reserve is off, and uh, this car is going to have a new owner, ladies and gentlemen. There is a beautiful 70 Chevelle SS. New leader, $71,000 from Portland, Oregon, is in the, or 51. 51, it should be at 71. I, I just, that was just a, uh, what do they call it, Freudian slip. John, what do you think? Well, I think 71's good. Beautiful car, classic 70 Chevelle SS. This is the iconic Chevelle that everyone wants. We saw that, the auctions in, at Bear Jackson this year, they were bringing the highest dollar. Hard to beat this fathom blue, the black stripes, black vinyl top. 
It's sitting there right, folks. 51,000 holds the lead from Oregon. I need 52. If anybody wants the lead change, this car is going down the road. It won't be back. It is going to sell to the highest bidder. 51 grand is the high bid right now. Four seconds left to go. Open the door. And the car is sold at $51,000. Let's bring in a 69 Chevrolet K5. Okay, Scott, here is a new deal. A beautiful frame off restored fire engine red 69 K5 Blazer. It's got a solid cab. It's been converted to a solid cab. Truck has a three quarter ton axles underneath it running on an eight inch lift and 38 inch tires. It's powered by a built 350 with chain drive, new Edelbrock carburetor, ceramic covert coated headers, TH350 transmission, and a two speed transfer case. Un unbelievable fire engine red Chevrolet K5 Blazer that has been beautifully, and I mean beautifully restored. Look at how that paint shines, Scott. Yeah, that's a, that's a little red truck right there. Good looking K5 69. It's, it's uh, been modified. You don't have the drop down like the normal Blazer, so now it looks more like a pickup. Got the welded body right there. And uh, chain drive, you can hear that on that three quarter ton axles, eight inch lift. Uh, only thing I would add to that is the high chair to get in it. But uh, we've got 29.5. Pasco's in the lead. Need more money on the truck right there, ladies and gentlemen. Lot 131. 45 seconds left to go. It's retail red. Sits tall. Good looking. Good looking Chevy right there. Help yourself on a K5 Blazer. Yeah, you'd have to have the stepladder to get in this one, Scott, or one heck of a running start. But I mean, an absolute, absolute beautiful little red truck, just like you said. And we're just getting started on the money it would take to build the way this thing is built. Yeah, it's we've got a new leader from Kennewick. for this thing. New leader from Kennewick. Boise's in the lead now. 30,500. Guys, we're a little... <laughs> There's room in this truck. If you take a look at what these 67 to 72 Chevy and GM trucks and Blazers, K5 Blazers have done, um, it's kind of like the stock market has just taken off like a rocket right here to the moon. Here's a great looking K5, 69 in the year. Boise, who's in the lead? Boise's in the lead, 31.5, need 32. Kennewick, you're out. Pasco, you're out as well. There comes Kennewick back in the lead. Hello, Daryl. Good to see you. Get in and help yourself on that good looking truck. 32.5, we've got a battle going, going on. Wyoming. Rock Springs, Wyoming's in the lead, 32.5. Kennewick, Pasco, Boise, you're all out. Rock Springs, Wyoming holds the lead, $20,000. There's Kennewick now at $33,000. Who gets $33,500? A lot of room left in that truck. Good looking truck, good value. Thirty-three grand holds the bid. Kennewick, Washington, 19 seconds to go. Boise, Kennewick, Pasco, you're all out. Yeah, and this little red truck, I mean, John, this thing's jacked up. It's got an eight inch lift under it. It's got 38 inch tires. It, there's nothing here that doesn't say fun. Kennewick's back in the lead. Rock Springs, Wyoming, Pasco, Washington, Boise, Idaho, you're all out. There comes Boise, 34-5. Kennewick, you're out now. Rock Springs, you're out as well, 34-5. And uh, I think we're just kind of getting into the sweet spot of the value on this truck. I got 34-5 bid, 18 seconds left to go. Gonna open the door. Click it if you want it. Daryl, don't lose that truck. 34.5 is the bid. I need $35,000. Who wants it? Here we go. Five seconds to go. Going to open the door. Rock Springs, Pasco, Kennewick. Kennewick's in the lead at $35,000, ladies and gentlemen. $35,000. The, car, the car's going to have a new owner, ladies and gentlemen. I can assure you of that. And $35,000. Daryl, I know a guy that's got a big barn with some lifts in it. And uh, looks like you're going to start filling it right there. Uh, 35,000 is in the lead. Boise, Idaho, Rock Springs, Wyoming. Are you done? Four, three, two, one. And the K5 is sold for 35,000. Congratulations. All looky, looky here. Up next, Scott Lot 132, the title and transit vehicle. This 1957 Ford Custom 300 two-door resto mod. I don't really know if we need to say anything else. I think we could stop and you could just look at the pictures. This Ford resto mod, resto mod is an absolute top-notch, top-shelf, high-end build. It's finished in silver with gray accents. It's, it's been tubbed for larger rear tires, custom grille, 
unbadged, tinted windows. It's powered by a 460 cubic inch V8 with aluminum heads and intake manifold. Unbelievable car, aluminum radiator, automatic transition, four link suspension. I could go on forever. Custom, custom, custom. It rolls on custom race star polished aluminum rims, radial tires. Unbelievable. Scott, I don't know what else to say about this, John. I mean, this well, is. I'll, I'll tell you what, at the car show last night, more than once I heard someone say, the pictures didn't do this car justice. And they're absolutely correct. It is a beautiful build. This is a hard car to really represent with photos. The gray, the gray, I don't think there's a tougher color car to really represent with photographs than grays and silvers. But a lot of depth in this car, a lot of things right. It's been tubbed out there. The engine build is beautiful. I hope you take a look at those, uh, those photos there and see it going down the road there. Richland, Washington's in lead. 22 seconds left to go on a 57 Custom 300 two-door resto mod. Um, I think, there's, I think there's a big gap here between where we're at and what this car could be worth, ladies and gentlemen. You put the same thing there in, a, in the same vintage Chevy two-door post, and, and you're, you're talking $30,000, $40,000 and more dollars. So open the door, get it out. Let's go on to the next one right here on to the 67 Chevrolet SS. Scott, this Chevy SS rest of mods finished in maroon, powered by a board and stroke big block 496 cubic inch V8. Brodix aluminum heads, aluminum intake manifold, four barrel carburetor and chrome valve covers and chrome air cleaner. It's got an MSD ignition, aluminum radiator and electric fans. This thing, unbelievable. It's power steering, power brakes, front discs, upgraded suspension with UMI performance A-arms and, and much, much more. Rolls on chrome aluminum rims with radial tires. The interior, it features black vinyl, upholstered bucket seats and rear bench seats. The black door panels, headliners, carpet, and dash pad are all custom, all beautiful, all extremely, extremely well done. This Chevy SS Maroon Custom with a 496 is an absolute classic and an absolute beautiful piece of art. $42,000 all in bid on a 67 Chevrolet SS Chevelle. And it is a 138 VIN real SS car, too. It is a 138 yes. VIN SS car, as John has pointed out. It's got a lot of toys on it, a lot of bells and whistles, and it sounds beautifully when it drives in the ring. Love that sound. 37 seconds left on the car. Boise, Idaho in the lead. 43 grand is the price. Take a look on a beautiful SS Chevelle. I don't think you can go wrong there. A lot of value appreciation, a lot of opportunity right here. Good looking hood on that, and uh, 15 seconds left to go. 43 is the price, gonna open the door, get it ready to roll out. Beautiful day in Eastern Washington right here. 44,000 is the price. Max bid is in play, Boise still holds the lead. Wow, heard that car driving off, gorgeous. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, five seconds left to go. Up next, lot number 134 in your catalog. Here is a 69 Chevrolet Camaro RS SS pace car convertible. Bring it on in, look at this car come in, folks. Selling to the highest bidder here tonight. We got $49,500 bid. High bidder's gonna own this car. Look at the houndstooth interior on that. Here's a 69, is one of the pace car replicas, built in 69. Uh, there was 3,675 were total produced. This one is the older frame off restoration. It's finished in the correct special paint scheme of white with orange stripes, pace car decals, cowl induction hood, front and rear spoilers, and white power convertible top. Powered by the matching number 350 cubic inch V8 300 horsepower, TH400, Automatic transmission. Scott, this, uh, and what a, what a great color combination, at least for me. The white and orange, the orange interior, the wood grain dash, the wood grain steering wheel. What a beautiful car, John. Yeah, <clears throat> many unique things to this car, being the pace car replica, and that houndstooth uh, orange interior is just amazing. There's an orange boot that goes over the convertible top, too, for your parades and your cruising. 
And 49.5. I think there's some room in this car, folks, if you really want to have a yes. beautiful show car that you can drive around. This look good in Oklahoma. Imagine Oklahoma might like this. Absolutely. I mean, just a, just a classic Camaro SS. And, and only one of three, 3,675 pace car replicas built in 69. Good looking car right there. Lot number 134, 49.5 is the price, folks, and it is going to the highest bidder. Going to have a new owner here tonight on a Chevrolet Camaro pace car up to 50,000. We've got a lead change, and now we're battling back. California was in the lead for a moment, and Kennewick says no. No, there's California back at 52. Kennewick's back at 53. Come on, California, 54. When the auction's Here's on, auction. 54, now 55. You're all waiting in the weeds on this car. I knew it. I knew it. There we go. 55,000 is bid. Kennewick's in the lead. California, you're out. You're like a members only jacket. You're still out. 55,000 is bid. I need 56,000 on the Camaro. Scott, don't forget this car's powered by that matching number 350 cubic inch V8, 300 horse. TH400 automatic. California, are you done? You got five seconds. What Here a he comes. Car. He tries it again at 56. Kennewick, do you want it at 57? 57 on the Camaro. She's gone, going to be gone for good. Oak Park, California is in the lead at $56,000 on the Camaro. I need 57, or it's going to California. Don't want to lose Mr. this Mr. Kennewick, one. what do you say? Ten seconds to go on a good-looking Camaro. Thank you for your bids. Thanks for your help. No more bids in about two seconds. That car is California-bound. It's gone. All right, lot number 135 is a 1932 Ford Custom. Scott, this 32 Ford Custom three-door high boy coupe is a complete build that was done absolutely right. right. This thing is suicide doors. It's got a full hood, finished in a beautiful blue with flames. It's powered by a 350 cubic inch V8, aluminum manifold, four bell carburetors, shorty headers, and dual exhaust. Got an electric fan, lots and lots and lots of chrome, chrome everywhere, automatic transmission, Ford night inch rear axle, four link air suspension, rolls on cork, chrome, torque thrust wheels and radio radial tires. The interior of this 32 Ford Custom featured full custom leather bucket seats and door panels, air conditioning, power windows, full set of gauges, tilt steering wheel and tilt column, custom steering and with a custom steering wheel hanging on it. This coupe is a show stopper, beautiful blue, beautiful job on the flames. What, what a classic. Justin, I am not a fan of coupes, personally. I am not a fan of flames, personally. I'm really not a fan of roadsters, personally, but I love this car. This car is right. This is a car you take to events like last night. And bring a lot of hardware And home. you have to make sure the trunk's got to work on this. I, don't, I imagine everything works. We know everything works. This one, the trunk's got to work. You've got to have somewhere to put the hardware because you're carrying it That's home right, with this 32 Ford Custom. We've got a battle going on sitting at $37,000. I don't think that would touch a third of the investment in this car. That's a six-figure car. What it yeah, costs that's to build. a six-figure car to build, folks. 37000 375 Portland, Oregon is in the lead. I need thirty-eight. Uh, you can't go wrong here, guys. That's the real deal. That you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what his, why I've not liked roadsters or whatever. But a lot of times they're just not done well. This car, when you lift that, lift the side bonnets right there and look in the engine compartment, and you see the open frame down there, and you look. This is the real deal, folks. You can't go wrong. Thirty-nine five on a thirty-two Ford Custom. That is going to bring home a whole lot of hardware. We've got a battle going on between Portland, Oregon and Richland, Washington. 40,000 is in the lead on a beautiful 32 Custom Ford. And I'll have to agree 100%. Normally, Flames, I'm probably out. Classy job here. Absolutely well done. Paired with this absolute beautiful blue color. And out the door at only $40,000. There comes the, look at that, the air ride suspension. Up she comes, out she goes, and we're going to bring in the 70 Chevrolet C10. Scott, this C10 is a factory short bed half ton pickup, only 50 miles. That's 5 0, 50 miles on the build. 
It's finished in an absolutely beautiful orange, features a 1967 front clip, cow hood. It's brand new bed and tinted windows. Hundreds, and I mean hundreds of hours, were put into the body of this machine. The paint, everything, beautifully done, absolutely beautifully done. It's powered by a 454 cubic inch V8. The cam's been raised up. Just, it's just a little bit bigger. Polished aluminum intake, manifold, four barrel carburetor, Edelbach, open element air cleaner, headers, and dual exhaust. Paired with a TH350 automatic transmission, new 373 rear end, 12 bolt, unbelievable car, or unbelievable truck. What a beautiful C10 in a great, great orange color. You know, we got some nice C10s, K20s, these vintage of trucks. Again, big time value propositions on these cars. I love the color of this. This thing just makes me want to go out and get some orange sherbet. I mean, it's a deep, deep orange, well painted, well painted on that car. Uh, good looking truck. 34,500 in the lead from Pasco, Washington, right there on a beautiful K10. Or, uh, excuse me, C10. C10. I think, I think the cow hood on it, and like you mentioned, the paint is deep. You see this thing outside under the sun. It's just beautiful. Well, and the, I mean, the interior, saddle leather, beautiful. Uh, I mean, what a great, great truck. That one there, you got the room to bring home the hardware, too. 15 seconds left to go on the 70 Chevrolet C10. We're going to open the door and start scooting her outside. Pasco's in the lead. Up next, the 137. We got a ooh, gorgeous 67 Chevrolet SS Savelle. All right, lot number 137, folks. Here comes the local Northwest car. Here's a 67 Chevrolet Chevelle SS, a matching numbers Chevelle SS. 106,000 miles has been restored and is finished in the original color of Granada Gold. It features the optional rear antenna, well, wheel well moldings, and all correct trim and badging, powered by the original, hear me out here, original 396 cubic inch V8 325 horsepower. You will see the air cleaner displaying 375 horsepower decal. It is a 325 horsepower car. Got the Power Glide automatic transmission, 12 bolt rear end, power steering, rides on factory 14 6 rally wheels and radial tires, black bucket seats, door panels, headliner, carpet. It's got it all. It's a classic SS Chevelle, locally sourced, come out of a collection where the man's owned it for decades if if not if decades and i've got 35.5 from colorado and this car is going to the highest bidder ladies and gentlemen and i've got 35.5 john yeah i think the fact that this thing is all original with original components the power glide wasn't swapped out for a four speed or for a turbo hydro 400 um, it's like how grandma probably ordered it brand new the original gold it's just beautiful Hard to beat something like this in this original SS. Yeah, and I mean, this classic Granada Gold is, it's a head turner. And normally you wouldn't think so, but you look at this car under the lights, you imagine this on a Saturday evening, just as the sun's going down, people are going to stop as they walk by. Yep, folks, we got 10 seconds to go. Colorado holds the lead at 36.5. I think there's more room in this car, but if nobody else bids, it's going to Colorado at $36,500, and it is sold. Up next, Scott, a 1983 GMC Duramax. And I said 1983 Duramax. This short bed has received a full rebuild LBZ Duramax engine. We'll let it slide in here. It's got a Danville 68 millimeter turbo, super duty front axle. It's been fully built, king coils, steering stabilizers, all new four link built by Heartland Fab. The rear end's a 14 bolt Chevy rear end. It's fully built with lockers, includes a new drive shaft, brand new manual transfer case, and a built Suncoast transmission. It rides around on 37s, beautiful, beautiful, deep blue. I mean, that's a beautiful blue, 83 with a Duramax in it. Duramax. Yeah, that... that uh it's kind of fun to see what these guys that are artists and what they can do and put together on some of these uh, custom builds and build that out. 
The truck drives really nice. I can attest to that. I've got 21.5 in the lead on that truck, 39 seconds left to go. It's got the 14 bolt rear end, the Suncoast transmission. It's got all the right components, ladies and gentlemen. You want a hot rod truck that you can have a lot of fun with, turn a lot of eyes, and got quite a pedigree. Uh, here's, here's a fun truck right here and another, another square body. A 1983 GMC LBZ Duramax, 18 seconds left to go, 21.5. Think we're missing the boat here a little bit on this truck, guys. Don't know what's right. There we go. 22. And we got a max bid in play. 22,000 in the lead. 25 seconds left to go on a GMC Duramax. Yeah, Scott. And as a sidebar, is with 30 seconds left and at 22.5, I want everybody to know and all of our high bidders that at the conclusion of the auction, they'll get an invoice emailed to them. Uh, Payment will be accepted, and if not, you can show up Tuesday because, as everybody knows, this weekend's Memorial Weekend. Well, everybody will be closed, but Tuesday you can show up and pay and pick up your vehicles in as another option too. You bet. You're also going to have the opportunity to pay by e-check at the conclusion of the auction. You can settle your invoice that way. Try to make it as easy as ever. We are giving our staff uh, the next two days off. We're not going to be here. You can't come pick up your car. You can't come up and pay. We're going to be closed for the next two days so our staff can rest up. They've put a lot of hard work and time and effort into bringing this auction about. So we will see you Tuesday. We've got a little battle going on right here between Yakima and Oregon, 23,750 in the lead. On the 83 LBZ Duramax, Yakima's in the lead, 23,750. I've got 18 seconds left to go, 24,000 now in the lead. 24250 you've only got about three or four more $250 bids. Take them while you can get them. On a classic square body Chevy, 24,000's in the lead, 15 seconds left to go. And 24250, someone give it 245. There, we get 24.5. What do you give 24.750? Don't hardly ever get to do this anymore. I know. <laughs> I kind of forgot how. I have to go back to auction school. 20 seconds left to go. I get 24.5 on the GMC Duramax. 24.5 is in the lead. Jay Gears, 24.750. Who wants to be $25,000 on the blue Jimmy? Up next and in the hole, we've got a 34 Chevrolet Master Coupe Street Rod, a 56 Ford Thunderbird, a 55 Ford Fairline, and a 70 Corvette Stingray. A lot of great cars still to come. Stay along with us. Appreciate you being with us, ladies and gentlemen. We're having a good time. Ten seconds to go. Going to open the door. Get the Jimmy headed outside, if you would, please, Kyle. Up next, Scott, lot 139 is a 1934. Still going on the uh, GMC We still up? Oh, my goodness. Still I going. thought we were done and out. It's like the they, Energizer Jimmy. They, they just got the wheels and tires and axles paid for. Yeah, now. we've got now the wheels and tires that. and axles paid for. Now we should probably try to sell the uh, engine, and then we'll ju do the truck body last. But uh, we got 26 bid. JJ, you're out. I've never seen, don't come in second. Nobody remembers who comes in second. 26-5 in the lead, new leader. 26-5 from Yakima, 27 from Oregon. 27, who wants to be 27-5? You know what they say second place is? First loser. So, something like that. 27,000 is in the lead. On the GMC Duramax. Let's go 27.5 or forever hold your peace. And we'll move on to a Chevy Master Coupe Street Rod. And 27.5 is bid. Who wants to be 28? 28, Oregon, are you done? 27.5 is bid. Who wants to be $28,000 on the GMC Duramax? 27.5 is bid. 28, I got 10 seconds left to go. Here we go, 10 second countdown, 27.5 on a Jimmy Duramax. Yakima holds the lead. Thank you, Yakima. Let's go to lot number 139, ladies and gentlemen. Here comes a 1934 Chevrolet Master Coupe Street Rod. Here's a locally sourced collection car right here. 
Justin, tell them about this gorgeous, gorgeous Master Coupe. Scott, this 34 Master Coupe has been chopped, it's, and it's only been driven 20,000 miles since the build. It's got shaved door. I'm going to stop you right there. Yep. You know, a lot of times you'll see these customs come in, and we've had some, you know, come in, oh, only been driven 1,000 miles, 1,200. I think I'd rather buy one that's been driven 20,000. You know, it ran, it drove, it, was, it did exactly what they wanted it to do. That's a car that's been shown, that's been used, and is selling all the way, and right now we got $34,000 bid. And there's fun to be had with this car. It's not just sitting at the house where somebody's got to see you. You can take it out and let everybody see what you've got a hold of here. Only 20,000 miles since the build. Shaved door handles, suicide doors, 5.7 liter tune ported injected V8 with only 8,000 miles since that motor was put in it in 2014. It's got a rebuilt GM TH700 R4 automatic transmission and BM mega shifter. Recently, Scott, there was over $3,400 put into this vehicle in June of 2020. And what, that, what was done there is every little knick-knack thing that you could think of. A loose here, a turn there, anything to make it absolutely pristine. They put over $3,400 in it right at a year ago to make it completely, absolutely fault-free. I was here when this car was brought in. The owner drove it right in, very proud of it, had it for a long time, a great car guy. This is an all-steel 34 Chevrolet Master Coupe Street Rod. And, folks, it's selling all the way. I've got 34000 from Kansas, and that car is sold. Congratulations, Kansas. Let's go to the 56 Ford Thunderbird. Scott, a 56 classic T-Bird restored with 121,000 miles on the odometer. 121,000 miles. But that's 121,000 miles since 1956. So do the math, not very many miles a year. Uh, it's finished in a beautiful peacock blue with white porthole hardtop. It's got fender skirts and continental spare tire kit on the back. It's powered by a 312 cubic inch V8 with factory aluminum fin Thunderbird valve covers paired with a Fordomatic three speed automatic transmission. Power steering, upgraded brakes, beautiful, beautiful peacock blue with a white porthole top. It's a beautiful Thunderbird with a 312 V8 in it. There's a lot right on that Thunderbird right there. Right year, right color, right. Got the Continental kit on it right there, and uh, 121,000 miles, auxiliary gauges, got the et retro AM, FM, cassette stereo, and we got all, you know, a lot of the, the file containing the receipts on the work done, so you've got the story. That's nice to go with it right there. A good locally sourced, sourced car, 29,000 in the lead. I got 40 seconds left to go on a beautiful T-Bird, and we've got about three or four of these, but I, I kind of like this one right here. Uh, it's the right color. It sits right. And uh, help yourself right there on a 56 Ford Thunderbird. We've got 20 seconds to go. Richland, Washington's in the lead. Who wants to be? I got 29. Somebody want to be $30,000 on the 56 Ford Thunderbird. We're going to take her outside. There's a new leader from Mount Vernon, Washington. 29.5 is in the lead now. Hello, Chris. Welcome to the auction. 30,000 back in the lead on Richland. Who wants to be 31? How about 35 from Chris? Thank you. Now 31. At 31. Now 5. 31. 5. to get 31. 5. Let's go. Now 2. At thir it's 32. Now 5. Oh, you I got 31. <laughs> Sorry, five. You I messed me all up. up. In it. 31. 5 from Mount Vernon is in the lead, ladies and gentlemen. 31. 5. Richland, you're out. You got 15 seconds left to go. On a good-looking Thunderbird, going to open the door and send this Thunderbird to Mount Vernon. Chris, you've been a good bidder with us ever since we got the catalog open. Congratulations, you got a nice car right there. Up next, Scott, lot 141, a 1955 Ford Fairlane Victoria. This Victoria was purchased locally by an owner in 2010 and has been fully, and I mean fully restored, and finished in two-tone seafoam green and white. Fully dressed up with a Continental kick, full chrome trim package. It's powered by the factory 312 V8, 
Thunderbird aluminum valve covers, Fordomatic automatic transmission, power steering, power brakes, rides on factory wheels and hubcaps, wide white radial tires. The interior features all new upholstery on, on the seats, door panels, headliners, and new carpet. It's got a factory installed vintage air with custom lower dash panel, auxiliary gauges, and original AM radio. This is a classic Ford, a classic Fairlane, a classic Victoria, and an absolutely classic seafoam green and white color. Yeah, we have a thick binder of receipts on this car too. This is the same consigner as that previous Thunderbird. This guy was, is meticulous about all his cars and it shows in this one here too. Classic Ford. With a Continental kit. Look at the, look at the, look at the paint on that dash. I mean, just, that, that thing just exudes classic collector car. 27.5 is the price on this car. Room to go there. You can't get hurt. You're going to love it. Boise, Idaho's in the lead. I got 20 seconds left to go. I think we're missing the boat here a little bit on this beautiful, beautiful Ford Fairlane Victoria. You don't see a lot of them on the road, and that car is righteous, just beautifully. The chrome, the bright work, all of it right there. 28,000 new leader from Mount Vernon. Welcome back. Richland, Washington goes back in the lead. At 28, now 29. Who give 30? Give me 30. Just knock them out. 29, give 29.5. I get 29,000 bid. 29.5. 30,000 even money. Yeah, you've got 20, your, your five, Scott, but I mean, what's. It's wow. a classic color, too. Yeah. This, Chris, you won't be sorry. 29.5. 30,000 on a good looking road, Ford Verlaine Victoria. You might as well make a load now. 13 seconds left to go on the Victoria. Going to open the door and send it down the road to Richland. Five, four, here we go. Chris, are you done? Three seconds left to go. Chris comes back at 30,000. Richland, you are out. I got 30,000 on a good looking Victoria. Chris, you got good taste, that's all I got to say. 15 seconds left to go. Richland, Boise, you're both out. I got $30,000. The car is going to Mount Vernon if nobody else bids in five, four, three, two, one. And it is sold. Woo, look at here. Up next, we're going to change manufacturers, Scott. A 1970 Corvette Roadster Stingray. This Corvette convertible is finished in a factory color. You got to read fast. Lots of stuff on this car. Quartz silver with chrome bumpers, trim, luggage rack, along with a new black convertible top. It's powered by a Blueprint 396 cubic inch stroker crate small block V8, dynoed at 518 horsepower with many upgraded components. It's got high rise intake manifold, FL Tech fuel injection, polished aluminum valve crovers. Chrome alternator, brake booster, master cylinder, air cleaner, ignition shielding, aluminum radiator, powers transmitted to the rear wheels through a Tremec five-speed transmission and a 3.7 positive rear end. Included with the car is the original matching numbers 350 cubic inch 300 horsepower engine along with a four-speed transmission. There has only been 2,000 miles put on the new engine and transmission since the installation, Scott. What an absolutely beautiful 1970 Corvette finished in Cortez Silver. Yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful Corvette. John's more the Corvette expert. I'm going to let him share his thoughts. Yeah, talking to the uh, consigner of this car, he put over $20,000 into upgrading that engine transmission. Um, I drove the car. I'm a Corvette guy. This thing drives beautiful. It's a great car, and that's great value. Way under the money right now. Yeah, there's some room here, and guys, it's selling to the high bidder, and, and, and I like seeing this, though. The high bidder happens to be a consigner that we've already sold the car for earlier in the auction, so he's just trading cars. He's, he, you know, he took one, bought one, sell one, buy one. You know, my wife likes me to sell two and buy one, but uh, he's going to do one for I've me. seen you do that. Yeah. Recently. Right. Yeah. 30000 is the price, folks. This is going to have a new owner. Going to go right up to El Topia, Washington. Five seconds left to go in the catalog, in the auction, for the beautiful 70 Corvette Stingray. Take it outside. Congratulations. That vet's going to El Topia. And up next, Scott, we're going to go back to Ford, a 1964 Thunderbird. This restored T-Bird convertible is finished in Ragoon Red with a white power operated convertible top that folds into the trunk. 
This car also has the optional matching fiberglass tonneau cover that makes the car a sporty two-seat roadster. It's powered by a 390 cubic inch V8 with 315 horsepower. It's got a four-barrel carburetor, automatic transmission, power steering, and power brakes. This thing rolls on factory chrome wire wheels, white wall radial tires. The interior features red leather seating, red door panels, dash, and steering wheel. It's got a full complement of gauges, remote mirrors, power windows, retro AM, FM, cassette stereo. It's a classic bright red T-Bird finish in Ragoon Red. 64 Ford Thunderbird convertible. And make sure you look in the catalog, the pictures of that beautiful tonneau cover. With this top down, it looks like a two-door spaceship sports car. It, it is awesome. Yeah, those seat backs wheels. behind those, uh, the seats, the way they did that and got that kind of half-barrel look right there. It does. It looks like a spaceship going down the road. Richland, Washington in the lead, 24-750. And, uh, folks, we're just about to the halfway mark already, if you can believe it or not. We're about to the halfway mark, 25,000 new leader from Burlington, Washington on the Thunderbird. 24, 5, 25, 26, we got a three-way horse race. 26,000 a bit, who wants to be 27? 26, 5 from Richland, 27,000 in the lead from Mount Vernon, 27, 5 from Richland, now 28. I get 27, 5, who wants to be 28, now 5, 28,500 is all. Richland and Pasco, you're both out. Boise, you're out as well. Help yourself. Get in low. Right there, the car was kind of sitting down in the weeds a little bit. They're all kind of sitting there waiting. Like, wondering, like, I'm going to sneak up on this car. 28.5 is bid. 15 seconds left to go on a really nice-looking 64 Ford Thunderbird. Yeah, an absolutely beautiful red Thunderbird, too, Scott. In five seconds. Three Two, one, open the door, get it outside. Let's go to the Mustang. All right. A little bit newer vintage here. 2012 Ford Mustang Boss 302. This Boss 302 has just 12,000 original, and I mean original, miles on it. In 2012, only 416 Boss 302s were made and in which the registry, it shows only 153 were finished in race red with white stripes. This one is powered by a 302 cubic inch V8 with upgraded Parnelli Jones carbon fiber intake, 440 horsepower, 380 foot pound of torque engine paired to a six speed manual transmission. It's got 373 limited slip rear end, adjustable shocks and struts, GT500 Brembo 14-inch vented front rotors, and four piston calipers. Unbelievable Mustang. Only 12,000 miles on a 2012. Beautiful car, and only 153 of them were finished in this color and All the maintenance, repairs, and upgrade receipts and records included along with the original de delivery checklist when new. Boss is ready for the street or the track, ladies and gentlemen, and it sells to the highest bidder in Spokane Valley's in the lead. Hello there, folks. Good repeat bidders in the lead at $32,000 from Spokane Valley on a 2012 Ford Mustang 302. 32000 is the bid, folks. It sells to the highest bidder going out the door right now, heading to Spokane Valley. That's the right car. Nice car. Set up right. Great Got color. the spoiler on it. Great color. White and, red, white and red. Got the black spoiler on it. 32000 Five seconds to go. She's going down the road. The door's open, and the car's going outside. Congratulations. The Mustang's heading to Spokane Valley. Up next, Scott, we're going to go back to 1959, and here comes a Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Lot 145, this Coupe de Ville is an iconic Finn 59 Cadillac that has only 72,000 miles on the odometer. It's finished in a beautiful, beautiful deep red with custom Continental spare tire kit on the rear end. During the rest of the nation, all bright work was re-chromed and polished. It's powered by a freshly rebuilt 390 cubic V8. Unbelievable car. It's got power steering, power brakes, automatic transmission, Beautiful 398 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. 
This car has had bids from all over the country. Uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas, runner-up right now, and high bidder at 41.5. And the car, if nobody else bids, is heading to Ringle, Wisconsin, on a gorgeous 59 Cadillac Coupe de Ville with the Continental Kit. Help yourself, 55 seconds, Rick. From Hot Springs, I talked to you. I know you want this car. I hope you're listening. He is. He's back in the lead. There's Rick from Hot Springs, Arkansas at $42,000. He wants this car bad. Forty-two five. but so does Brandon from Ringo, Wisconsin. Forty-two five is in the lead. I need $43,000 on the Cadillac. Yeah, the red and cream upholstery in this car is beautiful, Scott. The deep red. And the thing about uh, that I love about these cars, if we sold many more like this, you're going to have to make the building bigger because it barely fits in here. It barely yeah, fits. We had to make I mean, it first. weekly you used to bring four-door big one-ton pickups in here, and they slide right in, and you don't worry about it. This is a 59 Coupe de Ville. It, we're barely fitting in on both ends. With the Continental kit. With the Continental kit. I have not seen one of those I before. Neither. That is well done. Yeah, it's well done, and uh, we got a couple guys that really appreciate this car right now. Hot Springs, Arkansas is in a lead at forty-four thousand dollars, and uh, there's forty-four five. They're going to battle it out right here because they've they've really landed on a cherry here. They know it. This is what they're looking for: fifty-nine Cadillac Coupe de Ville. You know, you just don't call up the dealer and order one. Certainly not in this kind of condition, this kind of color, this kind of fit and finish. 45.5 is in the lead from Ringo, Wisconsin. Hot Springs, Arkansas. Come on, Hogs, you're out. 45.5, Rick, you're out. 45.5, I gotta have $46,000 or you're gonna see this car driving around Wisconsin. There's Hot Springs, Arkansas at 46. 46,000 back in the lead. Lot number 145 on a beautiful Cadillac 69 Coupe DeVille. 46.5. This is kind of how it is every time I set my eyes on a car at an auction. There's always somebody else wants it just as bad as I do. 46.5, but it makes you appreciate it. You know other people love it just as much as you do. 46.5 on a 59 Cadillac Coupe DeVille. Hot Springs, Arkansas, you're out. Ringo, Wisconsin's in the lead. Ten seconds left to go. And with only five seconds, Scott, everybody needs to get ready for what's coming up next. Your favorite car of the auction. I'm going happy. to Wisconsin. Thank hey. you, and thank you, Rick and Hot Springs, for your bids. Okay. One of the absolute. Here's Justin's absolutely favorite yeah. car in the auction. Here's Scott's. In. I mean, one of the stars of the show. A 1984 Pontiac Fiero Lamborghini Countach clone. And fitting for today's day and age, this 1984 Pontiac Fiero it identifies as a Lamborghini Countach, 25th anniversary model. This clone was built in 1984 with a Pontiac Fiero donor and a V6 automatic. The 2.8 liter V8 was modified to 186 horsepower. This thing's got, and I did say this thing, has got air, heat, AM, FM, surround sound, unbelievable. Tilt wheel, electric solenoids for the doors, trunk, hood, gas vent door. It's built as a show, it was built as a show car by DNR Replicas of Pennsylvania in, 90, in 1994. You'll find a lot of secrets and surprises owning this one-of-a-kind car with a 2.8 liter V6 paired with an automatic transmission, Scott. And for $10,000, this car is going to go to Colorado Springs. And where are you ever going to find another one? Right here, ladies and gentlemen, only in Pasco, Washington, Trucks and Auto Northwest Collector Car Auction. One of a kind, 10250 new leader from Spokane, Washington. Tell you what, it's a head turner. But you got to be about four foot seven, just like Diamond, to drive it. Isn't that right, Diamond? <laughs> Diamond, you actually fit in that car. Yeah, you look good in there. 10-5, Colorado Springs is not to be outdone. He's back in the lead at 10-5. On the Fiero Lamborghini Countach, Cologne, 10-5. Now, when you look at the quality of the build of this Lamborghini, uh, the gold wheels, the gold accents, it just pops. And... 
the owner is a friend of mine. He said it won the best of show here at the local Richland Cool Desert Nights a few years back. No, all kidding aside, it's a Pontiac Fiero, but what a cool kit. Well done. Somebody had a lot of fun building that car. You're going to have a lot of fun. It's one of those, it's like guys kind of look, you drive up and they kind of like, say what? <laughs> You're going to get the attention. We got 11,000. Colorado Springs is in the lead. You can't overpay for that car. Not at these prices right here. Uh, that car could just as easily sell for 20000 and twenty-five. Who knows what it's worth? We're going to find out. You guys just keep bidding. You got eleven two fifty from Spokane, Colorado Springs. You're out. Got to have eleven five. And still a unique car. 22 seconds left. We're at 11.5. I can promise you, if you buy this one, you're going to have a one of a kind. You're not going to see one of these every day. And I really think, I mean, you talk about something that you can hand down to your children, and they're going to say, what was he thinking? But it's so unique that there's, I just, what a, what a great, unique piece of art. 11, 750. We got a couple of boys still battling it out. Spokane, Colorado Springs. Who's going to win it? Who's going to take it home? Is it going to get a Colorado plate or a Washington plate on it? That's the only question I have. Seven seconds left to go. 12,000 is bit. Colorado Springs is back in the lead. Who knows where it's going to end? All right, three seconds left. I believe for $12,000, we are going to Colorado Springs. Up next, we're going to go back to the Fords. Lot 147, a 1965 Ford Mustang. This car has been completely rebuilt. It's finished in a dark gray metallic with a black vinyl top. It's got a raised hood with black accent and chrome bumpers. It's got a GT gas cap powered by a Ford 331 stroker small block that was built by Motor Works in Spokane, Washington, and it was dynoed at 450 horsepower. It's got trick flow, twisted wedge, race heads, roller cam, and roller rockers. Edelbrock E Street, electronic fuel injection, MSD, headers with Flowmaster two and a half inch exhaust and electronic cutouts. It's got aluminum radiator, hot rod hydraulics, built unbelievable a Ford nine inch rear end with 350 gears and a Detroit lockers Ron Morrison tubular AOM adjustable coil over front suspension power steering power disc brakes what a great car it drives on Foose five sport five spoke chrome wheels and 70 17 inch tires John what a great car beautiful color combination what a classic yep here's another one that the pictures is hard to do it justice thing is beautiful that deep gray the black vinyl top but the big thing is what's under the hood 450 horsepower this thing is built to go it was built right uh, driven the car it's a great car yeah beautiful beautiful car and only at 27.5 with 20 some seconds left it's going to go live in seattle washington if nothing changes right now and it's funny john like you were talking in the sunlight, under these lights in here, this gray yeah. is absolutely beautiful. But like you said, it is an extremely hard color to photograph and for people to appreciate. All right, Let's and that uh, 27.5, it's out the door. Oh, sorry. Up next is lot 148, a 1964 Ford Galaxy 500. This Galaxy 500 has been restored and upgraded and is finished in black. It's powered by a 5.8 liter V8 with a 1988 Mustang GT. It's paired with an automatic overdrive transmission and the original rear axle. Rear axle. This brakes and it rolls on Hildebrand style wheels and radial tires. The interior features red vinyl upholstery with gray inserts. 
matching door panels and red carpet. It's a classic Ford Galaxy in black. What an absolute great, great Galaxy. Yeah, this is a great build too. This is another one. I got a mic. Um, with that red and gray interior, it just pops. A great running car, built correctly. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, we're only looking at 18.5 going to Richland. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of room left on this 1964 Ford Galaxy 500, without question. 40, 42 seconds, 40 seconds to go. A lot of room left on this one. You couldn't even build it for for twice that. No, John, and it's a head turner. And like you said, the interior, that red and gray paired with the black on the outside. What a, what a beautiful, beautiful machine. And we're looking at 21 seconds and only at 18.5. And somebody in, uh, well, I believe we've just got another bid, 18.750 is still staying here in Washington. Eighteen seconds left to go. You don't want to miss this one. Hit the bid button. Nineteen sixty Ford Ford Galaxy five hundred. Completely restored, upgraded, finished in black. One seconds left, and it's going to Washington. They're staying here in Washington. Throw Up next is lot one forty nine. Let's get this car out of here. This beautiful black galaxy out. This Pontiac is a custom-built stretch limo that was built in 2008, used by a recently retired limo, local limo business owner in his fleet. This thing has a modern drivetrain and conveniences, and it's finished in black with red accents. It features a fixed moonroof to get a little more light in the back for, for the people back there enjoying the ride. It has a 350 cubic inch V8 four-barrel carburetor, paired with an automatic transmission. Has an upgraded independent front suspension rack and pinion steering power brakes and front discs. It rolls on red steel wheels, chrome trim rings and hubcaps and radial tires. You talk about something that would be a perfect fit here in the Columbia Basin. It has passed the Washington State limo inspection. What a great, uh, if you had a winery, take wine tours, oh, yeah. have this setting outside as people go, as people show up. What a beautiful, beautiful 38 Pontiac Tour Custom Limousine. With 32 seconds left for 30,500, what a great, great, and it's, hey, it's, look, it's staying in Pasco. Somebody else has that great idea. Got 20 seconds left and only 30,500 on this 38 Pontiac Limousine. Seven, three, two, and one. We'll get the Pontiac out of here. And up next, we'll have lot 150. Be ready for a Chevrolet Master Deluxe four doors. Whoop, hold on, guys. Whoop! Out in the head. Somebody. I don't know if you read. Technical problem here. Yeah. We'll get her out. There you go. <laughs> All right, up next, lot 150, a 1940 Chevrolet Master Deluxe four door sedan. This Chevy Street Rod four door Master Deluxe is on an all steel body finished in Rio red with pinstripe accents. It features a windshield visor, shaved door handles with electronic remote, front door poppers, rear suicide doors, power lift front hood, and fender. fenders and tinted windows. French rear license plate and antenna. It's powered by a 350 cubic inch Vortec V8 with headers and dual exhaust. 
automatic overdrive transmission, a 3.7 Ford 9-inch rear axle, chrome valve covers, an alternator, brake booster. What a beautiful car under the hood. It's got power steering, powered brakes, front disc brakes, Mustang two front suspension. It rolls on Boyd Cottingham polished aluminum rims and radial tires. The interior of this car features cream leather seats, cream door panels, custom console carpeting throughout, including inside the trunk. What an absolute beautiful car at 27.5 in 20 seconds. It is going to stay here in Washington right now. Well, you don't want to miss this one. Beautiful car. Very well done. Great driver. Oh, we got Burbank. 28,000. 28,000. This is a 30 plus thousand dollar car, folks, without question. Beautiful color, deep red, great interior, absolutely beautiful ride. Vintage air conditioning, leather interior, um, all kinds of leg room in the back that a tall guy like me could fit in it. Um, take your grandkids, take it to the show. You don't want to miss this one. And at 24.5, it's gone. Up next, John, we've got a lot 151s and 1959 Ford Thunderbird. This restored T-Bird convertible is finished in colonial white with white power operated convertible top that folds into the trunk. This bird also has an optional matching fiberglass tonneau cover that makes the car a sporty two-seater roadster. It's powered by a 352 cubic inch Thunderbird Special V8 with 300 horses. It has a four barrel carburetor, automatic transmission, power steering, and power brakes. It rolls on Krager wheels and radial tires. The interior is new and features aqua and white upholstery. Full set of gauges, retro looking AF FM cassette stereo. Got a large file of receipts on the work that's been done. What an absolutely beautiful white 59 Ford Thunderbird. T-Bird collectors, this seller knew, knew his T-Birds and uh, the T-Bird buyers are, are paying attention. Here's the real deal, guys, on a beautiful, beautiful 59 Ford T-Bird. It's got all the bells, all the whistles, a lot of stuff's right on it, and you can't go wrong right here. And 18,000, 18,000 is the high bid on a good looking T-Bird. 1959 model comes from the same consigner that had all those T-Birds in the auction. He's got had a real good eye for these. Really knows the uh, knows the cars well. Knows when they're right. Knows what they need. Knows when they're wrong. Looks like we got a lot of people sitting in the weeds on this. Scottsdale, Arizona was was in the lead at 19.5. Yeah, you're, this car kind of. We'll see this happen from time to time. You'll see a car sitting way down there, and there's about 18 people thinking, you know, I'm going to buy that car for the next bid. This car's well under the money at 21000 We should be at 31000 and still have a battle going on. So get in and help yourself. 22000 is the money. Twenty two five, Battling back and forth. Boise, Idaho, Scottsdale, Arizona, Pasco, Washington. Still a lot of room left in this car on a 59 Thunderbird. You got the 352 Thunderbird Special V8, 300 horse, four barrel carb. And uh, got the file containing the receipts of the work done on the car. Again, owned by a T-Bird collector. Really knows the uh, story and knows the drill on the T-Birds. 24, 250, 19 seconds left to go. Still some room in this car, folks. Help yourself. Chris, are you sleeping up in Mount Vernon? You ought to be in on this car. 10 seconds left to go. 10 seconds left to go. Going to open the door, get it outside. 24, 250. There's 24, 5. He's listening in Mount Vernon, Washington. Finally. And a beautiful interior done in a, in a beautiful, beautiful color. What a, what a, what a great T-Bird. This car is going to be the woulda, shoulda, coulda car of the auction. Whoever ends up not being the high bidder on it is going to say, I shoulda, I woulda, I coulda. Five seconds left to go. Four, three. Start over. 30 seconds left to go. We are at 25,000. 25,5. Need 26. We ought to be at 36. You know the drill. You know the money. The money's right. Chris, you know it better than I. 25-5, Richland, Washington in the lead. 25-5, 15 seconds left to go. 
Anything less than a three starting on the price on this car is just a legal steal. At 25.5, we're closer to half price than we are what the car's worth, Scott. Yep. Good eye, good buy. Up next, 74 Plymouth Cuda, the real deal Holyfield. Here she comes, 1974 Plymouth Cuda. Classic American muscle. This local-owned Cuda has only 75,000 original miles on it. It's never been wrecked, never been repainted, and never been modified. It's finished in the original burnished red with optional white body side stripes. It's powered by the original 318 cubic inch V8, paired with a torque flight automatic transmission. Power steering, power brakes, front disc brakes. In February of 21, just a couple months ago, the owner took it in and completely had this CUDA completely maintained. Replaced all the fluids, did everything to it. It's got a rebuilt carburetor, new battery, coolant. Everything was changed. Justin, i got to stop you there. I want to make sure these guys know this. Folks, you're getting the full documentation, including the original window sticker, the dealer's invoice, the dealer's brochure, registration, receipts, and records. This is a true survivor car. Here's a 74 Plymouth Cuda. John, you know this car better than any of us. Yeah. style very desirable 27 5 in kennewick washington's in the lead folks you still got opportunity here it's going to the highest bidder 27 5 is the price i got 14 seconds left to go on a gorgeous 74 plymouth cuda kennewick's still in the lead with his max bid 29 new new leader from sutherland oregon kennewick comes back at 29 5 i gotta have 30,000 from oregon guys you don't find them like this you don't find them like this. You don't find them in this condition. You certainly don't find them with this history. 29.5 is in the lead from Kennewick, Washington. Ten seconds left to go. We're going to open the door and get it outside here very shortly. Oregon, do you want to try it again at $30,000? This car is going to be gone, gone for good. You'll see it at the next. Yes, he does. Oh, new Kennewick leader at 30500 Max bid is in play. Oregon, what do you say? You got 20 seconds left to go. Where will you find another one with this history? We've talked about time capsules all day, right here. There's one. A perfect example. Yeah, of this time one capsule, defines Scott. it. This one defines it. Five seconds left to go, Oregon. If you're done, it's going to stay right here in Kennewick, Washington. Two seconds left to go, and the CUDA is sold. Thank you, and thank you all for your bids. Up next, a '71 Chevrolet C10 Cheyenne. Lot 153 is going to bring us in this short bed two-wheel drive pickup. Cheyenne package. It's finished in orange and ivory, and it has a black tonneau cover. It's powered by just a little bit of a mildly built 350 cubic inch V8, paired with a TH400 automatic transmission. It rolls in on Corvette rally wheels and radial tires. The interior is the Cheyenne package. It's got an ivory upholstered bench seat and door panels. It's got air conditioning, which is fixing to be important. This classic C10 short bed powered by the 350 V8. What a great truck. Yeah, here's a beautiful Chevy Cheyenne, orange and white. And uh, high bidder is from Texas right now at 26.5. I'll tell you, these 67 to 72 C10s, great investment vehicles. Anything you want to do to restore it, all the parts are available, all the pieces, do a lot of fun stuff with it. Here's a car that's about 80% of the way. Put a little bit more time and work in it, and you'll have a showstopper. Beautiful truck. 26.5 is the price. Selling to the high bidder. And we got a new leader now from Sela, Washington at $27,000. Texas, you're out. You've been outbid at $27,000. you got to be 27.5 on the Chevy Cheyenne. I love myself a Chevy Cheyenne. How about you? What a beautiful truck. Beautiful orange color, the white top, the black tonneau cover, the Corvette wheels. Um, you talk about some fun, and it's a driver. You can go take it out. You can do something with it. 
go show it on a Saturday evening and haul groceries the rest of the week. Absolutely. It's got the air conditioning mounted as well, tilt steering. Got the retro stereo. That truck's heading to Sela. Congratulations. Thank you very much for your bids. Let's go to lot 154 on a 56 Cadillac Series 62. Up next, Scott, is 154. This Series 62 two-door hardtop has what the owner believes to be only 50,611 miles. It's had one repaint done in Mandan red and Alpine white on the top. It's got fender skirts, gold emblems, and all bright work. All the trim has been re-chromed and polished. It's powered by the original 365 cubic inch V8 with four barrel carburetor rated at 285 horse. Paired with a hydromatic automatic transmission. This car's got dual exhaust existing or that exits through the rear bumper, power steering, and power brakes. It rolls in on factory steel wheels, full wheel covers, and wide white wall tires. Justin, this car comes from us, that same collection that had that beautiful uh, Continental kit, Coupe de Ville, we sold this a little bit ago. Here's another great Cadillac right here. High bidders in the lead from Litchfield Park, Arizona. And uh, now Bremerton, Washington's in the lead. Again, another pretty rare car, rare model, but comes from a guy that knew Cadillacs, Knew when they were right, and uh, it come from it been in his collection a long time, and uh, we were happy to be able to have him here at Trucks and Auto at our Northwest Collector Car Auction. Sixteen two fifty is in the lead from Arizona. And the one thing to note: the interior on this car is all original. Yeah, every bit of it is Look original. It. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Great car right there. Mount Vernon, Washington comes in the lead at sixteen five on the fifty six Caddy. That's a two-door caddy. You know, that was a sportster in its day. 1956, it's older than you or I. Yeah. Okay, just checking. I mean, a two-door Cadillac in 1956. You know, that was, you were something. You come home in that car. 16750, we got five seconds left to go. Mount Vernon, are you done? Five seconds left to go. This Cadillac's going to Arizona. Gone for good. There she goes. Half gate from a Cadillac to a Mustang. Here comes the wide body. Up next, Scott, is a 1967 Chevrolet Impala SS Fastback. This two door Fastback is finished in bright yellow with color matching trim and bumpers. Inspired by the original 327 cubic inch V8, it's been bored. Three over and his aluminum heads, roller rockers, MSD ignition, aluminum manifold, and a fully integrated NOS system, which helps deliver a dyno to 425 horse. Unbelievable car, power steering, power brakes, front suspension, upgraded traction bars. It rides on 15 inch rally wheels with radial tires, the interior is all new and features white bucket seats and door panels. What a great, great classic Impala SS in a Beautiful, beautiful yellow color. Did you say NOS? Yeah, I think I said something about that means go faster, right? Wow. Like lots faster. Right. Here's another one of those cars you kind of left setting in the weeds there, and everybody wants to sneak up on it right here. 67 Chevrolet SS Impala. Bright yellow. They'll see you coming. They will see you coming. Gorgeous white interior. Sitting at only 14.5. Anything under 20 grand on this car, 25 grand is just a great, great buy. Great, great buy on this car. Good looking yellow Impala SS. I've got 14.5, 7.50 from Caldwell, Idaho is in the lead. Who wants to be $15,000 on that car? 15 from Richland, Washington. Who wants to be 15.5? 15 15.5 15 on a yellow Impala. Yeah, that's a classic 67 Fastback. That white interior, the bucket seats, the console. It, there's a lot of money left in this thing for what it's worth. Yep. Did we mention it has NOS? NOS. NOS. All right. Out she goes at $15,000. Now we bring the wide body. I'm sorry I misspoke. I was a one car off. Here comes the wide body Mustang. Guys, there's a 65 Mustang wide body. It's a very unique Mustang. Been fabricated as a white body and was in a recent professional. I want you to listen to this car talk. Listen to this car talk. I want to let's let's got the Calvary blue paint complemented with Le Mans GT racing stripes. But well, I want to get down to the important stuff. 
It's got a, uh, powered by a built 351 Windsor V8 with the AFR aluminum heads, high-rise intake manifold, demon carburetor, MSD ignition, distributor, shorty headers, two and a half inch exhaust, Flowmaster. It's built right. <coughs> it definitely is built. It's got a lot of good stuff. Folks, it has a little, it's a steering issue. We can't locate it. You're going to have to do something. You, you, won't, you won't want to take the car high speed. We've disclosed that in the catalog. Not that we test drive every car, but it was just awkward enough. We didn't want somebody thinking that they could go out there and go high speed on this thing. But there's a, the components on this, a lot right with that. 351 Windsor. They've got the wide body kit on it. Sitting at $28,000. Ben Dorigan is in the lead. Lots of room left in that wide body Mustang. 28, 29. We got a high bid in play. 29.5 from Ben Dorigan. Max bid is in play. And now to 30,000. Oh, Portland, Oregon takes the lead at 30,000 on the wide body. He knows what he's looking at. 30,500 from Ben Dorigan. 31 from Portland. 31 from Portland, Oregon right here. Hasn't been hurt a bit right here. Got a, the components on this car are rich. They're the real deal. 31,000 in the lead. Ben Dorigan, you're out. You're going to see this car traipsing around Portland, Oregon. And you're going to be a woulda, shoulda, coulda. Nine seconds left to go on the wide body right here. Nine seconds left to go. Five, four, open the door. It's going outside. That car is going to Portland. And that brings us to lot number 157, which is a beautiful 1972 GMC C10. Take a look at this pick -em up truck right here. Here's a custom C10 that was totally restored. And it's a 1968 Chevrolet front clip was installed, finished with silver and black Paired with the shaved door handles and emblems, chrome front bumper, roll pan in the back. The bed is a wood polished floor in the bed right there with stainless strips, flush fuel for filler in the back, powered by a 350 V8 Ram Chet electronic fuel injection, aluminum heads, chrome alternator, shorty header. Guys, it's got a, it's, this truck is a nice build. Really, really nice build. One of the sleepers in the auction. I can't believe the price starts with a two. 26500 right now. And the bidder's from Boise, Idaho, and it's going home. No, high bidder's going to own this truck, but there's a deal that's way, way, way under the money. We haven't even close to the investment money it would take to build that truck. Boy, that's right, Scott. And being on the airbags and that beautiful... Red interior, it just pops. This is a nice truck. Driven the truck, it goes. It has some horsepower. It's ready to go cruise right now. I mean, what? Yeah, it's got the coilover it suspension. The, the, I mean, the thing has got a, uh, the B&M shifter. I mean, it's got, I'm sorry, I was a car off. It's got the Pro Air front air suspension on it. 26.5, it's going to have a new owner, folks. That's a good-looking Chevy truck. Got a lot of things right. We do have a new leader from Napa, Idaho at 27,000 on the GMC C10 short bed. You'll go find these, you'll find this short bed sitting in the weeds somewhere with a tree growing through the back of the bed, and they're going to want to have 12 grand for it. And to take it from that to this, you're looking at lots of dollars. Five seconds left to go. Napa, Idaho's in the lead at $27,000. This car is going to Napa, Idaho, and it is sold. Up next, Scott, lot 158. A 1948 Lincoln Continental Personal Luxury Two-Door Coupe. This Lincoln in 1948 was the last production American car to be produced with a V12 engine. And this one is finished in cream featuring 24 karat gold emblems and hood ornaments. Continental spare tire and fender kits. This car which was originally from Nebraska and only has 200 miles since it was restored. All the bright work was recombed, chromed, and polished. It's powered by a freshly rebuilt 292 cubic inch V12 engine with 127 horse paired with a three speed with overdrive manual transmission. What a great car, absolutely. I mean, like I said, one of the last cars, John, with a V12 in it. Yeah, Justin, did I mention it had a V12? Yeah, th okay. this is our second V12 I think we've yes. seen today. Yeah. This one might just be a nickel bit older, but a what bit. a beautiful car, a classic, it, and only 200 miles since the work was done. I've never seen such a car. 
First time I've ever laid eyes on a car that I didn't even know what it was. But here's a 48 Lincoln Continental luxury two-door coupe. And uh, we've got a high bidder, 15250 Kennewick, Washington's in the lead with a max bid. You've got a bid to win, guys. This car is selling to the highest bidder and came out of the same collection, collection up in Ellensburg mm -hmm. where those caddies were. 16,000 max bids in play. 16,250. There you go. Mount Vernon takes the lead at 16,250. Now we've got Spokane, Washington at 16,550 from Mount Vernon. They're going to battle it out. I've never seen a car like this. No, and, and the beige and burgundy interior, you talk about something that just exudes class. I would say in, 19, in 1948, this was an absolute head turner. If you own this, you were somebody. <laughs> you were somebody. In 1948, you got a two door Lincoln and drove up in this. It was like, hello, Mr. Stelzer. <laughs> yes. And we've got about three guys that think the same thing right now. Kennewick was in the lead at 18. We got 18. Now he's back in at 18.5. Mount Vernon's battling it out at 18.75. I think there's a little room to go, but this selling to the high bidder, folks. So whoever stands last is going to take her home. 19.250 from Mount Vernon. Brian, you're out. 19.5 on a Lincoln. Lincoln Continental, two-door coupe. There's your five. There's 19.5 from Kennewick. 750, 20 grand, Brian. You never forget what you paid for it. It's only money they printed every day, more so lately. Look at the lines and on that 20. car. Look at the lines on that car. Just exquisite. Well, I'm glad to see you guys appreciating these cars and getting after them. It makes me happy. You've got the right people. You're going after it. And uh, great opportunity to own a cool car here. You can't go on Amazon and find this one. No, and there's 22,000 right now. Only 30 seconds left. And we've got quite the battle going on. Yeah, up next we've got that gorgeous retail red 70 Chevrolet Camaro, sells no reserve. And uh, we really appreciate our sellers that put so many vehicles in our auction at no reserve. We have a really big belief that no reserve is the way to really establish true value. And uh, as you can see right now, this car is going out the door at $22,000. Sold, stays right here in Kennewick. Brian, congratulations. You'll love the car. Thanks for your bids. Chris, thank you for your support as well. Up next is this 1970 Chevrolet Camaro. Yeah, Scott. Local lot, collector car. Here is a beauty. Lot 159 is a 1970 Chevrolet Camaro. This custom Camaro has undergone a full restoration. The suspension's been up, suspension was upgraded with a TCI sub, subframe that's been fitted with coilover chocks and a power rack and pinion, rack and pinion steering. The power is provided by an aluminum-headed ZZ4 GM350 CI crate engine, which includes a factory serpentine setup. The transmission's a rebuilt TH350 automatic, a Griffin four-core aluminum radiator with dual electric fans keep the engine cool. A full three-inch stainless steel mandrel bent exhaust has been installed with an aggressive sound. And absolutely, when it pulled in here, aggressive sound is a perfect, perfect description. Justin, I won't name any names, but this car was sold in an auction somewhere down in Arizona a number of years back. And it brought a lot more than this. And they've gone nothing but go up in value since then. Here's a car that's got a really, really, really good pedigree. Has a lot of bells and a lot of whistles on it. It's the right color. Uh, 25.5. Fellas, i got to say there's got to be some room in it. Uh, Southington, Connecticut, they're in the lead at 25.5. I'm really surprised that we're, we're, we're even talking about a, 20, uh, a price that starts with a two on this car. Oh, yeah, Scott. I mean, the stance of this car, the build on it, looked it over close. It was done right. Thing runs great, sounds great. It's a show car. It's it, ready to go. And it's sold to high bidder, folks, so don't hold back. It won't be here tomorrow. you got 10 seconds to make your mind up on this car. 159 is the lot number. It's two seconds, and it's going out the door. Sold for 25.5, going to Connecticut. Bring in the 39 Ford half-ton pickup. 
Scott Lot 160, this 39 Ford half ton received a frame off restoration and it's powered by a flathead V8 engine and four speed manual transmission with a granny low gear. If you want to glow down slow and pull something, it's got it. It sports red paint. It's been wet sanded and polished to a high end and I do mean pristine luster finish. All the chrome's been replated. It also sports a detailed undercarriage and restored wooden bed. The accessories include wide white wall tires, riding on artillery wheels, trim ring, dual tail lights, rollout windshield, heater, and Are side mounted spare. No, I'm going to keep this reading. This is the we're going to call this the anniversary truck because this has the distinct honor of being in our auction every year. We sold it the first year, we sold it the second year, and now we're selling it the third year. Not that there's anything wrong with it. The guys just, they use it a year and they bring it back. It's a beautiful truck. 28 grand. I can tell you the guy's making money on it right now. But, and a, uh, and a no expense spared restoration yeah. was done on this thing. 28 grand on a good looking 1939 Ford half ton pickup. You buy it, you got to bring it back in a year and we'll sell it again for you. So, you know, it's just a cheap, it's just an inexpensive rental program. And you buy the truck, rent it for a year and bring it back. But here's a good looking little 39 Ford. Got the mobile gas on the side, the little wood sideboards and uh, fun, fun little truck to drive. 28 grand the price going to Whitefish, Montana, if nobody else bids. Runner up, where are you? You've had 103 bites at the apple. Dave, where are you from? Dave from... Carburetor says, Otis Orchards, Washington, you're out. You got to be 28.5. 28 grand and the little Ford truck is sold. Congratulations. Good eye, goodbye. Now here is a unique one, Scott. Here comes the one Justin Stelzer loves. Absolutely unique. Lot 161 is a 1971 Pontiac Trans Am George Barris Travolta unique, one of a kind. This 71 Pontiac was customized by George Barris for Mr. John Travolta in 1979, which was a great year. George sighed the passenger side dash. It was purchased by a local collector in 2007 from the Old Cars magazine. The Travolta Fever Firebird came from humble beginnings, starting its life as a 124 scale model kit offered by Revel in 79 as a cooperative effort between the company and George Barris and John Travolta. Scott. That's the George Barris, as in yeah. the Batman, car, yeah. the Batmobile. Yeah. Uh, George Barris is the car maker to the stars, the Hollywood, and uh, he built this car. Was owned by Travolta. Been through the. Here it is in all its glory. You even get a matching Ravel model car to go with That's it. That's right? right. We have that to go with the car. Yeah, that goes with the car, John. Look, look at the custom cowhide interior in this thing. Yeah. After Travolta has was the Urban Cowboy movie, Barris did that because of that movie and he just starred in it. So great history, one of a kind, George Barris built car. Is it, this is truly a piece of history, a time capsule. Yes. Yeah, we got Port those. Portland, Oregon and Arizona battling it out right now. There's this one and then there's this one. This is the one, this is the That's only right. one that Barris did for Travolta. Yep. What a beautiful car. 29 seconds left for 20000 That seems to me like somewhat of a deal. I have no idea what it's worth, but we're going to find out. we got three yep. or four bidders fighting it out, and we're going to have a high bidder, and somebody's going to be a proud owner. We've got uh, Arizona and Oregon battling it out. I think I saw Colorado in there just a second ago. Up next, we're coming up. We're going to get that 2017 Polaris. That's a fun machine. Then we got a gorgeous Corvette. And then we get in the wheel. We're getting in some fun cars. We got the Rolls Royce coming up. We got the Willys Jeep and more. So where are we at? 21.5 on the George Bears Trans Am. Very few miles put on this car since it was built. It has the original Mohawk tires on it from when he customized it. And they got lots of tread on them. You don't see those anymore. Wow. Yeah, you'll be the only one to ever have one on your block. I can promise you that. 23,250, Arizona's in the lead on the George Barris Trans Am. 23,5, back to Oregon. 
Thanks for your bids, folks. We appreciate it very much. Thanks for sticking with us. We're at lot 161. Oh, Jake, how many we got left? 161 to what? Two, 203. So we got about 40 cars left. A lot of fun cars left. My favorite car has yet not crossed the block. It's coming up in a while. My favorite car in the auction. We'll keep you guessing. Think, see if you can guess what it is. 24-5 on the Trans Am. One and only. One and only. What a... I mean, you talk about a conversation piece. Yeah. This would be a true conversation piece. It would really be a real conversation piece if I brought it home to my wife. <laughs> it wouldn't be a long conversation. <laughs> and I feel it would be one-sided. There's Colorado Springs. I knew they were out there. Portland, Oregon back in the lead at 25. Hey, honey. <laughs> I mean, how many cars have a saddle sitting over the gear shift? I don't know if the cameras picked that up on the interior, but uh, <laughs> nine seconds to go. Colorado, you're out. Arizona, you're out. No, there comes Colorado back. 25-5 on the Trans Am. 25-5 on a 19... George Barris, the car builder to the stars. He built the Batmobile. How many million did that sell for? Several. Several, yeah. Depends on which time, but Right, several. right, yeah, right. Five seconds to go. It could be going to Colorado Springs. Three, two, one. And the Trans Am is sold. Bring in the next one. We're going to switch gears a lot here, Scott. Up next, lot 162, is a 2017 Polaris General 1000. Oh, look at here. New deal. You, you want to get out and go. Look at here. Go ahead, Justin. New toy, new deal. You talk about toys, something to have fun, something to get yourself in trouble with. I bet this thing will go wherever, whenever you want to go. This general comes equipped with track system as well as the original factory wheels and tires. It's got a front windshield, rear glass, upper doors. The top half of the doors are removable. Uh, a lock and ride cargo box, heater, defroster, wipers, unbelievable. The 40 inch, it's got a 40 inch light bar on the front, winch, great gray and orange color. This thing is an absolute beast. And Justin, you got, you got the tracks, which I don't know. That's that's five, six, seven thousand dollar option or accessory. But you also get the original wheels and tires original too. Wheels so and you want to go back to a four wheeler? Absolutely. You got it. It's got all the toys. A lot of fun. We got twenty four five. Go down to the RV stores. Try to buy you one of these right now, brand new. They'll probably laugh you out of the store. You can't find them. You now. Can't find I know them. that for a fact. Here's a 2017 model, and uh, it's ready to go. And with those tracks, you know, it's like, honey, where do you want to go? Anywhere you want to go, we'll go. It'll, it'll do it. And we got 24.5. It's going to sell. It's going to have a new owner. And it's the General 1000. It's got the up. I love the windshield that goes up and down. And uh, wintertime, summertime, you have a lot of fun with that. Three seconds to go. Doors coming up. And it is sold to Kennewick, Washington. Up next, 163 is a 1972 Corvette Coupe. This low mileage big block Corvette is only 27,000 original miles. It's finished in factory warp bonnet yellow with custom pinstriping and original chrome bumpers. It's vacuum operated headlights, wiper doors. It's powered by the original matching numbers LS5, 454 big block V8 with what appears to be all of the original components. It's got factory chrome, dual snorkel air cleaner, ignition shielding, and upgraded aluminum radiator. Four original eight inch rally wheels with radial tires. The standard interior features saddle vinyl bucket seats, door panels, dash, and carpet. What an absolutely beautiful Corvette coupe in a great, great color. Yeah, it's the last of the chrome bumper Corvettes, a 72. Um, beautiful, it's called the War Bonnet Yellow, which is a gold. Um, stance on it is great. Uh, dealer installed luggage rack, which many of them had. Uh, an original car. 
Interior is really, really nice shape too. Well, and I love the, the vacuum operated headlights, the old hidden headlights, the hidden wipers. What a, what a great, beautiful car. Steel bumper car, right, John? Yes, yep. last year. <clears throat> yep, last year, ends. the steel bumpers. So pretty nice little uh, real deal Corvette right here. We've got the factory war bonnet yellow and uh, not a whole lot else to say. 454 big V8, four speed manual. And uh, we've got $26,000 on it from Bothell, Washington. Uh, could be some room here. We'll see if anybody else sitting in the weeds. Otherwise, it's selling again to the highest bidder. Five seconds left to go on the 72 Chevrolet Corvette. And it is sold. Going to Bothell, Washington. Bring in the Willys panel wagon. Here's a unique one, Scott. This 1960 Jeep wagon was originally purchased by the current owner from a Harley Davidson shop in Tennessee. It's finished in a beautiful, beautiful, bright Harley Davidson orange. There are new seals around the front windows. It's got upgraded LED lights, rear custom side steps, tinted windows, fender flares, roof rack. In the hood emblem is embedded a 1960 buffalo headed nickel. Up front, it's got a 9,000 pound winch. This ride is powered by a 327 cubic inch Chevy V8 with aluminum high rise manifold, Edelbrock four barrel carburetor and aluminum valve covers. It's got a TH400 automatic transmission NP208 GM transfer case and locking hubs. The Dana 44 axles front and rear and an eight inch lift that helps this Jeep roll on the aluminum rims that has 38 inch Falcon tires. The interior features matching upholstered front buckets and rear seats, door panels and headliners. The tilt steering column with a Grant Wood steering wheel. It's got a full complement of gauges, a JVC stereo, Harley Davidson four mats, a classic, classic Jeep panel wagon in a Beautiful orange color. And it's a Willys four wheel drive. 16,250 is the bid. Boise, Idaho's in the lead, folks. It's going to go down the road to the highest bidder. We got 33 seconds left to go on a good looking Willys four wheel drive. Panel wagon. Got a long, long story to it. We got a lot of things right. 327 Chevy V8. Idlebrock four barrel carburetor right there. Got the wood steering wheel. Got one happy buyer at 16750 You've got a max bid and play. Somebody's biting on it right there. 16750 still with Boise. 16750 Ho, oh, John. Boy, on these Jeeps, they did it right. Put a V8 in it, but they also put the rest of the drive terrain with a, with a heavy-duty transmission, transfer case, and then those Dana 44 front and rear end. So it's got the hardware. You yes, start getting the Dana 44. To go. Yeah. yeah, they didn't just put the motor and try to leave all the reg regular gear. It's got the hardware to, to support the motor. Yeah, good drivetrain. 17,750 is the high bid from Boise, Idaho. Who wants to be $18,000 on that good looking Willys? Will, you're out. Come on, Mr. Icebox. Try it again. 17750 max bid is in play Boise Idaho sweet home Oregon you're out three seconds left to go oh it is sold good eye goodbye bring in we go from boy this is a uh, talk about Jekyll and Hyde we go from Willie's to Rolls Royce one of the crowd favorite Scott's lot 165 the 1956 Rolls Royce silver cloud this 56 Silver Cloud four-door saloon, the classic English luxury sedan. It's finished in silver, chrome and black accents. It's powered by the 4.9 liter inline six and has a four-speed automatic transmission. It's power-assisted steering and servo-assisted brakes. It rides on factory wheels, factory hubcaps, and white ball radio tires. It just had a complete checkout and service at the Mercedes dealership here in the Tri-Cities area. The car runs and drives fine. The interior features plus gray vinyl. What a great Rolls Royce, a classic, and a classic silver Rolls Royce car. Justin, could you get me a spot of tea, please? I've been there. I've lived that. <laughs> it's scary. 55 seconds left to go on your own Rolls Royce. Sells to the highest bidder. 27.5 is the high bid right now on a good-looking car. The paint's deep on it. The tires are good on it. The interior, you know, you sit in that. It just smells rich, doesn't it, Debbie? Yeah. It just exudes. You got the gray poupon? <laughs> oh, 
Rolls Royce. Look, look, look at the mirror sitting clear out here on the fender, and I mean that's probably a that's probably a five thousand dollar hood ornament sitting on top of the radiator. And I'm pretty sure this thing has been garage kept over the last you year. Think? Been inside. Yeah. What an absolutely beautiful Rolls Royce. Yeah. Here's a little sleeper. We got a bunch of local bidders fighting on it right now. Pass goes in a lead at twenty eight five. I'll bet you can't buy the radiator and the whatever the thingamajig is, the hood ornament. I'll bet you, you probably can't touch that for five grand. But we've got 28.5 and five seconds to go. This car is selling to the highest bidder, getting ready to go, and it is sold. Thomas, you're a Rolls Royce owner. Scott, up next is lot 166, showing just over 100,000 miles. This 1969 Chevrolet K20 Custom 20, three quarter ton, four before pickup, is an absolute beauty. It's finished in factory green. It has chrome bumpers with front bumper guards, bed rails, camper mirrors, cab lights, and bedside steps. It's powered by the 350 cubic inch V8 aluminum manifold, four bell carburetor, and dual exhaust. It's got a four speed manual transmission with factory three quarter ton front and rear axles. What a great truck, an old truck. It's, it's absolutely just, I mean. Justin, if you're looking for a straight uh, K20 four wheel drive to start, here's where you go. It's got all the toys, it's got the options, it's got everything you want, it's got the right running gear, and uh, you can do some work to this truck and have a lot of fun. Got the uh, clearance lights up on top, Here's a good looking K20 custom four wheel drive, 350 in it right there. We've got a lot of the paperwork that comes with that truck. Right now we're sitting at $9,900, I would hope so. From Laurel, Montana, you've got a heck of a buy there if you get to go home with it for that price. $9,900 is the high bid. Laurel, Montana's in the lead. It's selling to the high bidder. This four speed manual transmission, what a great, great truck. Boy, one, own, one owner truck, truck, you can don't find them like this. It's straight, it's original paint on it. Uh, great driving truck, three quarter ton Chevy, four wheel drive, outfitted right, classic color. Um, we're at half the money on this at least. Yeah, yeah, we're about half price on this car, but folks, it sells no reserve and it's going to the highest bidder. So whoever's standing last is gonna own it. Last man or last woman standing. Right now, I've got 11750 from Laurel, Montana. He's got a max bid in place. Help yourself. Get in and help yourself right here. Nine seconds left to go. We're going to open the door and shove it outside. Whoa, somebody bids 12000 Laurel's still in the lead. You're biting your bids. You're going against a max bid. 12000 in the lead on this Chevy. Still hasn't been hurt a bit. 69 Chevrolet K20. There you go. Prosperity, South Carolina takes the lead at 12250 Yeah, welcome to the booth, Brother Harold from Cody, Wyoming. He's up here guest hosting, taking, giving Justin a break. And uh, Harold's an old, old, old car guy. Oh, <laughs> all right. Uh, though they're still fighting on it. Lapine, Oregon's back in the lead now, 12-5. North Carolina, you're out. No, happy to... Yeah, we're going to welcome to the block guest host, Harold uh, from Cody, Wyoming. Harold, tell him again what you said about that truck. Well, the reason they like these uh, trucks, Scott, is they don't have a lot of rust on They don't have any rust on them. It, it's an old truck, original paint, original interior, and uh, you can't find these back east. So good northwest truck right there. Yeah, nice dry climate truck sitting at 12750 Laurel, Montana, back in the lead on that truck. I think there's a lot of money left in that truck, but it sells to the highest bidder no matter what the price. Five seconds left to go. $13,000 is now in the lead. Laurel, Montana has the max bid. You got to be thirteen two fifty. Look how straight it is, Scott. Yep. No, nice straight sheet metal. That's a great truck. If you want to start a project, take one of these up into a $100,000 truck, which is what they're worth when you get them done. Uh, this is a good truck to do it with right here. You're, you're starting with a really, really nice straight project. Laurel, Montana, still in the lead at thirteen two fifty. You haven't been hurt a bit on that truck. A lot of room left in that truck. There's thirteen five from South Carolina. Twenty grand would be just a fair value on that truck. 
These old trucks just have a lot going for them. I like them more every day. I wish I'd have bought every single one of them that was for sale back when my uncle had that used GM or that new GMC dealership back in Wyoming. Just bought them all and put them in a garage. Yeah, I wish you'd have done that too. The Pine Oregon now in the lead 13750. It's a four speed truck, it's a K20, four wheel drive. Um, you know, it's got all the original, you know, it's, 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 it's sitting there in its working clothes. Three seconds left to go. Looks like it's going to Lapine, Oregon, and it is sold. Thank you. Well, we go from uh, Chevy truck to 23 Ford T-Bucket. Keep your ears open on this one, if you would, please. Let this one talk to you. What's that sound? What's that noise? Sound like a supercharger. Yeah. Whoa, take a look here. Shut her down, Rick. There's that supercharger talking. Here's that 19. 23, Scott. 23 Ford T bucket. Street rod. This comes from the Sprinkle Estate, finished in blue, has a custom rainbow splatter. But let's get down to the hardware. 383 Stroker V8. Got the Wien 671 Poly Superchargers, dual four barrel carbs. Polished air cleaner, braided fuel lines, idle brock, chrome valve covers, chrome radiator hoses, chrome distributor cap, chrome headers and exhaust, TH400 automatic, 10 bolt rear end, front disc brake suspensions, pretty much chromed out with the four link and the coilovers, rolls on polished aluminum wheels and good tires. The interior features light gray and dark upholstered seat. Ha, <laughs> guys, you want a tea bucket? Uh, doesn't get much better than this. Man, Scott, I wonder what the horsepower to weight ratio is on that. Uh, tea bucket. John, you got any ideas? I don't know. It's probably more than I can handle, and I can handle quite a bit. I know one thing. I drove it from here over to the hangar, uh -huh. and it was, I, I just thumped it once. It's like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. Would not have the nerve to get them, I mean, look at the tire. Look at the rear tire. Oh, yeah. Would not have the nerve to get them softened up and stickied up and then really launch on it. Because it would be scary. I don't see any wheelie bars on the back of it. No, I think it could use wheelie bars if you really got it sticky. 25.5 from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Max bid is in play. 25.5, it's going to the high bidder, and it is sold. Take the tea bucket outside. Thank you, Virginia Beach. Bring in the next one from the same estate. Here's the 41 Willies. Oh, look at here. 41 Willie's Coop come from the Sprinkle Estate once again. This is a full fiberglass body finished in gold. It's got the tinted windows, 350 cubic inch V8, tunnel ram intake, headers, dual exhaust, aluminum radiator, T8 350, 10 bolt rear end, Krager salt flat polished aluminum rims and tires. Guys, here's a nice car. I just love the lines of these old Willie's. Uh, they were uh, just one of the original drag cars, and uh, they look cool. They're, they were really classic. Yeah, that the, the the design. I mean, car designers today. I mean, can you imagine building something like that with a bubble coming out the top of a car? Everything today has to be so sleek and so contoured and so, you know, you can't tell a Ford from a Chevy, from a Buick, from a Mercedes. Oh yeah, I know that's a Willys. Make sure you look in the catalog at the interior of this thing. It is a diamond type gold. It is really, really cool. Uh, this car you was done like right. gold. Yes. Oh, yeah. I like gold. Well, we got Moses Lake in the lead right now on the Willys at 24,000, 25,000. He's got a max bid in play. Max bid in play. We got 70 bids on the car. James, you're out. Jim, you're out. Pat's in the lead right now, $26,000 on the Willys. 27 is the price now, 27.5. Good little street rod, Scott. That's a heck of a street rod right there. 27.5 is the price on the Willys. Where are you going to find another one that's like this and built out and ready to go? 18 seconds left to go. 27.5 is the price. James, you're still out. Where are you from, James? 602 area code. And Scott, you don't have to do a lot of work to that. Litchfield, Arizona. No, no. 
You can do some touch up and do some personalization and everything, but no, it's ready to go. Guys, it's sold. 27.5 goes right up north to Moses Lake, Washington. Thank you for your bids. Lot 169, come on in on a 66 Ford Coupe. Harold, you're the Mustang guy. Tell him about it. Well, I was a Chevelle guy, but uh, I raced a lot of Mustangs. This is a 1966 Ford Mustang. It's blue with white stripes. Kind of has that Shelby hood on it. Side scoop, Shelby gas cap, the GT350 badging and stripes. It shows 73,000 miles on the odometer. Original C code 289, rebuilt at 71,000 miles, and all kinds of good, good goodies right there. Just a nice, clean little Mustang, kind of a Shelby clone, I'd, I'd call it, but uh, lo looks great. It's got 73,000 miles. That's a low mileage Mustang. Nice little car, another nice Pacific Northwest car, 13,750. Sunnyside Washington's in the lead on that Mustang, and uh, Boy, there's, there's a really affordable collector car that you can get, take you out to car shows, earn some trophies, get to the hot dog stand, have a lot of fun for not a lot of money. thirteen seven fifty, and uh, go have a lot of fun in that car. And it's got that nice little 289 in it, Scott. Uh, Dad had one of those in that 67 Ranchero back in the old days, about before you were born. But it had a four-speed. I could lay rubber in one gear, first gear. <laughs> And imagine, 21 seconds left to go. And Sunnyside Washington's in the lead at 13,750 on a 66 Ford Mustang. 12 seconds to go. Anybody else out there want to bid on it? Help yourself. Kind of a lot of car for the money, I think. But Yeah, it's a great, great car. Goodbye, and she's gone right there. Sold. 13,750. That brings up lot number 170, and I'm happy to tell you that this is my favorite car in the auction. I don't know what it is about this other than it's not, I think my mom and dad were married in one that's very similar to this. Yeah. Um, I love this car. Here is a 37 Chevrolet business coupe, single seat, it's large trunk, got design, got this again, this is a business coupe. It's got that big trunk there. You can put almost a four by eight sheet of plywood in, but I just love the build on this coupe. It's got the yellow running lights. It is just righteous looking. This car is real. Really like it. Got the 216 six cylinder engine with the Alfenhauser finned aluminum valve cover. So it's just got some of those hot rod features, but they've really honored the, uh, honored the car got the full wood and the dash houses in the instrument cluster with full gauges cow vent and heater we're sitting at twenty two thousand two fifty. uh tony from uh, new mexico is in the lead now van nuys california takes the lead at twenty two five. guys you're really and the interior on it is beautiful and scott the you know this, this car look at the grill on that thing i mean they, they just had class back then and like you say i think this was the Vintage, if not the very year that mom and dad were married in, took their honeymoon on right here. It kind of looks like that Willie's, just a little bubble on yep. it, but what a, what a car. And one thing you don't see too much are those uh, bullet turn signals there on the front fenders. Oh, right. In fact, this is the first one I've seen with them. I'm sure there's been a few others, but this is a very well done car. Yeah, 23,000 now in the lead with Van Nuys, California. Heck of a car, 23,250. Tony from La Luz, New Mexico says, nope, I'm going to take it home for 23,250. Keep bidding, guys. You got a real nice car here. You're going to have fun. You're going to love to see this one come off the truck. Scott, you can't go down to the uh, dealership and buy a used Mazda for that kind of money. No. And this one no here, comparison. You, you got a classic. It Five is, seconds to go. go. down in value. Those of you buying from out of town, we can help you. We can put you in touch with some real reputable transport companies and... Uh, um, don't worry about getting them home. We can get you in touch with some reputable enclosed transport that will get them to you safely and soundly. And uh, 23750 still heading into Mexico at this point right now. Gorgeous car. My favorite in the auction. I agree with you, Scott. Which I usually do anyway. Right. Well, New Mexico's in the lead, 23750. There comes Van Nuys at 24. They're going to battle it out. 
24 250 You only got three more $250 bids, so get them while they're hot. Well, they know the value of this. Yep, thing, they do. They see what they're bidding. They see the quality. They see the quality of the interior, quality of the build on this car and what they've done. I like it because it's just got some of that hot rodder features, but they've not taken it to the extreme. Having the Offenheiser head and that. And four seconds. Looks like she may be going to New Mexico, and it is... Sold, 24250 Congratulations. Tony, let's go from that to a 1979 Datsun 280ZX. Another great car and a good story on this car. Lot number 171 is a 280ZX. Uh, a local, listen to this, local one owner with, 21, 000, with under 21,000 original miles. Folks, here is a time capsule here. Uh, uh, if this car was a year older, you'd be talking in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. I think you're going to see this car do nothing but appreciate over time. The condition is beautiful. It's a one-owner car with under 21,000 original miles. Got the 2.8-liter inline six-cylinder with a five-speed manual transmission, power steering, and brakes. Got the factory gold-accented 14-inch aluminum wheels, the tan leather bucket seats, got AM, FM, uh, factory uh, air conditioning it's got it all and i'm at fifteen thousand dollars with bothell washington who has a max bid in play somebody's going to really sneak up on a nice car there that i think is investment grade it's a car you can buy today put it in the garage go to some shows have some fun sell it in 10 or 20 years and if you know and make money scott hit that Twenty-one thousand original miles. I mean, that's not even a thousand miles a year on that car. How many miles is that? Nineteen. That that's like five hundred miles a year. Yep. Five hundred miles a year on that car. It must have just went to car shows. That's about I all. I think it's about all it did. Yeah, it went to car shows. And obviously was kept indoors anytime it wasn't at a car show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for, Forty years old. Twenty thousand miles. Yeah. That is a sleeper, as Dad would say. A sleeper. That's what he would have said. 17.5. They're starting to appreciate it a little bit. Still room to go in that Lots car. Lots of room to go. And look at the interior, Scott. Looks, yeah. Looks brand new. Yeah. All that's the missing car is looks a, brand new. All that's missing is the plastic on the seats. What year is that? 79. 1979 Datsun. Yeah. You know, they came out with the 240 yep. Zs and then the two. I think the they have a 260 next. or 280, yeah. And, uh, you know, this was a hot rod back it in was. 1979. Yep. I remember our neighbor Jimmy had a 240Z, and that thing was a little hot rod. This was back when I was oil leasing in uh, Ohio. 19,000. Hey, we got a new leader from Jacksonville, Florida, 19,250. Bidding on the car. I'll bet this is the only one in America with 21,000 original miles. I don't know where you'd find another one. But right now, you can get it at Trucks and Auto at the Northwest Collector Car Auction. Jacksonville, Florida still holds the lead, 19.5. This car needs to bring $20,000 plus, and it'll never be heard of that. Bothell, Washington, back in the lead, 19.750. There's our 20,000. Jacksonville, Florida's back in the lead. Help yourself, guys. You know what you're buying. Um, I don't need to tell you a whole lot more. The pictures speak for themselves. The car speaks for itself all loudly and clearly. You know, that guy from Florida, he could just come up here and drive it home. I mean, 21,000 miles. Yeah, put a 25% increase on the mileage. <laughs> yeah, well, Jacksonville's in the lead right now. Go Gators. Oh, where's Wyatt? <laughs> All right, Bothell kept it back in the lead at 20750 I'm kind of surprised it's only a two-way horse race. I thought there might be four or five people that really get after this car. Well, they sure can't get hurt at this price, Scott. No, no, I think this is a... Look at the wheels and, and, on it. Yeah, oh, Look it is beautiful. Nice, all the original yep. wheels. This thing Got the hasn't gold been, and silver two-tone. It hasn't been dinged up. You haven't had some young kid on it. it no. Nope. It, it's been taken care of, and it's just like new. Yep. No, you're buying a real time capsule. You're buying, I think, a really investment grade vehicle here that has got nothing but 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 uh, good future in it, in its future for for going up in value, based on what we've seen what happened with the 240s, and you know who would have loved a square body Chevy ten years ago? Nobody, 
Pick well, I did. I got one. Well, not yeah, not nine years ago. Nine years. Oh, you you were always ahead of your time, bro. Bothell's in the lead, 21-750. Florida, you're going to wave the white flag? No, sir. He bids 22,000, 22,000, and Florida's back in the lead. You have the only one in the United States with 21,000 original miles. Yeah. Well, can you imagine what this would bring? Just, 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 just change the name and get this exact same color combination, exact same kind of wheels, and call it a 1979 Trans Am. What kind of price would we be talking well, I've, I've seen them bring a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. The classic black with the gold wheels. Yeah, it's kind of from the band. The Smokey so and the Bandit. I yeah, bought a new one in 1978. Yeah. Right off the showroom floor. And this car looks like it came off the showroom well, it, it's floor. It's kind of the same color, really, with yeah. the gold wheels. That was kind of the, the Smokey and the Bandit type deal. Yeah. That, nice combination. That was the color. Well, these guys are starting to recognize the value that's there. <clears> this, this still retains the tires that came on it when he got the it. The original new. tires. Yes. These are the original tires yes. on it right now? Yes. Wow. Yep. Original tires. Yep. Fun. Fun to see these kind of cars come out of nowhere and, uh, and, and, and really fun to see the bidders appreciate them and go after them and get after them and, and uh, have an op and, 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 and I know they're delighted to have an opportunity to bid on something like this. I don't know where you'd find another one. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. really don't. No. Well, that's why you got somebody from Florida, somebody from Washington, both bidding against each other trying to buy this car. Bothell Washington's in the lead. Five seconds left to go. Is it going to stay in Washington? No, oh, there comes Florida, 23-5. <laughs> He's getting weak, Bothell. I don't know. That'll just start going by $1,000 bids. Well, it's going to here worth, pretty what soon. Gonna, what it's yep. worth. Yep. Yeah. See, there's a car that was sleeping. This car was clear down at $15,000 when it come in the ring. Everybody's going to sneak up on it. You know what them, each, each, one of, each of these guys is thinking. If it wasn't only for that other guy. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it only a, takes two to have a horse race. Yep, only takes two to have a horse race. Bothell, Washington's in the lead, 23,750. I keep waiting for a kind of a white horse to jump in here, you know, and, and, uh, and kick them both out and, and really make a race. There's a lot of room here. Yep. 23, 750 is the price. Five seconds to go. Jacksonville, Florida, thank you so much for your bids. Are you done? Congratulations, Stephen Bothell, Washington. You're the winner on the 79 Datsun 280ZX. Well done. Well played. Harold, why don't you tell them about this 1940 Mercury? Here is a gorgeous looking car. Okay, Scott, we've got that chop custom Mercury coming in here, a 1940 Mercury. Uh, purchased by the current owner several years ago from LeMay Museum in Tacoma, Washington. It is finished in white with a black removable Carson style hardtop. The top has never been removed by the current owner. It's powered by a Ford 302 cubic, uh, cubic inch V8, Elderbrock Performer intake manifold, Holly carburetor, all the right stuff. And uh, wow, four nine inch rear axles. What a nice little outfit, right? Rack here. and pinion steering, power brakes, come from the LeMay Museum. Here's the real deal Holyfield right here. 1940 Mercury Chop Custom Convertible. I, I, you know, I've said it, and I'm going to say it again, but the, the design lines of cars from this vintage are just exquisite. That car, I don't know. And when this car came in, you know, we said this could be a calendar car. Yes. That 40 Merc with the red wheels. Removable top. This thing was done right. It was bought from the LeMay Car Museum over in And that's Tacoma. no money on this car. Yes. We're, another one sitting in the weeds. You guys yep. all sitting out there going to steal this car for twenty grand. Ain't going to happen. It sells to the high bidder, but get in and help yourself because there's a real deal right there. We've got about four or five people fighting on it right now. Hello, Randy from Stevenson. He was up here for the show and shine last night. There's Mount Vernon back in the lead, 23-750. I'll tell you what, Scott, that is a parade car if I've ever seen one. Yep. I've never seen, I don't think I've ever seen one. I haven't either. You know, in the way they chopped it and, and do that, you know, that takes a lot of skill too. 19 seconds left to go. We've got a new leader from Longview, Washington. Randy, you're going to be really mad when you see this car at a car show and it's not yours. Now we got a guy from Mocatillo, Washington. We've got about a five-way horse race, all Washington State bidders. 24-5 is in the lead, Mocatillo. 
That in the lead at 24 5. Right there. Look at those steel wheels on there, Scott. Yeah, yeah. Peter Love those Red. steelies. White wall baby tires, moon. baby hub moon caps. hubcaps. 24 yeah, 5. You got nine seconds, guys. Nine seconds to go. Don't quit now. If you want it, you can have it, but you got to jump on it. It's going to Muckle Teal for $24,500. Thank you all, each and every one of you, for your bids. 173, we got a 1953 Chevy 3100 five window pick em up truck. Scott, this was one of my favorites. Yep. Right here. Look at this truck. That thing is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. You know, if Randy was watching this, he ought to, this is his vintage. Yep. Well, he's a 54 model, but this is pretty close. Well, Mert had one of these. He rolled it off a cliff. Kind of look, you know, but uh, now look at this truck. So you got, this, this is a five window. It's retail red. It's got the oak wood floor. It's got the uh, electrical system's been upgraded to 12 volts. That's very important. You got the three speed on the tree. And uh, 235 transmission or 235 six cylinder. There's just a beautiful little red truck that you can go have a whole lot of fun with. Well, I tell you, the guy I know the guy that built this thing, he did it right. He took several years to do it. He did the right upgrades, but still maintained the originality of it. This is one of my favorite pickups here. Um, last year, the split front windshield and that, that front grille before they change it in the 54 to a single windshield. This is just a super buy. You couldn't build it for where we're at yeah, right now. No, there's money left in this truck at 20250 but it sells to the highest bidder. Right now, it's headed to Star, Idaho. And that's a five-window Chevy. Not the three-window. Got the five-window. That means it's got the corner windows back and, you know, the left and right. Has the spare tire carrier as well. And uh, I think there's some room here. 20500 max bid is in play. Don't overlook this nice red Chevy pickup. This is about what I learned to drive in. Scott? Well, it's very similar to my very, my very, very, as you well know, first truck was a 1954 or 55 Series 1, and it was a five window. Wish I still had it. Um, but yeah, very similar. That 235 engine, you know, it just, uh, and I had a four, four on the floor. This, this is a beautiful truck. You get this out in the sunlight, and it just shines. Yep. And nice job on the wood floor with the chrome strips there. Got the chrome strips going down. Look at the pictures they come through. It's gone. It's sold. Twenty thousand seven fifty going to Mount Vernon. Good job, you Chris. You deserve that. All right, we've got the last Chevelle in the auction coming in right now. Or Nova, excuse me. Lot number 19, 174, here's that 69 Chevrolet Nova SS. This per, uh, owner was purchased by the current owner 1991. So 91, 01, 11. He's owned this car for 30 years. Um, it was bought new at El Mark, Ed Mark Chevrolet in Napa, Idaho. It was, a, it was an original 396 car, however, and a period correct engine was built and installed when the car was redone 14 years ago. While there's not a build sheet or documentation to prove this car was an original build block, big block car, it does have the correct features that a 396 cars came with, including the heavy duty front springs, power disc brakes, and the inlet outlet to the heater core in the center rather than on the inside of the heater core box. Owner stated the transmission is the M22 close ratio four speed. It's finished in black cherry. Features the original SS hood and badging. Is powered by a period correct 396 V8 rebuilt with around 5,000 miles on it. Has the Idlebrock aluminum manifold, four barrel carburetor, chrome valve covers, headers, and dual exhaust. Big block car, ladies and gentlemen. It's got the center force two clutch and an M22 four speed 12 bolt posi rear end. Rolls on factory rally wheels and TA radials. You know, Scott, every time I see one of these uh, Novas, it reminds me of a guy's uh, crenning back there in Cody. He had a 1970 Nova, bright red, 396, four speed. And we just loved to drag main in that car. And we raced everything that came along beside us. Well, I tell you, the uh, wasn't a lot of the 396 cars made. So this one, 396 with a four-speed, some of them had automatics. This is a four-speed car. It's a good, solid car, not matching numbers. If it was, it would be three times the money. Or four. Or four, yeah. 
Yeah, we're, we're, there's a lot of room left in this car, and you can tell because we've got about five different people playing hopscotch and leapfrog trying to be the winner on this car. Uh, definitely under the money, definitely a lot of room to run. 18,750 is in the, in the lead right now on what should be an easy $30,000 car. But help yourself, folks. You set the price. These are fun, Scott. They're a lot of fun to drive. And jack them up a little bit, put some of those slotted mags on them, and go out and burn some rubber. Salt Lake City, Utah in the lead. Now Richland, Washington. Back to Richland at 19250 Anything with a price starting with a two is going to be a, considered a real buy in my book on this car. And, Scott, this was bought in Napa, Idaho. I mean, that's down yeah. there by Boise. It's a northwestern car. It, it hasn't been through the salt, you know, back east that they put on the highways. There comes a Caldwell, good, Idaho good, bidder right now. You bet. You, you buy a good northwestern car and look underneath and look at the frame and, and this car would be fun to, fun to build up. Yep. 20 seconds left to go. Caldwell, Idaho is in the lead. Who wants to take this car home? 19,750. Do you want it? Caldwell, Idaho is in the lead at 19,5. And I got nine seconds to go. There's Nine Mile Falls, Washington, 750. Caldwell takes the lead at $20,000. The car is going to have a new owner, ladies and gentlemen. There's a real buy. Fairly valued, fairly priced. And right now, Caldwell, Idaho is going to take this car right back home where it came from, right next door to Napa. There's still a lot of room in this car. Yes, car. there is. A lot of room. Get in there and bid. There comes Nine Mile Falls, Washington back. There comes Caldwell back at 20500 You won't be sorry on this. Good looking Nova. You know, these were racing the Camaros and Chevelles, you know, and, and Baldwin Motion, and they were making these things. Novas and Camaros and Chevelles. That was, that, that was what you had to have. If you're a Chevy guy. Five seconds to go. Open the door. We're going to walk this car outside. It looks like it's heading home to Caldwell, Idaho. Thank you. Congratulations. Let's bring in another Cadillac. Boy, we've had some cool Cadillacs. Here's a 1965 two, do two owner Cadillac convertible. Has always been in the Pacific Northwest and is finished in dark red with white convertible top. Powered by a 429 cubic inch V8 rated at 340 horsepower with a TH400 automatic transmission. Power steering, power brakes, rolls on factory steel wheels with the Cadillac wheel covers and white wall radio tires. The interior features luxurious black leather seats fully automatic, white convertible top, power windows, power seat, comfort control AC, tilt, telescoping, steering clock, wheel, column, clock, twilight sentinel, factory AM push signal, seeking radio with, boy, that was a big deal. Oh, I can push a button and it'll find the next station for me. Oh, in 1965, car's two years younger than I am. This is a classic caddy convertible. And we've got a happy bidder at 31500 from Kenmore, Washington. 49 seconds left to go. How much do you think this car weighs, Scott? We ought to sell it by the pound. Yes. There is more steel in the hood of that car than probably exists in my whole pickup today. Well, I'll tell you, being a convertible, the frame is, is a box steel about a half inch thick. 31.5 holds the lead with 28 seconds left to go. It's going to Kenmore, Washington. This, had a, this car's had 2,600 views in our catalog, had 108 bids. Runner-up bidder, Thomas, you're out. Where are you from, Thomas? Just going to snoop around here a little bit. Thomas is from Pasco. Okay. A lot of so, room there, yep, Scott. A lot still of room, room in that Hard car. To find. Hard to find they on a wrecked. 65 Cadillac. My we're using demo derbies. Well, I was going to say, my brother Randy put them all in demo derbies. Yeah, he that car is going to Kenmore at 31.5. Thank you. He went through about five of those Boo-boo, you're up. Come on up, Boo-Boo. You're fine, Harold. Stay there. I'm going to put Boo-Boo in my chair. Hey, check out this 1972 Ford Gran Torino custom panel wagon right there. Built by the late owner, started life out as a four-door wagon, custom built using Ranchero doors and, and uh, a top to a two-door panel wagon. Metallic purple pinstriping. Wow, this is one of a kind. Has a 460 V8 in it, aluminum high-rise, four-barrel carburetor, Holly. 
What a deal. C6 automatic transmission. You'll have the only one in, in Pasco. Well, only one only, in the world. Only $6,200, too. What a... I mean, I looked through this car the other day. The purple interior, five-point harness belt. I mean, the, the airbrush paint job. Truly, uh, there's art in what has been done. Is it yep. for everybody? I, Maybe not. Yeah. But the artists that did this phenomenal job the front the back what they've done and there could be a lot of fun had with this and thing. i'm glad you brought that up because the airbrush paint job even on this this is like a faux wood trim it's perfect i mean they did such a great job on it uh the more i looked at this car the more i was impressed with the quality of the work that was done definitely a unique one of a kind yeah, and for the one thing that's for sure is you will have the only one out there. You won't have to worry about walking out into the parking lot and remembering where you parked your car. You don't see a lot of these in Oklahoma? No, I mean, I think this is probably one of the first ones I may have ever seen. But an absolute great Grand Torino station wagon. Well, we are under the money, I can tell you that. Yes, way under. We're under the money. That we're under the money, but there seems to be a little bit of competition going on, and we're jumping up right now. We're at 7,500 going to Boise, Idaho. I mean, this is, there's, this is a neat car. Got a max bid working here, folks. You got the rat fink on the side there. Yeah. It's been a long time since I heard of rat fink. The, the old rat fink, yeah. I just... Well, like I said, I go back to the paint job and the artistic work and the talent and the time that it took to get this car to, to where it's at. Well, you got hood scoops on the front. I don't know if they're functional, but, you know, that was off of... This thing's got a 460 in it. 460 V8, what do we have, C6 automatic transmission, 9-inch Ford rear end, dual exhaust, aluminum radiator, and the, I mean, the interior, look at the dash and the, and the work and the time that's been put into it. Four-wheel disc brakes. I mean, I didn't have that till way later on in life. And still got a max bid working. We're at $9,300. It's going to Boise as it looks right now with 25 seconds left. Air conditioning. Back in 72, that was a real luxury item. Look at the pictures as they're coming across your screen. Look at the pictures of the inside of this car and, and all the details that were, that were looked at and paid attention to. We're up to 15,000, it's still going to Boise. Yeah, right, Absolutely. right, right, right. I mean, Got a luggage rack on it, Scott. Six seconds. Max bids in play currently, folks. Nice wheels on too. Nice wheels. Only 20 seconds left. At 15,250, this is a bargain. Up next, we've got a 1973 Chevrolet Camaro Herald. After we get we got two seconds left here, and there goes our Grand Torino. Up next, lot 177's a 1973 Chevrolet Camaro, Harold. Yep, that, uh, this is a split bumper there and set up for track or a weekend cruiser. Listen to that big old 454 big block in it. Big cam. It's got the turbo 400 transmission. It got a Ford 9 inch rear end. Boy, I tell you about that Ford rear end. You know, when they put a Ford in a Chevy, you know it's got to be a good rear end. Absolutely. I think this one's probably been, this one here, there's been time spent on. It's dialed in. It's great color, great machine. I promise you, it'll hook up and get down the road. You can set it on the track. You can do whatever you want to do with a great, great 73 Camaro. Yeah, this is the one that you, dr you drive to the drag races on. Absolutely. <clears throat> 16250, the new home for this is actually going to be in Illinois right now. Now, Justin, it looks like it's got a little roll cage in there. Absolutely. Right, I, th right, I think right this, this one's set up for a drag strip, yep, Harold. It's, yep. it's, it's full on yet. You're going to take it down the road and you can actually drive it there. You don't have to put it on the trailer. To get a little it there. bit different than that Copo Camaro I had. Just I had a to, little I had bit. I to tow it to the drag strip. Absolutely. 
454 big block turbo 400 transmission like you said it's got that nine inch ford rear end at 16.7 we're still staying in illinois you know those ford nine inch rear ends i mean that was really popular it's, it's kind of like the old international plow pulled by a john deere tractor you know when they're that good they're good right right well, I think they paid for the shell. They haven't started to hit the uh, drivetrain of this car yet. No, the drivetrain uh, yeah. is, is where this car's at. Yeah. And it is a nice body and paint on it, too. 16 Steven, we're still staying in Illinois. Got a little bit of a. Oh, we're out, folks. 16 Steven, it's gone. Up next is a 1938 Chevrolet Coupe Master Deluxe. This Chevy Coupe Street Rods is a driver and it is around 85 percent completed it's finished in satin black with a blue pin striping and steel body with fiberglass front end and rear fenders the hood side panels are included but not shown in any of the photos it's powered by a built 355 v8 with aluminum manifold holly 750 double pumper carburetor aluminum heads hei ignition headers and dual exhaust the power is transmitted to a 700 r4 automatic transmission and again, Harold, a Ford nine inch positive track rear end. What a great 38 Chevrolet Coupe. This is another one you can take to the shows. I love this matte finish. People are gonna notice it. Here's one that'll bring you some hardware home. I'll tell you what, look at those wheels on it too. Just beautiful wheels. I don't know how wide those back ones are. They're about 12 inches wide. But man, you can put some rubber on that thing. And again, just, just look at how, how this is kind of similar to the style of the Willys. The other one that we sold, that 39, I mean, what a beautiful design. Well, I tell you, Harold, this one is built right. And make sure you look in the catalog at the chassis pictures. I mean, the work that's done on this car, it's ready to go. Some finishing things to be done. There's some trim around the windows that's in the trunk that need to get put on. Well, like but, we said, it's at 85% yes, complete, that, John, but the hard work's the work right, that's been done. Right. That 85% the hard, is the hard tough part's part. done. And that's it was the underside, right. the inside. Yep. It's the detail. The little yep. minor details is what will finish this package yes. and send it out the door. Absolutely. This car is done right. Yeah, if you're looking for something to work on, here you go. Right here. Hard work's done. I bet and, you that thing will light them up, too. At 16000 16250 it's going to stay here in Washington currently. That's a pretty cheap little hot rod. A lot of fun to be had on a Saturday afternoon and a Sunday drive. 16.5, staying in Washington on the 38 Chevrolet Coupe Master Deluxe. And look at the interior of that, too, uh, Justin. It looks nice. Absolutely. I don't like, know what the, what's the hole in the window? Is that where Bonnie, kind of like Bonnie and Clyde type car? They're a plexiglass window. They're a plexiglass window. There you go. 17,000. Going to Burien, Washington. Got 15 seconds left. Hope they don't let it get away for that. We've got another special one coming up here, Harold, a 54 Chevrolet 3100. Got Look. two seconds, and out the door goes the 38 Chevrolet Coupe. Up next is lot 179, a 1954 Chevrolet 3100 pickup. This pickup's finish is green with black running boards and a white grill. The new wood in the bed and new wood in the bed. It's powered by a 235 cubic inch six cylinder with a new water pump. Manual three speed transmission with column shifter. It rolls on matching steel wheels. It's got chrome Chevy, hub, Chevy hubcaps and wide white wall radials. The interior, it features a tan vinyl bench seat and tan door panels. Full gauges, a heater, a new heater core. This is a classic Chevrolet pickup finished in a classic green color. And you got a gas can right there in the back. I wonder if the boys out back left that in there. <laughs> it does, I don't think that gas can doesn't go with it. But just in case, it, going out the door here, need a little gas, you got her. Absolutely, Harold. This is a, gr I mean, a great classic truck right here. Fun to, I mean, just here's another one. It's fun, be fun to drive around on the weekend. Take to a few car shows, see everybody, shine it up. 
Beautiful interior. What a great, great vehicle. That is Randy's vintage. I hope he's watching. He ought to be bidding on this. 17,250. We're currently going to Star, Idaho. Only 30 seconds left. 17,5. Mount Vernon, Washington. We got a little Washington, Idaho battle going on here. Got the big old uh, white sidewalls there, too. Up well, at 18,000, we just crossed the 18,000 mark, Harold, and staying in Mount Vernon, Washington. 23 seconds left. Let's see if we can go back to Idaho. I like the spare tires that are mounted on the side there, too. That was, yeah, the, that, that was classic back the then. The wide, white walls right. kind of tie in with the white grill. Yeah, right. Way easier to get to great. than now where they put them underneath of it. Yeah. No, 18250. Up oh, 185, 18250 in Mount Vernon, Washington. They're getting a good truck for the money. Oak bed. 12 seconds. Star Idaho's back in the lead at 185. Now at 187 in Mount Vernon. Are we going to have 19? Can we see 19 on this beautiful green 3100? Yeah. When they built these, you had metal in them. If you hit something with one of these, you know you've hit it. <laughs> yeah, and they, they know they've been hit. Nine and eight seconds left. 18.750. Oh, nope. We got new bidder, 19 star Idaho. 19.250s back to Mount Vernon, 19.5 to star. Anything under 20 is just a real deal right there. Only eight more seconds there, Justin. Five seconds left, going to Mount Vernon, Washington. Two and one. Up next, Harold, we've got lot 180, a 2003 Chevrolet SSR convertible, Harold. What do you know about this one? Well, all I know is they kind of took the look of the one that just went out the door, and they made them like this one right here. Made a new one with the old look. This was signed by Richard Sherman. Has 56,000 original miles on it. Features a complete blue and green wrap with the Seahawks number 12 on the doors and an amazing city skyline on the rear deck of lid of Seattle there. I'm having a hard time talking. The uh, power folding uh, hardtop folds into the trunk. Uh, factory color of this was bright yellow. It's not bright yellow anymore. You got a 5.7 liter V8, automatic overdrive transmission, power steering, factory alloys. Boy, what, I mean, did, these look like the old trucks, but they're, they were new trucks. Absolutely, at 18,250, we're going to Idaho. This classic SSR is, it's an absolute great vehicle. You talk about something to fun, living in the Pacific Northwest. If you're a Seahawks fan, this is your ride right here that's right absolutely a lot of retro features on in the interior of this kind of reminds you of the old pickups too yeah 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 100 percent driven today by our director of pr jacqueline musser she does all the heavy lifting absolutely she's one that brings all these buyers from florida and england and every every place else 12 seconds left. I believe we're going to Boise. And up next, we've got a 1984. All right, folks, next up is lot 181. A little different deal here. We're going to go from the pickups to the cars. A 1980 Porsche 928. This 928 is a luxury 2 plus 2 sports car. It only has 47,000 original miles on it. It's finished in black. These sports cars achieved a 50-50 front rear weight distribution by utilizing a transaxle in the rear of the car. The current owner is the third owner of this beautiful automobile and has owned it since 1997, at which time it only had 36,000 miles. It's powered by a 4.5 V8 with fuel injection paired to an automatic transmission. 
Porsche is also equipped with power four-wheel disc brakes, power steering. It rolls on factory phone dial wheels and radial tires. Harold, this is one beautiful 1980 Porsche that was fully serviced just a month ago in April of 21. And that, that fully serviced at the Porsche dealership would have cost a small fortune right there. So, you know, we're, we are not right on this at $9,100. That's right. The sister of this was the best import last night at the uh, Bob Carter Memorial Show and Shine. How many miles does it say on this car? It doesn't. It, the, the, it's got 47,000 47. original miles, Harold. Oh, there you of go. Of which only 11,000 have been put on it since 1997. You see that quick Oklahoma State math right there, old buddy? There, there you go. 36, when the original owner bought this car in 1997, it only had 36,000 original miles, That's right. John. That's right, and I kind of put this in the class of that, the condition of that 280ZX we had, it's an original, the original black paint, thing is 40 years old, but it's in great shape, good low miles, good buy, a lot of car to drive, yeah. that's and a sports car. 10,000 for a 1980 import that looks like this, what a great car. Yeah, Porsche wheels. You can tell everybody you got a Porsche, too, for ten thousand bucks. What it is a Porsche, Harold? I know it is. And at ten two fifty, it's actually staying right here in Pasco, Washington. It's a bold move, God. Yeah, that'd be fun to drive. And you got the two back seats for insurance purposes. You know that keeps your insurance down. Put your kids right there in the back. Six seconds remaining. 10250 staying right here in Pasco, Washington. Well, here comes a bold move, Cotton. Let's see what he can do with it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a 51 Ford F1 pickup truck. Uh, this one family owned Ford pickup was purchased new by the current owner's grandfather. Finished in a white with pearl blue accents and polished oak wood bed floor. Powered by an amazing 302 5.0 motor. Pretty nice looking little Ford truck right there. Yeah, a 302 V8 and a good looking Ford pickup. That's an F1 family owned pickup was purchased new by the current owner's grandfather. So these are kind of hard to come by. Burlington, Washington's in the lead at 19,750. Uh, yeah. The cars, the truck's got some pretty good pedigree right there. It's got the 302 V8, 1989 Mustang high-rise aluminum manifold, Idabrock carburetor, got the M&T aluminum valve covers, braided hose, electric fuel pump, got the high-flow oil pump, short-throw headers, upgraded stainless steel radiator shroud, and electric fan, automatic transmission with a B&M shifter. Uh, I think you about covered it all. <laughs> it's a nice truck. That's a nice truck right there for $19,750 right now going to Burlington, Washington, Jake. They got a max bid in play, folks. Get your bids in quick. You only got 25 seconds remaining. Great truck with a great history. Great driving truck. Classic body style. Uh, should be bringing more than this. I think get out there and bid. Yeah, this here's thing a good is worth more than this. There's a buy at every auction, folks. You bet. But you're setting the market. You set the price. It's selling to the high bidder. No minimum bid. No reserve. You got five seconds to go. 19750 is going to take it home to Burlington, Washington. Congratulations. Up next, we got a 1982 Ford GT Mustang T-top. Looky, looky here. It's a Fox body Mustang. It's finished in white with green stripes. It's got the T-top removable roof panels. And that GT hood scoop and rear spoiler is powered by the rebuilt 5.0 liter V8. Bored out with roller rockers, large cam aluminum heads, standard four-speed manual transmission. A nice looking car here. Right now, high bid sitting at 14250 Richland, Washington's got it right now. One of those Fox body Mustangs, guys. Don't overlook that. I think there's some room in this car right here on a 1990s Mustang. Got some good features to it right there. Classic Fox body, uh, right color, right stripe, and uh, 14250 Boy, we're getting back into some pretty good prices and good budget cars right here. Not a lot of money right there on a good-looking Mustang. This car came to us from an individual in Sunnyside and looks to be in good representation here. 
14,250 is not too far off. Get your bids in quick. You got about 50 seconds left, and then moving on to another Mustang, a 68, little older one. I mean, old school, new school, new school, old school is what we're going to do. Yeah, on we deck, we got that 68 Mustang, and then a 63 Ford Falcon, and then uh, a Ford. We kind of got a line of Fords here. And then we got that 32 Ford High Boy Roadster. Uh, last, I think that's the last car in the Sprinkle Collection. Maybe not second to the last car. 28 seconds to go on the Fox Body Mustang GT T Top. 14,250 is bid. Get your bids in. Well, oh, you dark, look like a natural in there. Dark green stripe, too. Yep. Looks black, but it's very dark green. Okay. A lot of custom things have been done to this. 82 was the first year of the 5 liter GT Mustang, these Fox Bodies. This has some upgrades that definitely make this thing better than new all right three seconds to go let's take in a look at lot number 184 184 bring in the 1968 ford mustang coupe this mustang was restored six years ago and has just 103,000 original miles on the car finished in wimbledon white all the bright work is polished and windows are tinted powered by a rebuilt 289 cubic inch v8 Two barrel carburetor with dual exhaust and aluminum radiator, power steering, automatic transmission, rolls on those good looking GT wheels and TA radial tires, full gauges, heater and defroster, Grant steering wheel, AM FM CD. Here's a nice little 289 V8 Mustang. Kind of a classic lines, classic year, 1968. And uh, Sunnyside Washington's in the lead at 14750 on the Mustang, selling to the highest bidder. Mustangs have been strong today. We've had a lot of nice cars that have been sold through here so far. Here's a great opportunity at a great price point, honestly. Sitting at only 14750 Sunnyside's got to be happy. This car came to us out of Pomeroy, Washington. The paint looks great. What's really cool and amazing is all these Northwest cars. Oh, yeah. And it's amazing. You, you just... It always just blows my mind where these cars come from and how the garages they, they materialize. But you can't stress too much how nice these Northwest cars are by and large. They, you know, we just don't see the moisture. We don't, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day and I told him, I says, yeah, we get about six inches of moisture a year here in eastern Washington. He says, I think we had that last week where I live and it's like well that's that's why people come after these cars from all over and uh, and that's a testament to that because the steel's good and uh, they just don't have the wear and tear that some of these old cars have had uh, back in the Midwest and so forth. Yeah. This Mustang really stands out with those GT chrome factory wheels the TA radials and that white body that is beautiful and that dark red interior it just pops and just a nice driving car. This car is ready to go for a cruise. Take it to a show. Enjoy it. Taking your wife out for a hamburger. It's ready to go. It's a sweet little Mustang. Has turn signals in the uh, hood there. Oh, cool. Indicator lights. They're battling it out right now. Sunnyside yep. just lost the lead. Mount Vernon, Washington. Sunnyside back in. Appreciate those quick bids. It's been a long day. We really appreciate you all sticking with us and being here for the Northwest Collector Car Auction. Last night's show and shine, I can't tell you. That was an amazing response, getting everybody out here, raising a tremendous amount of money for the Seattle Children's Hospital. And uh, really want to thank all of our consigners and everybody that came out last night. We've had a lot of fun doing this. It's a lot of work. All our crew and staff, they kind of begrudgingly look forward to it when we get started and then it kind of gets to become a job and a lot of work but we put a lot of time and effort into it we hope you folks appreciate it and and you are you're, you're showing us you're you're participating we appreciate your participation we try to show you the cars for as real as we can and uh, I know I've bought cars sight unseen and and uh, you know sometimes that's good and bad but we try to want we want it to be a truly good experience for each and every one of you out there whether you're bidding from next door or whether you're bidding from clear across the country country we appreciate the support and we're going to do it all over again think about us if you have a collector car truck van suv that you'd like to sell keep us in mind um we'd love to represent your car in our fourth annual northwest collector car auction on saturday of may the date of saturday before memorial day whenever that is 
We'll be back right at it. And he'll be here before. And hopefully then we can actually do a live auction. Yes. And uh, have fun. Although this has been a great experience. And Spotted Fox has done a good job. Looks like it's going to Sunnyside. Thank you. Thank you, Sunnyside bidders. Take the uh, 84 or 68 Mustang out. Here comes that Ford Falcon. Kind of another one of my favorite cars. I kind of think this car is built right. It's got some cool toys on it. Certainly is the right color. And I'll just let it talk for itself when it comes in the ring here. Listen to this car. I can't hear you. Oh, he didn't give me a rest. Oh, okay. Sorry I said anything. You asked for it. There it is. For it. There you go. Here's the 63 Ford Falcon Sprint. Cars finished off an amazing uh, two-tone. The interior is matched. The manual transmission on this, I tell you what, you got a beautiful car here. If you're looking for a cruiser, here's an opportunity. $15,000. Dom, Burbank, leave it Washington. up. He's in the lead. Leave it up, Dom. All right, you bet. 63 Ford Falcon Sprint. Did you tell him the pedigree on this car? So it's powered by a 302 cubic inch V8 paired with a manual transmission. It rolls on Krager rims and with white letter tires. The interior features a black upholstery with orange accents on the seats and door panels and center console, the auxiliary gauges and a wood steering wheel. I'll tell you, it's a nice classic Falcon Street. This thing is a great cruiser. We're sitting at only $15,000 right now. High money's out of Burbank, Washington. Going to try and keep it local. That's a cool little car. That's, that, that's a head turner. That'll bring, that'll bring you some hardware at a car show. And uh, that's a cool little car. Oh, yeah. oh. Um, just uh, get in there and enjoy it. Not a lot of money, 15 grand. 15250 new buyer from Liberty Lake, Washington. There comes Burbank Mac at 15.5. He says, no, you're not going to sneak up on it like that. Protect your bid. Get the car you want. Don't give up. 15.5 is in the lead right now. Burbank, Washington on a good-looking little Ford Falcon. 1963. That was a good year. That was a good year. We've got about 30 seconds to go. Looks like new Burlington, fire. Washington, new fire, Jake. Oh, there's Burbank. Burbank's Comes back not hesitating. 16. You bet. You're going to have to bid faster to get his, get, outbid him. Well, Burlington, little, you're out. This little Falcon, the more you look at it, the cooler it is. Uh-huh. You know. No, it, tub it, rear end. I hope you looked at the under-engine photos on this, the engine compartment and everything. Definitely built right. I love the color combination. I think they did a really nice job with that. It's just fun to see. Just a nice, clean little hot rod. And Burbank gets it. Holds strong, $16,000. All right, let's go to lot 186. Here comes that 2004 build of a 1932 Ford High Boy. This is another car from the Sprinkle Collection. And uh, here's a replica High Boy from the estate. It was purchased as a body and frame in 04. Three fifty V eight in it, aluminum manifold, four barrel carburetor, HEI ignition, chrome valve covers, T H three fifty. Brakes are not currently operational. Please underline that the brakes are not currently operational. So you're going to want to roll it off and on the trailer quite slowly. Um, but uh, got the Baby Moon hubcaps and radial tires. Here's a little fun car you can do right here. Large file of receipts on this. About twenty five grand just in parts and pieces went into this car. Right now, Spokane, Washington's in the lead on it at fifteen seven fifty. All the hard work is done. Now it's your uh, opportunity to take advantage here and put your own finishing touches on it. Make it your own. Sitting right now, just at sixteen grand. Spokane's in the lead. There's a new bidder. Hello there, Mr. Will, Sweet Home, Oregon. Mr. Icebox himself. If you need a good radiator for a custom you're building, Icebox Radiator out of Sweet Home, Oregon. Legendary builders of radiators for machinery and equipment, and especially hot rods. Hello, Will. 16250s in the lead on a good-looking little high boy. Just hit 600 registered bidders on tonight's auction with over 300,000 views. Catalog views. 300,080 catalog views to be exact. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, team. And thank you, bidders. And thank you, consigners. A lot of people to thank. Privy. Duck, we're going to take that high boy out. It's going to Sweet Home, Oregon, 16,250. Bring in the 1982 Chevrolet Corvette. This 82 Chevy Corvette Collector Edition hatchback, it's the last of the C3s that she uh, Chevrolet produced. 
a collector adi uh, edition option, which is finished in silver and beige with a special graduated striping. This car has only 81,000 miles on it and has had one repaint. This edition also included an opening rear hatch, glass T-top, special anniversary wheels. It's powered by the 350 cubic inch V8 with Crossfire fuel injection. Jake, these cars have done nothing but go up in value. Look at that. The electric antenna still retracts just like it did, like it's supposed to. These cars have done nothing but explode in value over the last five years. I was looking at sales history on these. I'll let John talk about it. He's a lot more of a Corvette expert than I am, but it's a really nice, well-done Corvette. Well, this thing's beautiful. It looks like it has 10,000 miles on it. Collector Edition was a special car. It was the last edition of this style of Corvette called the C3. It has a hatch uh, glass roof or back window that comes up. None of the rest of them did. This has glass T-tops. First year of the fuel injection again. Has a four-speed automatic transmission. First year of that. This car drives sweet. Nice car. Great paint. And John, for 16 grand, if you want to be the next high bidder, here's a car you can jump in tonight and go to any road, you know, show and shine uh, car show and, and show it with pride and uh, probably win a trophy or two time and again. I mean, it's <laughs> this car is just the way it is. Got the good looking wheels on it, crossfire fuel injection right there. And that, that's a good buy yeah, on that. It's car. under the money right it's a now. Good buy under the yep. money, you, but it's your money, guys. It's selling to the high bidder. We've got fifteen thousand seven fifty, and we get no further bids. It's going to. It's going to stay right here in Pasco. Oh, glad to see that. Good local bidder, and uh, it's staying here in Pasco at fifteen seven fifty. Congratulations. Up next, here comes the sixty four Plymouth Barracuda. The 64 Plymouth Barracuda. This Barracuda is the first year of this first generation new Barracuda as a sport version of the Valiant. The car had the fastback large rear window to give it the sporty lines. This example is finished in Barracuda gold and features black racing stripes. The condition of the car appears that the 44,000 miles on the odometer could be actual. It is powered by the original 273 cubic inch V8, torque flight automatic transmission with the push button controls on the dash and has dual exhaust. Comes from a great consigner. We appreciate them bringing us down their car. Right now sitting at only $9,300. Walla Walla Washington's in the lead. Here's a car that's sleeping a little bit, I think, on price. Um, not going to see a lot of these. It is a Barracuda, 1964. Uh, kind of a lot of originality on this car. And uh, 9400 bucks. You know, you're not going to take a lot home for that. Uh, but you're getting a heck of a value right here. You're getting a lot of car for the money here. It's in great shape. This car does not have any wants or needs. It's ready to go. Take it home. Enjoy it. Drive it. And uh, have an appreciating asset on your hands. Mountain Vernon, Washington's happy in the lead right now at only 9400 Yeah, I don't think anybody in the lead on this under ten grand has got to be smiling. 9500 from Walla Walla. Welcome, Walla Walla, to the auction. 9,500's in the lead. There's 96 from Mount Vernon. Walla Walla, you're out. You got about three or four more hundred dollar bids before you get to 10 grand. I won't see, be surprised at all to see this car bring 10 grand plus. We're getting close right now. They got multiple bidders, about a three way horse race on this car, and it shows. I mean, you take a look at this car up close, you've gone through the pictures, you see it's very well represented. It's got a lot of nice features on it and finished in real good, uh, good paint. Honestly, had a lot of work getting all these cars prepared. I you know, want to thank our staff once again because I'll tell you what, pulling these in, getting all of the pictures precise, and being able to represent these cars to buyers that are all over the nation and across the globe, and getting the confidence to bid and participate is great. Last $100 bids coming up. Benton City, Washington's in the lead. This car is going to go down the road for $9,900 unless somebody else bids $10,000. Next bid's got to be ten two fifty. Four seconds to go. Do you want it? We're going to sell the car ninety nine hundred dollars. That's well bought. Well bought. Yep. Lot number one eighty nine. We're going to come into a nineteen eighty Chevrolet Corvette T top. This eighty Corvette is pretty much original with only sixty one thousand original miles, and it's finished in black. The factory sport mills, sport mirrors, the front spoiler, the optional power antenna, and the factory removable T tops. Vacuum operated headlights work correctly and is powered by the 350 cubic inch V8 paired with that automatic transmission. A nice looking car here sitting right now at a good price of just $7,300. Pasco, Washington holds the lead. This is the consignment that came to us from Prosser. 7,400 Walla Walla joins in the bidding. 
Here's a good buy. Here's a good buy on a T-top Chevrolet Corvette. Pasco fires right back, 75. Glad to see you all still on here bidding. We're down to about 10 cars, Jake. And this show's going to be over until next year. 10 or 12 or... We got a few that are in the pipeline. We've had a, a lot of interest with people that, you know, wanted to bring their cars down to get into the auction. They're a little too late. We had already sent the catalog off to print. And we're going to have a few more classics that we're going to be selling this year. You will see a, a new classic car selection, uh, cl classic car collection tab pop up on our website. We are going to offer the ability to do an online only auction on a car or truck <laughs> because there's some people who just don't want to wait for a year. So keep an eye on our website. Make sure and bookmark trucksandauto.com. You'll watch for that classic car collection uh, tab to pop up. We are going to offer collector car auctions from time to time, you know, on a one, two, three, four basis. And uh, and then, of course, we'll do our fourth annual Northwest Collector. Boy, that's can't believe I'm saying that. Fourth annual Northwest <laughs> Collector Car Auction again a year from now on sure Saturday before Memorial Day. Yes, I do. <laughs> I don't have to do any of the work. No, that's a good true statement there. Yep. $7,800, Yakima's in the lead on a 1980 Chevrolet Cor uh, Corvette T-top, and on deck is my number two favorite car in the auction. Kind of a special car. I'll tell you about it when it comes in the ring. Yakima, you almost had it. Pasco snuck in last second. <clears throat> 20 seconds to go now. 20 seconds to go on the 1980 T-top Coupe Corvette. Eight thousand is the buy is the price right now. Somebody ought to be eighty one hundred. If you're not interested in Corvettes, scroll on down. Take a look at these next two. But look at that next one. I never knew it even existed. John, what do you have to say? This is a bargain right here for eight thousand dollars. This thing should be eleven or twelve thousand dollars. That's a nice black nineteen eighty Corvette with really pretty low miles. Yeah, good value, folks. Yep. Good value. Good buy. Yeah, come on. Good you got buy. A good buy. It's there. gone. Bring in the Hutmobile. Lot number 190. It's the 1931 Hutmobile sedan. This Hutmobile uh, in transit on its way here. Now, this car did not have a single need. And on its way here, the vinyl top ended up tearing in transport. Yep. So we yeah, have we the pictures bye -bye. updated. They're all on the website for you to see. Here's an opportunity to get a great car. Folks, this Hutmobile has been a, uh, has, has been a crowd favorite at car shows all around the west, eastern Washington. Come out of Dayton, Washington, owned by a prominent resident over there. He's owned it for decades. This Hutmobile has been restored to almost original condition, is delivered, has the four-door with the rear suicide doors, rear luggage rack, side mount. Finished in the green with the black fenders and running board, powered by the original rebuilt flathead six-cylinder engine paired with three-speed manual transmission, rolls on the factory wire wheels and wide white wall tires, has the uh, features, the, t the interior features that beautiful tan mohair upholstery and tan door panels, original dash with gauges. Here is a classic Hutmobile for only $8,000 right now. There is a gorgeous car. Once again, you're going to have to redo the vinyl top. I don't think that's a really, really big job. You can have any interior upholstery shop do that for you, or probably a lot of you can do it yourself. But look at the headlights on that car. Look at the lines on that car. 1931 Hutmobile. West Richland's in the lead at only $8,300. <coughs> you get in the back of that car. You it's got, got the little shades you can pull down. I mean, you were royalty riding in the back of that car in 1931. <laughs> I'd have Justin get in the back, but it's got weak springs. And you no, know, <laughs> you can pull that back, and you want a little privacy, you know. There, look at this. It's like sitting in a limousine. A one ton's got weak springs for Stelzer. I didn't say that. Eighty-five, eighty-six hundred dollars rent in Washington's now in the lead. 8,600 in the lead, 22 seconds left to go. Folks, I don't know where you're going to find another one. I looked up. I think there's been four or five of these sell in the last year all across the United States. So get in and help yourself. $8,700 in the lead, West Richland, Washington. This car should fetch well over $10,000, but you set the price. It's selling no reserve to the highest bidder here at the third annual Northwest Collector Car Auction. Really glad to see a lot of the local bidders here showing up. 
bidding strong today and then a lot of support from the east coast and uh, really all over we've had bid bidders from all over i think we've got uh 42 states with registered bidders right now wow there went the hutmobile eighty seven hundred dollars that's a good eye goodbye thank you very much bring in lot number 191 if you would please here is that 2002 ford thunderbird deluxe hot wheels convertible this Thunderbird is the latest generation of T-Birds produced by Ford. Again, a two-seater like the original 55 to 57 birds. This bird was bought from a Ford dealer in Pendleton, Oregon, and is finished in the inspirational yellow, a one-year only color, and it has originally 29,000 original miles. The re removable porthole hard top, the black convertible top, and the black boot that covers the convertible top when down this entire car. It is ready to go in great shape. Looks just as good as new. Here's a car you can drive to any car show anywhere, Jake, and know you're going to get there and know you're going to get home in comfort and in style. And uh, beautiful, good-looking uh, 2002 Ford Thunderbird Deluxe Hot Wheels Edition right here. 19000 heading to Doylestown, Ohio, if nobody else bids. Hi, Lillian. Well, and there's Mabel, too. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Look at those good-looking girls out in the audience. All right. We got our private audience here, cheering section here today. You bet. 2002 Ford Thunderbird Deluxe, folks. 19000 is the price. John, what do you say? Red line tires and a little Hot Wheels emblem. This thing really pops. And notice the yellow and black interior. Removable hard top and a soft top. This thing's ready to go. Very low miles. Beautiful car. Yeah, 29,000 miles, I think it said it on it. Yeah. Yeah, 29,000 original miles. 23 seconds to go. 19250 Chester, Montana pulls in the lead. I hope Ohio's still on watching tonight. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Nineteen two fifty on a low mile two thousand two Ford Thunderbird Deluxe. Four seconds to go. Looks like that Thunderbird's heading to Montana. Going to become a Montana resident. It is. And we got a lot number one ninety two. Here's that 80, 1980 Chevrolet Corvette T top. Another car from the Sprinkle Collection. This 1980 Corvette T-Top came from the Sprinkles Collection. It's quite original with only 75,000 original miles and it's finished in gold. The factory sport mirrors the front spoiler and the factory removable T-Top. The vacuum operated headlights do work. Comes with the factory optional uh, aluminum wheels with the radial tires. Air conditioning, power windows, power door locks. Sitting right now at only $8,200. Salem, Oregon's in the lead. Max bid is in play. Help yourself here. You want a nice low-dollar, do low low-budget Corvette. Here's another one for only $8,200. you got a minute to go. Uh, I think there's some room there. I think there's some room there. It's got them optional factory aluminum wheels and the TA radials. Got that gold color. $8,200 is the price. Looking for another bid. We've had uh, 2,009 views on this car, 84 bids. 8,600 now is the high bid. Max bid is in play. Again, very straight Corvette, 1980, classic shark style. Um, should be bringing more money in this. These things are good value for good value. $12,000. We've got a max bid in play. 9,000 is the high bid right now. Runner up, Jeremy. Jeremy, you got a bid. Jeremy's from Oregon somewhere, 541 area code. From Boardman, right across the river. Help yourself. Don't lose out. Got, her, got Boardman, Oregon, and then Salem, Oregon battling it out. 9,200. Salem's still in the lead. 20 seconds left to go. We're going to send it down to Salem. Les Boardman comes back and bids again, or somebody else, help yourself. You know, one of the main benefits with this online-only auction is everybody's sitting here, you know, they're all bidding the exact same. You all have an equal opportunity to get your bids in. The reset makes sure that if you got outbid at the very last second, you still have an opportunity to get your bid placed. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we all love the live auction. We're looking forward to it. But this was a good way to maintain having the Northwest Collector Car Auction and proud of what we've been able to put together. You bet. Ten seconds to go. Salem, Oregon's in the lead. 9,400. That is right there. Max bids in play. $9,400. Who wants to be 95? 
It's gone at $9,400. Good eye, good buy. Up comes. <clears throat> kind of think this car is a little late in the auction right here, but that's all right. Here's a good-looking car, a 1949 Chrysler Windsor four-door sedan. Comes out of that nice estate up in the... Uh, boy, look at the lines on this car. Wow. Just beautiful. Comes from a collection in Ellensburg. Had quite a few amazing cars in today's auction. This four-door four -door sedan shows only 79,000 miles on the odometer, which appears to be accurate. It's finished in silver with all the factory trim and bright work. Powered by that 250 cubic inch six cylinder engine paired with the four speed, the fluid drive transmission, it rolls on the factory steel wheels, the wheel covers, the wide white wall tires, the interior is in original condition and features the blue upholstery bench seat. Here's our opportunity. Right now, Billings, Montana holds the lead at only $5,800. Buy, buy, buy. There's a buy on a great collector classic right there. $5,800, ladies and gentlemen on a 1949 Chrysler Windsor four-door. I think there's some room there, 6,000. You got a max bid and play, folks. Original paint, solid car. Don't see any damage on it. The chrome looks good. And the dash is just phenomenal. The design of that dash and the retro, what they did with these cars back then. This is a beautiful Chrysler. That's not retro, that's the real deal. Well, it is the real deal, yeah. <laughs> 6,400, 6,600, Max Bid is in play. Billings, Montana still holds the lead on that good looking Chrysler. Boy, we got a couple sleepers coming up late in the auction there. We got that 66 Ford Galaxy, real 429 car, and then a 56 Chevrolet. Way late. We kept some nice ones in the end right here. 6,800 now. Billings is in the lead. 7,000 now. Who wants to be 71? Still some room in that car on a good looking 49 Chrysler Windsor four door sedan. Original paint, original interior, kind of a time capsule car. Uh, don't know where you'd go find another one. Usually that age and that old, you see them out in the yard all rusted up and everything. This car's pretty darn clean. Two seconds to go, looks like she's going to Billings. Congratulations, Jay. All right, lot number 194, we're going to sell you something you can haul your car home with. This come out of the Sprinkle Collection, and this was his 1992 Chevrolet CK 3500 Cheyenne car hauler, custom car hauler. So you can buy two, kind of a two for one here. You can buy this, and you can buy a car to put on the back, haul it to the car show, unload it, show it in the show and shine, show the uh, car hauler in the show and shine, and then... Uh, go back home kind of a nice little car here $6,900 rice this is a one-ton Chevy crew cab and it's got the Cheyenne package in blue got the fuel injected 454 V8 with an automatic overdrive transmission and heavy duty one-ton suspension and a 410 ratio rear axle with dual wheels chrome wheel covers and radial tires hey Scott by the way on this particular truck there is a great big old file of receipts you know everything that's been done to it uh, Dayton clear back to 2004. You bet. Kind of a nice car to have. Caldwell, Idaho's in the lead. It's got the D-ring tie-downs, uh, recessed tie-down rings winch. right there. Got a winch Got on the it. winch box right there yep. and the winch. And uh, yeah, a lot of value right there for only $6,900. We've got 40 seconds to go. If not, this truck's headed to Caldwell, Idaho. The bed's worth 6900 Yes, at least. Half a minute to go. 6900 is the price. Well, I think for that price, that might buy that custom bed. That's all aluminum, built the hall with a winch. Yeah, got the nice diamond Bin plate ramp, on ramps. it and everything. Yeah. You don't like the truck, just take the bed off and put it on something else. We've got a new leader from Portland, Oregon at $7,000. $7,000, Portland, Oregon pulls in the lead. It's selling to the high bidder regardless of price. Right now, the high bid's $7,000. Portland, Oregon is going to take it home. Nine seconds to go. All right, let's start that one up and push, take it out, guys. Up next, Scott. Start it up, driver. 
hold on. Yep, up next we've got uh, Lot 195, a 1990 Buick Riata convertible. This 90 Riata is one of approximately 2,400 convertible models produced that year. The car now shows over 100,000 miles and features independent suspension, all-around four-wheel disc brakes, digital instrumentation, and more. Power is provided by a 3.8-liter V6 paired with a four-speed automatic. It's assembled by hand in Lansing, Michigan. Just over 21,000 Riatas of all types were produced. Over the model's four-year production run, this colored red is only one of 21,000 in entirety and 2,400 convertibles for that model year. All right. 1990 Buick Riata convertible. There's only about 2,400 of them built. Car showing 100,000 miles. Independent suspension right there. High bids $2,900 on it right now. $2,900 is all. Not bad for yep. a little convertible. Uh, yeah, for a red convertible. Something to play around with. You're going to make it in, John? Here. What do you think, John? Is he going to make it over to the corner here? Big John. Is he making it in? Um, doesn't look like it. Sorry? All right. 2900 is bid. Max bid is in play. Casey in Tacoma holds the bid. Up next, we've got that 78 Ford pickup. Get that in the hold there, if you would, please, John. 78 Ford pickup, followed by that 66 Ford Galaxy 500. Nice story buying that car. In that car. And then we got that 56 Chevrolet two-door post. Then we got a couple cool old farm trucks, 54 Chevy 6100, five window, no less. Yeah, the there went the uh, Riata. At 2900 let's talk about 196 on a 78 Ford pick -em up truck. Yes, cool. Scott, this 78 Ford High Boy is finished in black with pinstriping and chrome bumpers. It's powered by a 360 V8 paired with a four-speed manual transmission. It's got power steering, power brakes, and locking hubs. It rolls in on aluminum rims, all-terrain tires. The interior is finished with black and light gray upholstered bench seats with matching door panels. The AF FM CD stereo has been put in. It's a classic high boy Ford pickup, Scott. Outside, I'm not going to say that the paint's been done, but it's got a great patina to it. Here's one that people know it's been worked, but you look inside, it's nice. The mechanics of it are great. Here's a classic high boy right here. F-250 custom high boy Ford. High bidders local from Pasco, Washington right now at $6,700. You had a max bid in play. Help yourself on a 1978 Ford pick -em up truck right here. We don't have very many cars left, folks. Help yourself. Get in and go. This one right here is the beginning to a great project for somebody that wants you to tackle bet. a project and have an unbelievable high boy when they're done. Yeah. Here's the start of your project, and for only $6,700, I'd say it's a good start. It's got some good bones. And uh, sure do a lot of work on it if you want to and, and uh, have a lot of fun doing it. But uh, it's kind of the real deal. Yeah, again, mostly original paint on it. And it is straight. Has a lot of patina, if we call it that. But uh, like you say, good solid high boy. F-250 Custom. 20 seconds left to go on the F-250 1978 Ford pickup. 14 seconds left to go. 6700 is the price. I think there's some room there. Help yourself if you like. Don't miss out. Five seconds to go. We're going to pull her outside and get ready for the 66 Ford Galaxy 500. Scott, this next one, lot 197, the 66 Ford Galaxy 500. The one big change on this is it mentions in the description that it, was, it ran when it was parked. Well, guess what, folks? It's fixing to run as it comes inside. It's driving in right now. Does, Look at here. Does have some brake issues, but what an absolute great Ford Galaxy. This Guys, Galaxy, this, go ahead. This Galaxy 500 is a matching number 7-liter four-speed car. It's an estate vehicle that's finished in light blue with lots, and I do mean lots, of that beautiful patina. It's powered by a 7-liter 428. V8 paired with four-speed manual transmission. Rolls in on chrome wheels and red line tires. It's got power steering and power brakes. The original wheels are included with the car. The interior features blue bucket seats, console, original push-button AM radio, and sports steering wheel. This is a rare, and I mean rare, 7-liter Galaxy that, folks, does run. It drove in here on its own. 
You bet. No, this is the first time I've seen that car run. And uh, here's the real deal, guys. A real 428 car, 14,250. Seattle, Washington holds the lead on this 66 Ford Galaxy 500. Man, there's some metal work in that car. I mean, some serious steel. Serious steel in that car. You want a car to fix up and go down to the races with and do some fun stuff. You, I don't think you'd ever, you'd, you'd search the world over for a better donor car to get started with. Well, one thing on this car, you see exactly what you get. Yep, yep, you get exactly what you get. 14,250, yes, we're going to remind you the brakes do need worked over. 18 seconds left to go. 14,250 is the price. If you want to bid, you want to buy it, you've got to click to win. If you're buying a Galaxy 500, I don't know that you're worried about stopping. <laughs> exactly. All right, well, let's move it on and send her to Seattle here in about two seconds at 14,250. And here comes... Uh, another car from the Sprinkle Collection. Here is that 56 Chevrolet two-door post. Scott, lot 198 is a 56 Chevrolet two-door post. This is an estate vehicle. It's finished in yellow and has, in, in 2013, it had an engine fire which burned the paint off the hood. The car was fixed, including a new engine and is running and in, is in running and driving condition. The owner did not get to repaint the hood. It's powered by a Crate T50 cubic inch V8 that throws out 320 horsepower. It's got a four bell carburetor, dual exhaust, and aluminum radiator. It's paired with a TH350 automatic transmission and a 10 bolt rear end. This thing's got lowered rear suspension and rows on weld drag light wheels and radial tires. An absolute, absolute beautiful 56 Chevrolet two door post. Had a little bit of a minor fire. Engine's back together. Just needs a little bit of a hood repaint. Phillipsburg, Montana's in the lead at 13.5. You're looking for a project. You're looking for a 56 two-door post. Here you go. You're not going to find one in better shape, better condition, better starting uh, out the block than that car right there. 13.5 is the price. Stephen in Phillipsburg, Montana is in the lead at 13.5. And you better bring a dolly with you to take back the box of receipts that comes with this car from the build they did. Yep, lots of stuff, lots of lots of history, and has the original factory inspector's record sheet. There's a new bid at thirteen seven fifty. We have a new leader from Billings, Montana. Thirteen seven fifty now to fourteen in Ellensburg, Washington. These guys so, looking for these two door so, posts. So Hard Scott, to find something like this. After that fire from those stack of receipts I dug through, he actually replaced the motor with a brand new crate engine. It's not a rebuilt. Wow. So it was a brand new crate engine. So judging from the receipts, it looks like it's a brand new Crate 350 V8 in there that was put in subsequent to the fire. And we're at 14,750. Mount Vernon, Washington's in the lead. There's a roller that's ready to uh, let you do whatever you want to do. Make that into it. Want to make a Black Widow or whatever. That, there's a wonderful donor car to start. 15,000 new leader from Billings, Montana. We're on lot 198. That's, I think we've got about uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We've got five cars to go, folks. We're Appreciate down to the short right rows, there. Scott. We're down to the short rows. Eight seconds. Seven 15, seconds thousand. to go on the two-door post. Looks like she's going to go to Billings, Montana. Congratulations. Thanks for your bids. Let's go from a 56 Chevrolet two-door post to a 54 Chevrolet 60 105 window. Are they bringing that in? It's got this 6,400, one-and-a-half-ton, five-window truck, has been barn-kept and shows uh, only 61,000 miles. That is believed by the owner to be original. It's finished in blue with white running boards and a front bumper. It's got steel flatbed with a ball hitch in it, St. Paul hydraulic hoist, and sideboards. We're going to raise the door just a little bit. This great 54 Chevrolet 5 window is powered by a 235 six-cylinder engine, a four-speed manual transmission, and a two-speed rear axle. The interior features a vinyl bench seat and door panels dash, and it's got factory gauges and a factory heater. The original owner's manual and hoist paperwork are included. This is a great Chevy truck that a guy can go put to work right now painted in an absolute beautiful blue. What a great 5 window right here. Yeah, a five-window, 6,400, 
Never heard of such a thing. Didn't know it existed. I thought they were all three windows. Well, here's a five window in living color right here. And a steel flatbed with a hitch. Did you say hoist? Yes, sir. Okay. There's a heck of a truck right there. You can have a whole lot of fun with that. $3,900 is the high bid. 4000 now out of Napa, Idaho. There's a heck of a nice truck. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a straight truck. Been sitting in a barn. Um, used on a farm. But... Redone several years ago, and uh, just a nice straight old. You know, like you said, Scott, you don't see too many five window cabs no. on these big trucks. No, no, you don't see very many five windows on the big trucks. In fact, I don't think I'd ever seen any. I was kind of surprised. Lewis and Idaho holds the lead. No, they don't now. Mount Vernon, Washington, at forty-four hundred. Uh, this truck could bring seven or eight or ten thousand, and not really be heard a whole bunch. But forty-five hundred is a high bid from Lewis and Idaho now. Forty-six in Mount Vernon. They're battling it out right there. 26 seconds left to go on a good-looking Chevy truck. Doug, you be ready to start that truck up. I'm going to have you drive it. I don't want the boys to have to uh, push that out. We're down to nine seconds at $4,600 on the five-window Chevy. Oh, there's a new bidder from Lewiston, Idaho, 47. Mount Vernon comes right back at 48. Help yourself right here. You run the tires off your truck trying to drive the countryside to look on. Go ahead, Doug. Take her outside. Well, maybe. <laughs> Five seconds to go Put on the 54 down. Chevrolet. You might need a little help. There we go. That's all right. Sounds just like my 54 Chevy when I was trying to start it. We've got a new battle going. $5,000 in the lead now from Mount Vernon, Washington. On deck is a 37 Chevrolet Chop Custom. We've got that 31 Model A and then a 47 Chevy flatbed. And then we've got the fire truck and we're done. 5000 is in the lead going to Mount Vernon, Washington if nobody else bids. There's a new bidder, 5100 another Mount Vernon bidder. Now, you Mount Vernon bidders, you guys are going to get mad at each other. Some of you are going to see somebody else driving your truck. But right now, we've got uh, $5,100 from a Mount Vernon, Washington bidder. How about Mount Vernon, too? Do you want to try to bid 52 Mount Vernon. Five whoop, window, no. okay. 5100 right. is not that bad. No, there's 52 from the other Mount Vernon bidder. How about now 53? Well, hi, Lillian. <laughs> oh. 5,300 in the lead. Mount Vernon bidder number one's in the lead. How about Mount Vernon bidder number two? Do you want to be 54? On the five window Chevy. 5,400. We got to go. And we're down to five seconds to go on that 54 Chevy 6100 five window, and it is gone to Mount Vernon. Okay, lot number 200, ladies and gentlemen, is a 1937 Chevrolet Chop Custom. This is the last car from the Don Sprinkle Estate right here. This is an estate car purchased as a full race car roller and converted back into a street car. This chopped Chevy two-door sedan finished in black cherry. With a gold metal flake, it has a full fiberglass tilt front end with some obvious front lower damage, custom headlights, French tail lights, tub to rear end, shaved door handles, door poppers with remote and tinted windows. No additional parts such as the grill are included. It is powered by a Buick 425 cubic inch V8 and appears to have a Buick automatic transmission in the rear end, aluminum radiator and dual exhaust lowered suspension with coilovers. It rolls on billet specialties, polished aluminum wheels and decent tires. The interior features tan leather, uh, bucket seat, power bucket seats with lumbar, power windows, tilt steering column, custom billet steering wheel, custom 1959 Impala dash with full gauges, air conditioning, and full carpeting. The hard work is done on this one, folks. It's ready to be finished and enjoyed. Right now, Post Fall Idaho holds the lead at $7,500. Absolutely, Scott. With only 40 seconds left, just like you said, the work's done. A little tuning, a little fine work here. Here's one ready to go to a car show, and here's one that's a driver, too. You bet. 
We've got the Battle of the Neighbors. We've got Liberty Lake and Post Falls bidding against each other. Liberty Lake's in the lead right now. And there comes Post Falls at 7,900. Liberty Lake, do you want to be eight? Yes, he does. Now 81 to you, Post Falls. 8,100, do you want it? Yes, he does. How about 82 to Liberty Lake? 8,200, it's your bid to have. It's your bid to win $8,200. When you look at this paint, there's a deep metal flake in it. It's beautiful. Yeah, that car needs some uh, elbow grease and a little time on the paint. I think you bring it right back. It does have a really nice deep metal flake. Yep. And we've still got a battle going on. Liberty Lake in the lead, $8,200. Twelve seconds left to go. On the 37 chopped custom. No, Post Falls says I'll give 83. Liberty Lake, you're out. 8,400, it's your turn. Don't miss your turn. Just like Checkers, he moves, and now you got to click. $8,400. Wyatt, you going to come up and finish the last three? Just a little bit of work is all that this one needs to be a yeah, great one. You bet. A lot of the heavy lifting is done. 8,300 is the price. Liberty Lake, you're going to see it driving around. Here she goes. And it is sold. Going to Post Falls, 8,300. Out it goes. And up next, Scott, lot 201, a 1931 Ford Model A. This Model A has been setting for several years in a barn in Montana. It's an estate vehicle that was purchased, we believe, in 1968. It's an all-original four-door sedan that appears to be relatively complete. We did get it running and drove it around the lot several times. As you can see, it did drive in here on its own power. It's powered by the original four-cylinder engine with a three-speed manual transmission, rolls in on original spoke wheels, and, t and the tires are holding air. Uh, the interior's original upholstery, headliners, gauges, steering wheels, and controls. This is an original. Bring it to life as a classic original. Keep it like it is. Here's a project to start that rat rod that you want to build. Lots of ways to go with absolutely great 31 Ford Model A. Great bones. This car come from John Lawyer in Plains, Montana. John bought this car and worked on it for years. We did John's retirement auction when he sold out his nursery in Plains and in uh, Olympia, Washington. John has since passed away. And uh, this is one of the last items coming out of his estate. But he's owned this car for decades. I saw it in a barn back in Plains, Montana a year and a half ago or so. And uh, told them when they wanted to sell it, they needed to send it to the collector car auction. They were good to their word, and they did. And right now, it's good in a bit in the city, Washington, for $5,100 is all on a really good Bones 1931 Model A. $5,100 is all, and it drove in on its own power. For as long as it's been setting, what I think is great is if you look at the interior, and is it perfect? No. But f to be all original interior, that's pretty classic. Let me tell you right what, there. if you were born in 1931, your interior wouldn't look that good. That'd probably all right, be she's heading to Benton City, Washington. Congratulations, Rick. And we're going to move on to lot 202 on a 1947 Chevrolet 500 flatbed. Got this flatbed's being sold with a bonded title. It's been sitting for years, is a non-runner. There's been no attempts to made to start the vehicle, so make sure you don't know that it is a non-runner. But here is a project that somebody could grab a hold of and turn something out of extremely Look easy. at the grill on that truck. Absolutely. Look at the grill on this truck. 47500 flatbed. Beautiful front end of that truck. A lot of possibilities. A lot of potential. Buy it and have fun. Warden Washington, Travis and Warden's in the lead. He's going to take her home and have a whole lot of fun with it right now. At only $2,350, Hazleton, Idaho pulls in the lead. Hazleton, Idaho. Bring your trailer. Come on. Bring it down. Pick it up. Take it home. Have some fun with it. $2,350 is the price. you got a minute to go on the 47 Chevrolet 500 flatbed. And we're down to the short rows. We've got one more car to go, and we're going to conclude this third annual Northwest Collector Car Auction. Once again, I want to thank each and every one of you. I want to thank our staff, thank our consigners, all of the bidders for being a part of it. We've had a lot of fun. Sure enjoyed it. Hope you had a good day and enjoyed your afternoon spending it with us here on a beautiful Saturday. It is 435, so not bad. Four and a half hours and four hours and 40 minutes. Not bad to make it and through 103 cars. Uh, yeah, 103 cars.
So, 21 seconds left to go. We're at $2,450 on the Chevrolet 500 flatbed. 14 seconds left to go, and the next up is a 59 International Non-Runner Fires Truck. There's a $2,500 bidder. That's your last $50 $2, bid. 2600 $2, now. Hazleton, Idaho, <coughs> pulls back in the lead. 2600 on the 47 Chevy 500. 15 seconds left to go. And there were one. Down to one. One to go. I have no more sheets in my book. Nothing more to talk about. Two seconds. Two seconds left to go. Hello, Hazelton. All right. 2003. Uh, lot 203. The next one's the one that's seen them all. Lot 203, the 1959 International Fire Truck. It is a non-runner, but could be an absolute great project. Yeah, they're kind of fighting over there. Where are you at, Brian? Mr. Lamond, this is the one you ought to be bidding on. Here's a 59 International Fire Truck. Graham Washington's in the lead at $3,400. He's got a max bid and play. 3600 new bidder from Adrian, Oregon. 3600 is the price. You've got a minute and 23 seconds to go on a B-160 International Fire Truck. Once again, we want to give a good shout-out to Spotted Fox. They've been our video crew providing you with all of the video feed here today. Multiple cameras, lights, did all the lights in here, and have uh, worked through some uh, all the uh, unknown circumstances that we have to deal with, but done a great job, and we really appreciate them. If you need any digital marketing done, advertising, video production, Spotted Fox. Go to What's the website? SpottedFox.com? Stop, SpottedFoxDigital.com. All right. Thank you, Nathan. We appreciate the partnership. Appreciate you guys being here. 35 seconds left. We're at 3,900 on the 1959 International Fire Truck. Somebody sees a good project. There's 4,000 there from Adrian, is. Oregon. They may just duke this out. It could, see if it, bring, it could get to five. Real easy. Fire truck. 4,100, Adrian, Oregon's out. Ellensburg, Washington's in the lead. Now Hayden, Idaho. we got about a six-way horse race going here, kind of like the Kentucky Derby. 4,400, we've got a max bid and play. Hayden, Idaho's in the lead at $4,600 now. Now 48. It's going to hit five, I think. There's $5,000. Max bid is in play. you got a bid to win. Click it if you want it. If you want it, you can have it, but you got to jump on it. Here we go. 5000 is the price right now. Hayden Idaho's in the lead. Ten seconds to go. Let's count down to the last car. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. 30, 29. Oh. Up, up, up the way this works. We've got another bid. 5200 is the price. 21 seconds left to go. Max bid still in play. Hayden, Idaho holds the bid. 5,400 is the bid now. Max bid is still in the lead. Hayden, Idaho. <clears throat> you know, you keep doing that, you'll find out where his max bid is. Check out all of our auctions at trucksandauto.com, mbauction.com, and estatedetails.com. We've got all kinds of auctions of collectibles, cars, trucks, real estate, vehicles. You name it, we sell it. We'd love to have an opportunity to work for you. If you've got a specialty asset, if you've got a motorhome, an RV, a boat, we just sold a beautiful 2019 uh, pontoon boat last uh, week for 60, or th early this week for $62,000. We've sold motorhomes in excess of 100000 and more. Our marketing people will reach out and find the market. 6000 is the price. Three, two, two, two one. one. Sold. Congratulations, Hayden, Idaho. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your time, your attention, your participation. God bless. Everybody drive safe and have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend.